Coming to you live from my apartment, it's Rob has a podcast. And now here's the guy who does not need uh, the wambulance here as we are picking up the pace on the all-time top 40 countdown. I am Rob's sister, Nino. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Number 15 on our countdown is here talking about Survivor Panama, a.k.a. Survivor Exile Island, a very fun one to go back and watch here. We were only, I think it was but five days ago, we talked about Survivor San Juan del Sur. We'll be talking about the 14th best season of Survivor coming up, uh, I believe, uh, five days from now on Wednesday. So uh, we are really in the thick of it here in the all-time top 40 countdown. We're very excited to talk about Survivor Panama, and we have a great panel here with us uh making her debut on the top 40 countdown with us to talk about survivor panama you know her from the community building podcast over on post show recaps and the shite 90s shows taught me podcast it's just sterling jess how are you hey rob i did it i got off the couch i made it to the podcast yeah <laughs> thank you for having me you're off the couch that <laughs> do you think that with suri is it a like metaphor that she got up off the couch or is it that like the, like oh Suri is camping now <laughs> i thought it was more of a metaphor simply because she's a nurse so i imagine she has a pretty grueling job in general or she's at least in the medical field i know so mm -hmm. yeah i imagine yeah, it was a ER metaphor. nurse i think it's, yes uh, i think that's right um but yeah uh very funny we'll get into it with Suri being afraid of leaves and the fact that she thought to go on survivor and how that was a good idea mm -hmm. <laughs> uh later on but yeah uh i believe it was a metaphor okay all right very excited to talk a lot of sari 1.0 and i guess in some ways a happy ending uh, the only season where uh sari isn't screwed uh terribly i mean i guess that sir that terry having the idol uh super powered for so long uh i guess but of of all the times she plays i mean this is the least she gets screwed in any mm -hmm. season yeah, no, I definitely the think God you're right. Idol. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, okay. she gets screwed in nearly every season, but uh, this is the least screwed she's probably been. <laughs> yes. All right. And here with us uh, back for the second time on the top 40 countdown, we talked about Survivor Africa uh, about uh, what, like a month and a half ago, but it feels like four years ago to me because it was on the other side of my move. It's, of course, uh, from the BoJack Horse Pod and the Simpsons. Then and now it's uh, Lindsay Wilson. Lindsay, how are you? Rob, as a 31-year-old woman, I'm delighted to be representing the older women's <laughs> tribe. <on this> podcast. <laughs> I am so annoyed about this older women's tribe thing. I Melinda's have like 32. tea to spill on this. Yeah. Thank you. Melinda is 32 years old. You know who else is 32 years old? Bob Dog. You know what tribe he's on? The young men's mm -hmm. tribe. The beefcake tribe. The beefcake tribe. <laughs> yeah. As Suri said, I thought I was young. Yeah, yeah. she is young. She's 35. She's 35. <laughs> Mm, okay. Horrifying. Uh, yep. Yeah. All right. So a lot to unpack here as we talk about Survivor Panama. I will say also that all year long, I have been going to Twitter and usually the day or two before the podcast, I write congratulations <laughs> to the 40th best season of Survivor. It's Survivor Island of the Idols. And so I, I've done the same tweet now every single week, all year long. And I've been basically just stalked on Twitter by Shane Powers, who <laughs> uh, basically threatened me every single week. It's going to uh, come to your bullet. shitty apartment. <laughs> yes, I dodged the bullet every single time Survivor Panama did not come up on the countdown. It finally came up. And so uh, Shane Powers is going to join us for a, and T-Bird is dying to talk to Shane Powers. So mm -hmm. we're going to be doing a special talking with T-Bird coming up on Sunday night. I think that that's going to be a very interesting uh, cocktail <laughs> of T-Bird and Shane together on one podcast. So if we have any Survivor Panama questions for Shane, uh, I can ask him on the podcast uh, tomorrow night. It should be up on uh, Monday. And then, of course, uh, don't forget about the patron feedback show coming up on Tuesday this week. We'll get that in before we get to our 14th best season coming up on Wednesday, I'm going to be talking with our own Derek Stasinski, uh, of course, uh, that many of you know him as uh, our patron experience manager. A lot of people talk to him uh, behind the scenes, uh, get their patron perks uh, set up through uh, Derek. He really wants to talk about Survivor Panama. We'll also be talking with Derek uh, tomorrow on our monthly patron orientation call on 
Sunday afternoon that we do every month for our new patrons to, and how to access all the benefits and do a uh, meet and greet. And then also Jillian Powers, no relation to Shane Powers <laughs> that I know of. Sure, sure. Okay, so Derek and Jillian on the patron feedback show. It's going to be at 4 p.m. Eastern coming up on Tuesday. So uh, be on the lookout for that. And then we'll get into the Wednesday edition of the 14th best season of all time. So uh, let me hear from the both of you a little bit about Survivor Panama and uh, why you wanted to be here for this season. Uh, Jess, uh, why was Panama such an important season for you? I love Survivor Panama. I love Sari especially. And so I really wanted to come on for her first season. Uh, it's it's the only buff I own for whatever reason. It's the Kasaya tribe. Probably my favorite tribe of all time. Uh, I know like villains from Heroes Villains is also good. But Kasaya is just so functionally dysfunctional or dysfunctionally functional. I don't really know. But they're just so yeah. wacky and zany. And it's such a – there's not – a huge amount of strategy this season it's very character based um which is one of the reasons i i absolutely love it yeah and it's interesting that you call them uh the uh dysfunctional functional tribe because i kind of thought that that was something that was just in the discourse but you know it is on the page uh shane says it at the tribal council i mean in in the real time that uh, you know they are able to sort of identify that like yeah we are definitely a dysfunctional family but for the most part when it comes down to it like we're able to get our act together and really dominate lamina through uh most of the pre-merge and especially uh keep it together after the post-merge Lindsay, uh how about for you uh why did you want to talk about survivor panama yeah, I mean, much the same as Jess. There are just so many amazing characters on this season. And I think that's a remarkable thing to say, given that Lamina is on this season. <laughs> so just the <laughs> fact that Kasaya has so many great people. We've got Shane, we've got Courtney, we've got that whole dynamic with the Danielle, Shane, Courtney stuff going on all the time. Sari is here. It's amazing. This is such a fun season. Uh, yeah, I'm just really excited to talk about it. I think it's going to be really good. I think this was one of the last ones that I saw before going to university. So uh, we're okay. winding down in the Lindsay watching Survivor in the mm -hmm. real time era. Yeah. So there is such a disparity between the two tribes where you have such a colorful group uh, in the Kasaya tribe. And then Lamina really is just <laughs> so straightforward. And uh, I'm sure that this has been uh, said before, whether it was uh, by Josh and I in uh, the Evolution Strategy or elsewhere. But I mean, I, having watched Palau so uh, recent to uh, this season, just uh Two, uh, two weeks ago on the countdown for me. I mean, this season really is like a reverse Palau where uh, it, as if the Oolong tribe dominated Karor, who was the much more like buttoned up like a uh, group that had like a uh, solid leadership. And then Terry ends up being the Stephanie who makes it to the merge in this season. I feel like that this is uh, just about like what that was like to have the bizarro Palau season where the like much more the, the group that does not have their act together somehow beats out the group that just has like uh, their general who is just uh, giving them their marching orders all the way through. That's a great comparison. It really <laughs> is. Yeah. I think like the Terry Tom comparison really works well. And mm -hmm. I think that like, it's interesting that Lamina just can't win considering how in sync they seem to be compared to Kasaya. And they do have a fair bit of strength on their tribe. So it's actually kind of shocking. that They just can't seem to pull out a win and that these like zany characters that hate each other for the most part just keep winning repeatedly in this season. It's amazing. And then they stay together after the merge. Mm -hmm. Like they all hate each other so much and nobody flips. Yeah. yeah. You know, it really is amazing just to see what an eclectic group because you have Suri who is, you know, so perfect here in this season. Mm -hmm. She's a uh, great confessionals all the way through. You really see most of the season through her point of view as she's trapped on the island uh, with all of these crazy, colorful characters who just uh, fight and fight and fight. And so uh, you have her trapped with, uh, you know, Aris, who. Just, I, I do think that they kind of took the edge off of Aris a little bit uh, to give him like the winner edit where uh, that uh, perhaps yeah. may have been tougher to live with at, at certain times that you definitely see him butting heads with different people on the tribe. Uh, and Danielle, who's always fighting with uh, Shane, seemingly <laughs> Shane himself, Courtney, who is a character, Bruce, who's also uh, out there. So it's a, it's a lot to deal with. 
Yeah, I think that it's it's only that I think what makes it even better is that like they chose each other because like unless we forget this was like a pick 'em. This was a a, a, a a schoolyard pick 'em that they ended up in these two tribes. And so it's just fantastic to watch. I think that I honestly think that Sari shines in this season a lot of the fact is due to like she's on this wild tribe and I feel like she provides such great color commentary for it and not only that she's entertained we see her giggle so much this season because she is just enjoying living with these wild and nutty people you know Lindsay for me I feel like that uh on this rewatch I feel like that so much of the season hinges on the battle between Terry and Aris where that they are just like from like the back half of the season on it's just basically you know can Aris stop Terry in the challenges and you know that's going to be a battle that goes all the way down to the final 3 does that hold up for you, the interest and the intrigue between uh, Terry and Aris and all these challenges? What I think is kind of interesting is like Terry wins pretty much everything. So I think there's like in my head, there's this rivalry of like, who's going to win it this time? It's always Terry. So I don't. I think I have that a bit more built up in my head. So I think more of the story is like, how the hell does Aris manage to get by every time when he's not protected? So I think that's more where the story is for me. Mm -hmm. and I think a lot of that comes down to Sari being amazing and she's working with Aris, so she's protecting him. But like at no point when he is eligible to be voted for, does he actually get all the votes? So I think that's kind of more the story. Yeah, because Terry is certainly gunning for him uh, mm -hmm. all along the way. And, you know, there are a couple of moments where it looks like Aris could be in trouble. And that's one of the reasons why he's so motivated to try to beat Terry, because it's his butt that's going to be on the line i think that probably the closest it comes for aris is when sari uh pulls off the three two one mm -hmm. which i'm sure we'll talk about mm -hmm. in, in in great detail but uh ju just uh the aris and terry uh, rivalry yeah you feel like that uh was that bringing a lot to you uh no not particularly i don't particularly care about like this like alpha male rivalry situation that's happening um i also think I agree, like Lindsay with Lindsay, like Terry bests him time and time again. To me, at least what the edit was trying to serve us and what probably uh had most of the fans interested back when this aired was can Terry do it? Like, can he win enough immunities to get by? He's the underdog. I feel like he's supposed to be super likable in this season. We'll get into if he actually is likable in this season. Um, but no, I don't. I guess we're the reason they want us to believe in that rivalry so strongly is because Aris is going to end up winning the season. So they kind of need to then, well, how do they tell Aris's story? Like it, it makes perfect sense to balance him off of uh, Terry and his wins. And the fact that it really bothers Aris that he cannot beat Terry in these challenges. Yeah. You know, I think Aris is an interesting survivor character and we haven't talked about survivor blood versus water yet, but I feel like that so much of that season hinges on the relationship he has uh, with his brother. But a lot of this uh, Aris Terry relationship really is sort of hinging on sort of like this father son relationship uh, between the two of them. And, you know, Aris like trying to, uh, you know, knock off the person who is his father figure in the tribe. <laughs> I almost all I could Very think of was like all I could think of was like you're not my real dad. Like <laughs> I feel like that's exactly the type of relationship they have, and I feel like Aris. I mean, he's so young here; he's only 24. Mm -hmm. Um, I just feel like he he wants to be treated like more of an adult than Terry's actually treating him. I feel like anytime there's anybody younger than Terry, he calls them like a kid constantly, yeah. and not for nothing. Even if I'm only 24, I'm gonna be annoyed with somebody constantly calling me a kid. Yeah. Well, I do feel like that throughout the season, I do feel like that Aris has like very specific like rules of engagement for conduct. And I feel like that he will often like call people out about like how they are like uh, conducting like the tenor of a conversation, <laughs> which like I kind of feel like is something that would get very annoying uh, if you were on Survivor in terms of like uh, stopping down to talk about how the person is talking to you on principle as opposed to just trying to uh, play a, a social game. Lindsay, you never see Suri really sort of like, um, you know, chastise someone for the way they're conducting a conversation. 
Yeah, I think the only time you might kind of see that is like when Terry is reprimanding her about tossing her torch on the ground and she's like, mm-hmm. don't speak to me like one of your children or whatever. But um, yeah, but you're right. I think there's not so much of this like tone policing that's going on where RS is like, no, you must respect me and you must treat me this way. And I think there's a little bit probably to the fact that RS was on the young men's tribe. So it's like you are one of these young boys, whereas I was on the older men's tribe. And I think maybe oh, that's interesting. Something- from the get-go mm-hmm. of like, I yeah. was one of the elder statesmen and you're you just know, a young pup. For us, they're only in those tribes for a couple of days, but mm-hmm. or like, in a, you know, I think it's only the first episode and they swap in episode yeah. number two. But I do wonder if that might have like uh, had an impact uh, that went on for the players in the season of sort of like, oh, everybody thinks of me as a just a uh you know a, a young man and uh you know i'm i'm a gr- in the words of rory a grown-ass man <laughs> well and i think like there's probably something to that working the other way as well whereas it, where it's like melinda versus Suri, and they're like gotta get these old broads out of here and it's like, yeah, wait, Melinda's like 32. 32. she might be fine but and they like, repeatedly no, say <laughs> they repeatedly say that um that Suri is like the mom of the tribe mm-hmm. which yeah i mean it could be for multiple reasons one of which she actually is a mom in real life so obviously that's going to impact things but yeah i mean, I mean there's something to it i mean they were only in those tribes for four days but you're still labeled as that um yeah. just like in a brains versus uh beauty versus brawn right like it's it's a label that is put upon you on the day one of these tribes yeah Mm -hmm. being called an old woman on survivor has never served anyone well so So awful and the fact that they have tribe names and yet no one uses them it's it's younger women older women like i don't Uh like that Mm -hmm. (laughs) it's different now i gotta say yeah yeah now that now that i'm like close like closing in on 30 years old i'm getting offended <laughs> at these 32 year olds being called older women one foot in the grave Jess. <laughs> well practically yeah uh, this is a season uh which introduces uh the real exile island twist of course uh like with palau we talked about a couple of weeks ago janu gets sent to exile island has uh this uh great experience there in survivor guatemala they introduce the hidden immunity idol and it's definitely not on the damn ground and so or it definitely is on the damn ground. And uh, we combine those two things here in Survivor Panama, Exile Island, where we have a twist where people will be sent to Exile Island, where they will have the opportunity to search for a hidden immunity idol. Uh, Lindsay, uh, Exile Island in its first incarnation here, how did you feel like uh, it plays in this season? So I think it's fun and I mean, obviously, we'll get into the actual mechanics of like finding the idol and all of that, I'm sure. My first reaction to it was like, ah, this is like the third giant head on an island we've seen. We should like power rank those the ones that Rob has seen so far, like Rob versus Sandra versus Skull. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I think it plays well. I think it's really fun. I think Misty gets completely screwed on the clue that is given to her on the first episode. Like, Mm -hmm. Why were you left here? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway. Yeah, no, I think it's good. Yeah, I mean, just uh, Exile Island, I think, comes like pretty fully formed. Uh, it, mm-hmm. it really does not evolve much in terms of Exile Island, pick the person that's going to go there. And uh, that's basically, I mean, going into that I just talked about in Survivor San Juan del Sur. It's funny that we had the back to back the first season with an Exile Island for a, re- a true game mechanic and then uh, the final season to feature Exile Island mm-hmm. as a other than, you know, the, you know, occasional person uh, here or there going for, you know, one episode to an Exile Island. Uh, interesting that we sort of have the bookends of Exile Island. Yeah, I think Exile Island is fine. I just think it loses intrigue after Terry finds the idol. It's kind of like, why do we care when someone is on Exile anymore? We know there's not an idol there. Um, And because it happened so early in the season, I guess the real only intrigue after that is, oh, you sent me to Exile. I'm so pissed at you. Like the social repercussions of sending somebody to Exile, I suppose. But Eh, Exile's never been my favorite thing. I like to just, I don't like when we have to split our time. I mean, granted, I don't mind taking time away from Lamina, but if we can, if we're losing time with Kasaya to look at Exile, where's the intrigue? Yeah. You know, one of the things I thought was interesting here and in the first incarnation of Exile Island is that there is one point where Kasaya gets to send somebody from Lamina to Exile Island and they will be uh, safe from the vote, uh, Mm -hmm. which is, you know, similar to if people are watching the international uh, Survivor South Africa right now, Immunity Island 
where you know when i was on with uh, mike and shannon a couple of weeks ago on the amazing uh survivor south africa wrap up we were talking about how uh the idea of this twist really does help out the types of players that you would not think are normally helped out by a twist in survivor where sally ultimately get saved and uh certainly in the early going of survivor south africa you saw other players have the shot to get idols that were not uh typically the types of players who are people uh, who are gonna like rack up a lot of idols and advantages Lindsay, i thought that was so interesting that this this was here from the beginning this idea of like having a tribe pick a person to be immune from a vote yeah, I think that's a great point. It's not one I had thought about where you're probably not going to be advantaging someone like Sally a lot of the time when you're introducing these twists. But I think that works really well. And to Jess's point about a lot of the intrigue goes away once the idol is gone. I think it's the times where something different happens that it kind of gets exciting again, like that time where they send Sally and now she's safe and she's really happy to be there or the time when they send Danielle and Austin. And it's like, maybe they bonded. Maybe now they're going to change something up. And yeah. I wonder if that maybe could have like introduced a little bit more intrigue after it's like, well, the idol's not here. Who cares? Yeah, we just had the one time where we sent two people to Exile Island here in this season. I don't mm -hmm. think it happens at all in Cook Islands. I know they do uh, make a lot of that both in Micronesia uh, and also in right. Survivor Token Chains uh, and, and certainly in Survivor San Juan del Sur that we watched uh, last week with uh, with one person from two different couples going to Exile Island. So. Yeah, I, I do think there is uh, some interesting things that you uh, can do with it with sending multiple people there. So as far as uh, the Exile Island in this season, it really exists to have a place where people can go and look for the Hidden Immunity Idol, which is uh, the overpowered god idol uh, a couple of weeks back taryn talked about it at length with matt and mari in the cook islands recap uh just as the first seasons in a row where we're going to see uh two you know, alpha male players go to exile island uh in the first like quarter of the season find the idol and you know really uh run it all the way down to the end uh with their god idol yeah, and it does kind of, I mean, for better or for worse, right? Like it, it causes, I don't think we have Aris at the end if we don't have Terry with the idol hanging on to it and winning immunities with it. Um, it, it really doesn't play a huge factor in things because it never gets played. Um, but it's, it's well, interesting. I mean, it does play just, a factor in terms of like, you know, Aris yeah. being there. But just to talk that through, um, so I think that Terry wins every single immunity to the point where he never plays the idol. I, I'm like, so right. that even though he has the God idol, um, unless it like was psyching out the other players in terms of like, um, you know, it's it, like it does like I, I think that Yule actually made more use of the idol than right. Terry did. Uh, the one time that uh aris wins uh the immunity uh they don't even put the votes on terry no no it's and that's the funny thing and i think it's 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 that same thing that happens with yule people get scared off of voting for that person because they could play it after the votes are read so what's the point you just you're sending one of your own you know you you don't get to choose who's going home you're letting terry choose who mm -hmm. goes home in that situation which i think aris even says in the reunion he was terrified he knew that uh, Terry would want to vote him out. He's his biggest physical threat in the game. Um, so yeah, they they never give Terry the chance to choose who gets to go home. Mm -hmm. Well, in the time that he doesn't win is at final four, right? When RS finally gets it and they they don't even talk about it. They're not like, oh, let's put it on Terry because there's no point. Like he's just going to play the idol. Why bother? And then at mm -hmm. that point, I guess Suri goes out because that's who he and Daniel voted for. Right. And yeah. RS if anything, make it, make Terry it misplays play. the idol there where Danielle, he had the option to mm. give the idol to Danielle yeah. in that spot. And, and who knows, maybe Danielle might have just been trying to like snake Terry and she would have told Aris and Serena, like, hey, I've got the idol. Put the votes on Terry tonight. Uh, who knows? Yeah, I but, guess we don't really know. But she says that if you would have given me the idol, I would have definitely taken you to the final two. And Jeff asked in the final two, does Terry beat Danielle? Like, uh, it seems like he does five to two. So maybe not giving away the idol ultimately is what cost Terry the game. 
I was thinking about this of like, can you imagine if he gave his idol to Danielle and then she goes to Aris and Suri is like, I have it. Let's vote for him. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine that moment would have been wild? Right, Because based on what I understand of these idol rules, she has to have it in her possession Mm -hmm. at the tribal council. He can't hand it to her in that moment. So they have the time to plan that if that's what they want to plan. Does Danielle actually do that though? She's a little bit of like a, you know, a back and forther, but I don't know that she's, that cutthroat especially considering how hard it was for her at the final three to make the decision who to bring to the end i don't see her going to sari and um aris and being like i have the idol let's vote out terry just talk to me about the actual hidden immunity idol in this season Ugh. i did not recall how creepy it was it's disgusting it's like supposed to be like a shrunken head it looks like a gross like it looks almost like one of those like puff keychains gone wrong because mm-hmm. it's just like dangling it has gross hair the point where terry shows it to his wife i would have been like get that thing away from me it looks haunted yeah Lindsay, what is the theme of this season with all the skulls and shrunken heads? Yeah, I just have a note here at the top of my notes that just says, like, why so many heads and skulls? Yeah. <laughs> it seems like that's, I like, all the I played a season, like, in Panama, and I, I don't recall all of uh, this, like, death and shrunken heads. <laughs> yeah, it's very bizarre. And they say at the end when Terry, like, finally pulls out the idol and shows it to everybody who's left, I guess, at, like, final three or something, they're like, oh, it kind of looks like Shane. <laughs> like, <his hair>. mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Shrunken head with smoking six packs a day. <laughs> it's like Beetlejuice. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that that was uh very odd this o- overall. And it would have been maybe better for Lamina had somebody else on Lamina actually had uh the immunity. I mean Terry doesn't know the future, but Terry's mm-hmm. actually never gonna need it. I, I do wonder if okay, if Sally had the idol and then Terry's immune if that would have forced uh, Kasaya to eat each other earlier. Yeah, it's certainly possible, especially because if Sally has it, uh, well, it's it's really, isn't it Sally and, and Terry deciding who goes home in that moment? So it's mm-hmm. most likely Aris going home. I believe that's who they voted for. Um, and then I guess the real question is, is Aris the glue holding the Kasaya tribe together? And I, I don't think so. To me, he doesn't he seem is. very gluey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I think that there might be sort of like I think he's beating the the drum a little bit of like, hey, like like let's keep this group together. But I do feel like that Sari seems like that she is more the uh, person who is uh, re- reeling people in. I, I'm not sure, so sure about Courtney. I'm not sure who necessarily the Courtney Wrangler is in the group. But I think that Sari is doing uh, a, a lot of the the maintenance work here with the group. I think Shane like does a lot of the intimidating yeah. of Courtney and does a lot of the like, can we not make this difficult? Can we like just whipping do the votes? Thing? Yeah. 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 I think yeah. that I and also that. Sorry, go No, ahead, go ahead. I, are you gonna say Danielle? Because I was also gonna say I yeah. feel like Danielle <laughs> is like very much the glue, not in like a very sweet, nice way, which Sari is, but she'll like I feel like begrudgingly gets along with these people. Like she, she holds them together in a very odd way. She's somewhat of a Courtney Wrangler. She puts up with Shane's nonsense. By the end, she seems close enough to Aris. And obviously she labels Suri as like her closest person on the beach. So, mm-hmm. Well, and there's one moment, too, that I think is really, really good from Aris and Shane, where Bruce seems like he's the biggest flight risk. And both of them are like, you're in charge. You're the guy running the show. I love that they, so much. It's so good. It's such an amazing moment. And he's yeah. like, you're right. Oh, my God. It's so good. Yeah. He's like, I love being the swing vote. I have so much power. They respect me so much. Yeah. <laughs> Even Shane is like, well, you're the tribe elder. You're, yeah. you know. You're yeah. like, uh, and Aris is really laying it on thick, and oh, Bruce yeah. is just like <laughs> lapping it all up. Maybe mm-hmm. that's what happened to Bruce. He just like, uh, <laughs> it took in too many compliments, <laughs> too much spoon floated up his colon. <laughs> yeah, he got bloated from, from that. You know, we haven't talked too much about Shane yet, but uh, he is so dynamic through mm-hmm. the whole season. And I know that he is like super rough around the edges. And certainly like uh, that th- there are things about like the things that he said and the way that he acted, uh, which have not aged great. But he was somebody that you couldn't take your eyes off of then. And I, I just felt like that every time he was on the screen, I was just glued to uh, watching what was going to happen next. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely electric casting. So, so good. 
<laughs> Even his physical like mannerisms, I find mm -hmm. intriguing. I can't stop watching the way he just stands. Like the way he, <laughs> the just the way he stands is fascinating. Uh, obviously, everything with the blackberry and the stump and just his his outbursts, um, yeah. which seem to come at random. I assume also having to do with nicotine withdrawal and you know uh, caffeine withdrawal. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it just makes him intriguing to watch throughout the entire season. And it's mm -hmm. a very raw storyline of somebody who's going through a lot, both emotionally uh, with missing his son. And then also from like biologically going through withdrawal. He's somebody who like uh, talks about dealing with addiction. And I, I think there's also, he, you know, he, he self describes uh, that he is, uh, you know, uh, very, ADD, uh, but I think that there's definitely like uh, some other like mental health aspects of like what he's experiencing on the island, and the the way that uh, mental health is talked about in this season, I think, is also very interesting, and I think that like the conversation around mental health has really evolved in the time since Survivor Panama, because I mean that uh, that everything the way that like it's talked about with Shane, especially when we get to the reunion, it's like, so is that real or is that rubber? room type uh like and they'll show shane in like the coming up next time and there's like sound effects like cuckoo cuckoo mm -hmm. uh so that I, I do think like it's a very you know uh complicated conversation around shane as a whole in the season yeah but i think one of the things that really draws me to shane as a character is like i think we often get people who are like extremely aware of the camera and really aware of how they're coming across and shane is like i think aware of the camera but doesn't care and he's just like this is what i'm feeling you are gonna hear about it i'm gonna tell you exactly what i think and then it's all gonna blow over and we can move on but i think it's like so fascinating to watch someone like that who completely wears their hearts on their sleeve like there's no question of what he's feeling he's so direct and so fun to watch he just completely mm -hmm. captivates you I think there's also times when he is, you know, us uh, joking around. And I think that the, mm -hmm. the show is sort of like treating things he's saying as uh, literal, like when he's talking about uh, the, his sitting chair, his thinking chair, and he's uh, like yelling <laughs> like, uh, hey, this is my chair. You get your own. Like, I, I think that he's uh, not being uh, deadly serious uh, in that moment or like with the Blackberry uh also where you know i think you know he's doing something you know for fun and who knows like to what degree he's in on the bit and then you know you have confessionals from different players like i think sean or i think shane is losing it because he thinks he's talking to people like i think he knows the blackberry isn't real oh he definitely knows the blackberry isn't real but i also think it does provide him like a source of comfort to to imagine himself you know, speaking with his son, I think that like the problem is that the moments that Shane is being serious and the moments that Shane is joking, they're kind of difficult to tell the difference <laughs> when he's having outbursts. So, um, yeah, I think it's just kind of like a perfect storm of events, especially because I think if Shane doesn't end up on Kasaya with this specific group of people, he might go home earlier than than he actually did. And we'd miss out on all of the comedy gold that we get between him and Courtney. Him and Danielle, like you just have these people who are just electric and they're firecrackers and they're all mixed together on one tribe. Yeah, <laughs> Lindsay, uh, there's a point early in the season where Shane is talking about that he wants to go home. And when he goes uh, to the new Kasaya after the draft, he seems like uh, reinvigorated by the fact that he's on the tribe with Courtney and Danielle and to some degree Aris and you know, th that he gets reeled back into the game. A subtle thing that I noticed, like in the finale, in the episode proper, it seems as though Courtney was the person who was like the most responsible of talking uh, Shane into staying in the game. And Shane even thanks Courtney at one point for that. He owes her a debt of gratitude. He doesn't know any anybody else, anything except for Courtney in this game. She was the one. But in the finale, they said, and Aris talked Shane into staying in the game when he wanted to quit in the back on day, whatever. Yeah. So I think the way I remember it is like, 
there is definitely a moment where Courtney's like, what are you doing? You're, you're like hanging us out to dry or whatever. And then Iris does take him aside and says like, okay, can you just like sleep on it? And if you still want to quit tomorrow, like then we'll vote you out. I promise. But just try like maybe once mm-hmm. you eat and drink, like maybe then you'll feel better. And he's like, yeah, okay. And then that's when he and Iris go and tell Sari and Melinda it's one of you. Yeah. There's so many times in this season where <laughs> that we see uh, that, okay, they make a decision and then they have to go back and then change the decision afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> like aside, getting on the same page. Uh, that Tell me that an hour ago. Yeah, a few <laughs> times in the in the pre-merge, uh, specifically uh, with, the, with with this vote, uh, with the Bob Dog uh, vote. Uh, it seems like it's really come down to the wire on a couple of the Nick Austin uh, votes of uh, what they're going to do. Uh, so uh, that that's all very fun as we uh, talk about uh, how dysfunctional Kasaya was. Um, <laughs> Any other thoughts, uh, big picture overall, Jess, about the season? No, I'm just excited to get into it. I mean, I think we're going to be spending probably most of our time talking Kasaya over Lamina. But I I do want to say up front, I feel like this season is perfectly ranked here. This is actually exactly where I ranked it, 15th. (laughs) Um, I think I've seen a lot of people online saying they think it's too low. But I think they might forget how boring Lamina is. And there is quite the begonging, which is still interesting to watch um but not as interesting as other seasons it it has characters and it has heart it's not the best strategy season out there so i think that like 15th kind of is perfect for it Lindsay, how do you feel about where this season is ranked 15th overall i feel pretty good about this honestly like i kind of agree with jess in the sense that like yeah i think there's a lot to love here but i think there are definitely some things that don't yeah work. Um, I think it's not a perfect season, but I think it's a lot of fun, especially if you're in it for like, like this to me isn't like a train wreck season like Gabon. This is like there's some good strategy in here. There's definitely mm-hmm. some people who know what they're doing, but there it's got the elements of wackiness that make this a lot of fun. Yeah, for me, I personally think uh, when, uh, uh, that hopefully uh, Shane doesn't listen to this before I talk to him <laughs> tomorrow. I, I think it might be a couple of spots too high that I know I've watched seasons already in the countdown that I think are more consistent all the way through. And while this season certainly has high highs and high comedic highs uh, all along the way, that you do spend a lot of time with Lamina, who mm-hmm. is kind of a snore and certainly Kasaya makes up for it. But even at the merge, when the, when the two tribes merge, it's like, unlike Palau where, okay, that Palau, like Oolong is done by the time Stephanie shows up, you it's, they merge six to four, which I don't even understand because uh, Kasaya dominates uh, so much along the way. And then you still have to get through Nick's boot and Austin and, and, and Sally. Like yeah. there's three episodes like that are pretty uneventful in terms of uh, what's going on with the game. So overall, and not to mention, and then you follow that up with the Bruce Medivac episode. And while there are, you know, insane <laughs> moments that are happening. The actual along the way, Medivac itself is amazing. <laughs> Yeah, I just feel like that there are like, uh, you know, s- several moments uh, in the season where you could sort of like check your phone and s- see what else is going on. So there mm-hmm. there are there are high highs, but I do think uh, there are also uh, some lean moments uh, throughout the course of the season. And I, I think that there's been a few seasons, especially uh, ones I've talked about recently that uh, don't have as many of those. I think consistency is a really great word that you used, Rob, in the sense that like we watched Africa, I don't know five weeks ago, six weeks ago, sure. something like that. And I remember, I feel like there were more moments that I felt were dragging when I was watching this season than I did even when I was watching Africa. Just, I think it was a more consistent season to me. And I think I probably had this around like 17 or 18 on my list. So a little bit lower than this, but like inarguable that this is a very yeah. fun. There's some and and again, ones. most of that lays at the feet of La- Lamina, who yeah, really, really is like the, the, like, uh, the functional yet ineffective tribe where <laughs> they, they are just like, you know, yeah. very- they're in sync, but they just can't win. <laughs> Right, Ruth Marie, iconic survivor player, <laughs> and, and there's not a lot of personality there, and so, no. and, and there's also not a lot of disagreement in the ranks in terms of like who's gonna go home. There's like a very clear pecking order, and it's like, right. oh well, we lost. Okay, uh, like walk yourself to the plank and go home. So right. that's that that's pretty much it over at Lamina, and she, you know, except for Sally losing the spear. I mean, they didn't even get that man, or they didn't even fi- have a no, fight. No, Terry, over that. Terry, in the confessional is like, you know. 
I'm pretty upset about the spirits. Like, whoa, calm down, Terry. I Don't get too heated. <laughs> Meanwhile, you know Shane would be like losing his mind at Sally. Right. <laughs> right. Like a great I mean, microcosm of like the difference between the two tribes is like you have Ruth Marie and Dan versus Shane and Courtney. It's like, yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's like this is, yeah. This and Dan is like, again, I do okay. I know we like we are not a huge fan of Lamina. Dan, for some reason, I don't know why. I'm a huge Dan Fuego oh stan. Oh. I just find him absolutely adorable. Like, he just seems so pleased to be there. Oh and just, God. he's so just cute. And I love how he just can't even keep secrets in. He just well, can't yes. do it. Well, no, he has one secret. He has one <laughs> secret. He can't he stop telling. telling everybody. I love it. I think it's so funny. Is it because you've been within 200 miles of him vertically? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> vertically. <laughs> I love him. Oh my god! I just think he's like he's so sweet, and I just find him very endearing. Versus like Nick and Austin, where I'm like, okay, who cares? Yeah. All right, Dan. Okay, big deal. You went to space. Okay. <laughs> he loves telling people so much. I tell, tell everybody. Like, did somebody bully Dan when he was a kid? You'll never go to space, Dan. Earth it's, Dan. And it's not just the fact that he he doesn't even just say like, oh, I was an astronaut. Like the way he tells people yes. tickles me to know. Turns out I did a little more than work on a space shuttle. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, oh, you were an astronaut. I like, know, oh, I can't believe it. I was an astronaut. I went to space. It was so cool. It was so crazy. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Ah! Tell me you don't love that. It's great. It's so funny. It did crack me up every time that he was like, turns out. Like every other <laughs> episode he's telling people. <laughs> A strange turn of events. I think he only went on Survivor <laughs> to tell people that he was an astronaut. Oh my God! Now everybody knows. <laughs> now, every, now, fi finally, what's he going to talk ev about now? <laughs> everybody knows. That's oh, so good. Yeah, I was going to do a red AMA, anymore. but instead, I'll do. I'll go on Survivor. <laughs> let everybody know what it was like. Because Lamina space. was Lamina was so boring that he was like, "I have to tell them this. There's nothing else going on." But all of them were so into it. They were like, oh "They my were God. God. He's a Dan man <laughs> Let us salute him on the way out. <laughs> mm -hmm. Dan Fuego. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> Let's talk about uh, this season as a whole, which uh, starts in an unusual way that we really abandon uh, very quickly. Uh, four tribes. Uh, we've divided the tribes by gender. We've divided the tribes by age. What if we did both? Uh, and we end up with uh, four tribes of four, which is which is tough on Survivor, because as we see in this first episode, really nowhere to hide uh, if you are on the tribe, which ultimately uh, is uh, the four person tribe. Uh, we start off, uh, Lindsay, I think it was kind of like a boring challenge to start the season. Oh, yeah, it's ridiculous. Just like run out here and smash some stuff and play this game of chance like if you manage to find a thing first then run back like yeah it's not not a very good challenge not very exciting yeah it's not really something that you could follow along with or you know uh, play along at home it was just like we're watching people uh, break skulls open uh, and ultimately it's the group of younger women who ends up losing the first tribe and somebody has to get sent to exile island uh, which we will see uh, Misty Giles end up being uh, the first person to go <laughs> to Exile Island. Of course, we talked about uh, Giles uh, a couple of weeks ago. That's what I was thinking rewind. when you said her name. Misty! <laughs> that's, that's all I could think about. Yes. Uh, I, that is a very whodunit thing to have a bunch of skulls cry. <laughs> I love Misty. I'm really sad that she went so early in the season. To be honest, I feel like she could have done very well yeah. on the show. And it's it's really upsetting that she goes so early. Um, and the, the, the reason that she gets stuck behind on Exile is rock, paper, scissors. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You have some uh, odd takes, Jess. Love are these Dan, odd? You love Misty. I yeah. don't know. She didn't do anything. I think Misty could have been really good. Uh, let's be yeah. real. She's better TV than Sally. Sure. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I mean, uh, Misty was uh, a bit of a, like a proto Parvati uh, who's yeah. going to show up in the next season. I mean, like, it's not like Parvati 1.0 is lighting the world on fire. So, yeah, I mean, Misty is like uh, bringing just about like that same energy to the table. Uh, she uh, likes papayas, Lindsay. <laughs> she does. <laughs> <It's> orgasmically delicious. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Oh and her gosh. and Sally were kind of a, like a one two combo at Lamina where they yeah. were trying to work over Nick yeah. and Austin. Except She's Sally. Flirt and I'm your buddy. <laughs> yeah. Sally. Sally's like your pal. Yeah. <laughs> Sally Pally. <laughs> Sally me sucks. Yeah. It was like, come on, Sally. And like, uh, I think she calls uh, Misty like the Southern Belle or the Southern Flirt or something like that. Yeah. Uh, I think Misty had potential. Uh, it just I think she had potential her. too. Yeah, I, I think that she was somebody who like uh, there really wasn't like a stand culture in uh, 2006 uh, when this season was airing. But I do think that that would have been the kind of thing where on the Survivor subreddit, like I think that there would have been like a lot of like Misty Giles robbed uh, yeah. G dot yeah. Isles. <laughs> <laughs> G. Rs. Yeah, I could totally see that. I don't know. I think that the the um the younger women tribe uh, in the beginning really cracks me up, and it's mainly because of Courtney. Um, mm -hmm. like and her With the turtle, the turtle. <laughs> They can't like they can't decide where to build a shelter, and the reason is because of Courtney. But nobody, yeah, I feel like Danielle down the line would be a bit more outspoken. But nobody is outspoken enough to be like, all right, enough with the dead turtle, Courtney. Nobody cares. Let's build a shelter. Yeah. Well, Sally in confessional is like, yeah, I think it's just a turtle that's washed <laughs> up here. I, was, I don't think that that was like intentionally put here or anything. It's like Mother that. Earth, Rob. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not it. Represents Earth. You know. Lindsay, we haven't talked too much about uh, Courtney overall as a character. There's a lot of Courtney here on this season. Uh, do you feel like that Courtney adds a lot to the enjoyment of Panama? So here's the thing. <laughs> Courtney, <laughs> an undeniably delightful character in the sense that she like brings a ton in terms of good content. She seems insufferable. <laughs> like mm -hmm. to spend even five minutes with Courtney seems unbearable. <laughs> seems like a lot. A lot. Yeah, mm -hmm. I can't imagine. And I will say, we'll get there eventually, but uh, I watched a lot of these episodes on 1.5. Courtney's fire dancing on 1.5X <laughs> is truly something to behold. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's wild that they got the fire sticks. Yeah, very bizarre addition to the season. And she's just like, oh, we can all play. It's a toy for everyone. Yes. <laughs> like, Nobody go near those, please. <laughs> Producers really wanted to, they must have been very impressed with uh, how cool the fire sticks were. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> weird yeah. Burning Man stuff from Courtney. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so a lot of the action is going to focus on uh, the older tribe. And every time I've gone back and and looked at this, I, I guess uh, this is the third time through Survivor Panama for me. Just I, I'm so impressed with Timbertina, and I oh, yeah. really am more convinced than ever that she would have been. I think she would have played three times uh, had they not divided the tribes in this way. And she ran into the buzzsaw that was Suri Fields. 100%. If, here's the thing. In a normal season where they're not split into four tribes of four, like Suri is immediately someone who's on the chopping block as like, oh, the weakest member of our tribe. She's afraid of leaves. You know, like vote this woman out. But she's so good socially. And not only that, but it's obvious from the get-go that Tina's going through like a really rough time. And she's spending a lot of time alone, um, which is time away from socializing with people you just met. So I completely agree. I also think that if she had come on not five months after her son was in a car accident and passed yeah. away, I think she'd do a lot better as well. Just socially, um, she'd be in a better headspace for the game. Um, yeah, I was really impressed with her. Like the amount that she does in one episode is amazing. Sure. And I certainly always remember her as a provider for the group in terms of they got the fire going and the water and then she finds the fish. She just finds the fish. Uh, which is sort of like foreshadowing like uh, for like uh, Sari is going to end up with a fish of her own uh, at the end of the season. But Lindsay, she's so good in confessional also. Yeah, she's really great. She's such a presence and she knows so much. Like she's just so good outside. Like she's the exact opposite of Sari in that she like was made for all of this out outdoor stuff. And it just sucks so much that like she doesn't have any idea that she's going up against what will end up being one of the greatest players in the history of this show. And then there are only two other like nobody people on the season. Yeah. Her Marie, tribe, Marie, Marie, no, yeah. yeah and, yeah. and like there's just nowhere for her to go. And if there had been any other configuration, I think she would have made it so far. 
Yeah, it's insane that Suri is able to uh, pull this off. It just mm -hmm. she's just uh, uh, you know like a a tiger boxed into a corner here to, from the start, and I don't know how she did this. Yeah, she just sees a threat coming for her, and she's like, "These two seem like I could pull them under my sway here," and she just goes to work, and you just like, immediately see what she is capable of. Why did they go with her? No idea. Uh, like, my my best guess is is that Tina was like off on her own because we see her like Maybe. writing her son's name in the sand and it does Charlie. seem like i think it's that paired with sari getting in their minds of like we won't be able to beat her at the end guys i know this is like day two mm -hmm. but we that's, can't beat her at the end that's the thing they somehow manage she somehow manages to convince them that they should already start thinking about how they're gonna beat yes. her in 37 more days like if we can't beat her she's a huge threat look how good she is and sari does this amazing job too of like completely depersonalizing her where she's like oh what's the lumberjack lady doing and just like does such a good job of alienating her and it's so it sucks so much that tina's going through all this bad stuff because she just wasn't there to defend herself and it's yeah. like oh brutal you know i think it's an interesting like sort of paper that somebody could do about uh Ceri's nicknames and uh, you know that <laughs> so i think that andrea had told me on the podcast once if Ceri gives you a nickname it's a good thing but i'm not sure if like the nickname needs to have your name in it, like officer oh, Sarah. So uh, mm, and I forget what her okay. nickname was for Andrea. I don't know if she called her like princess or something like that. So I'm not sure necessarily if it's uh, a positive or a negative when Suri <laughs> has a nickname for you. I think if maybe if it, if it has your first name in it, it's more of a positive. Yeah, she's not trying to depersonalize you if your name is yeah. in her nickname. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sari shouldn't be able to pull off what she does, but it, it is just a sign of things to come that she just slips in, ingratiates herself with everybody, and suddenly everybody loves Sari. Mm -hmm. And suddenly she's at the like at the final five, and you're like, How how did you get here? <laughs> yeah. yeah. In such a position of strength uh, as well. Uh, she mm -hmm. just like takes it like uh, a little little bit at a time at a time. Um Anything else from the first episode that uh, we really, you know, spend uh, just like a, a, a quick snippet with uh, each of the tribes before we go back to the immunity challenge? Not much beyond Misty pretends she found the idol. Yes. In the most obvious way possible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I agree with Lindsay. Lindsay, you brought this up a little bit earlier about how like she gets completely screwed in terms of like the clue she gets. Why? why? And he doesn't even emphasize the word why that much, I will say. I, yeah. I don't feel like well, Jeff emphasized it enough. <laughs> yes. So he says, uh, and think about why you're here. And as for your first clue, you've already heard it. Yeah, he says, like, why you got left behind. So she's like, is it behind me? Behind me? <laughs> I mean, I don't blame yeah. her for thinking that. It does make logical sense. So um, this is the first time out for Exile Island. I think that they're like, uh, hey, uh, these clues have to be very vague. We don't want somebody finding the, the one idol in the first episode. Yeah. I do want to touch on RS2 before we leave this episode, just because this is our winner. And the edit he gets in the first episode is like, everybody put your hands in. Can you feel the heat? And everyone's like, uh, no. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's fair. And I start for RS. <laughs> Yeah, it is kind of weird now that you think about that. Like, this is our winner. Put your hands in and tell me if it, when you feel the warmth. And the, I think, <laughs> and also, <laughs> yeah. And the other thing to track going through that starts here is I feel like Austin is both the mouthpiece for mouthpiece for Austin and for Nick. Any confessional Nick had a chance at getting, Austin snaps right up. And I think I've figured out why. And it's because he has these weird sound bites. Like he loves comparing things. Metaphors, yeah. Yes, he <laughs> loves them. Like he's like Sugar Ray Leonard or just like uh, Marvin Gaye. <laughs> let's get it on like he just yeah i don't know austin was fine i didn't mind austin this this time i watched this season yeah i i feel like that with austin who does get a lot of confessionals but like says nothing that i feel like that there must have been like a, like a couple of like producers there who just like really dug austin's sense of humor like this guy's the best <laughs> He's so funny. Like, oh man like sugar ray leonard oh yeah that's great <laughs> That's There's great. a moment later after Dan reveals his astronaut thing, and he's like, "Guys, I forgot to tell you, I'm John Grisham." And everyone's like, "Eh, classic Austin, <laughs> like this yeah. gentle comedy from Austin." Yes, uh, he was an author, right? Did he ever? Yeah. Did he? Did he have something published uh, after the season? 
Oh, Did it ever question. happen? Oh, gosh, we look up, look up on Amazon Austin. if uh, Austin, Cardi. Austin, uh, Austin Cardi had uh, what his p publishing <laughs> record is. We'll see. I have a book club here for uh, the Samara Top 40 countdown. All right. Um, so in episode number two, uh, we get, you know, ba uh, some bad storms. Uh, everybody's getting soaked. And uh, is this when uh, Shane is asking, uh, please, uh, God, sir, no more torrential yeah. downpour? <laughs> no more torrential downpour, sir, God. No more yeah, of those. Uh, I've, I've, <laughs> I've been saying that in my house. All, and then my kid's like, Dad, why do you keep saying that? <laughs> This gets stuck in my head. Bites. <laughs> Please, no more torrential downpour, Sir God. <laughs> no more Incredible. <laughs> because I had to move in the rain this week, where <laughs> I had like uh, like movers, like uh, were like they like the the stuff came. And I was like, carries to please no more torrential downpour, sir God. <laughs> so anyway, uh, we get our draft. Mm -hmm. You ready for uh it's glorious for the it's draft? It's really glorious. <laughs> Four tribes are gonna become two. Uh it's gonna be uh Terry and Danielle DiLorenzo who are gonna be uh doing the drafting. Mm -hmm. And the captain Danielle, of sports herself. The captain yes. of sports. Her number one pick is Shane Powers, the cool guy. <laughs> it's, it's a, cool a Boston tattoo. <laughs> mm -hmm. definitely the reasoning, <laughs> the reasoning behind okay. this pick is what's baffling because she has to pick a man like that is the criteria and yet she has young fit men like austin and nick staring her in the face also around her age group makes sense aris also around her age group makes sense no shane cool guy boston cool tattoo. Guy. yeah <laughs> and this really Lindsay's, you know sets the whole season into motion Oh, yeah, for sure. Because then like Terry's going to pick Sally. And it's just like, it, it's hilarious to me that Danielle picks who is ultimately her biggest nemesis. Like this is going to be the guy right. who's like, why do you have such an aversion to working? <laughs> like, mm -hmm. Why are you like this? I hate yeah. everything about you. And so. then Shane picks Courtney. And then it's like, really? Like Kasaya mm -hmm. is set. <laughs> My notes say Shane picks Courtney and will live to regret it. <laughs> <laughs> it's so perfect. It's yeah. so perfect when you just look at this triangle of people of Danielle, Shane, and Courtney, mm -hmm. and just how much they despise each other by the end of the season. The fact that they're the first three on the Kasaya tribe. Yeah. It's it's amazing. <laughs> do we think this was like intended to happen this fast that they would dissolve the four tribe thing? Or did they see that Tina went and they were like, oh crap, we gotta fix this? I think that in terms of like uh, the the mismatch of the tribes, uh, yeah. Like I feel like that once that the older women lose Tina, like it's like, all right, uh, are we losing Sari next? Yeah. I mean, they had to know this was going to happen, though, right? Like they saw the tribes mm -hmm. when they did this. Yeah, like, yeah. It's obvious that that's what's going to happen. But yeah, I actually feel like abandoned. It Four tribes in Cook Islands too. Like they're gonna ditch that pretty fast. Yeah, but too. at least it's four tribes of five in Cook yeah. Island, so uh, yeah. not a, not as rough. But I, I actually kind of feel like that if the older women went to tribal council again, I think it might be uh, goodbye to Ruth Marie. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> <laughs> so maybe it wouldn't have been. Ruth Marie. <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't have been as bad because if Sari could figure out her way to stay over Timbertina, I think she could figure out a way to get oh, either Melinda sure. or Ruth Marie. To mm -hmm. stick with her, unless Ruth Marie or Melinda were like actually like best friends. They're like Sari told us we'd be fine with it, the lumberjack lady, and we're not. We're, we're, not, fine. <laughs> we're not fine. <laughs> Far from fine. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. So we, we get our our tribes uh, drafted. Bruce is not drafted by either tribe. Uh, he's not out of the game. So no one, uh, Jonathan, uh, Jonathan or Wanda treatment for Bruce. He's going to go to Exile Island. Whoever loses is going to uh, then bring home Bruce. Uh, so uh, we're going to see ultimately, uh, you know, the tribes, uh, you know, start to the, get their act together. Uh, Lamina is going to win a uh, reward to start things off. Uh, but Kasaya is uh, a big happy family, Jess. They're so happy. Shane is so happy to have women around. He didn't like the older men tribe. He didn't feel like he fit in. Um, meanwhile, on the other side of the coin, Sari is not so happy. She feels no. like she's being invaded. 
Um, she's very annoyed by Courtney. <laughs> she has an iconic sigh in that confessional where she's just like, <sighs> we have been invaded. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. And Melinda and Sari feel out of the loop because we have Shane uh, making an alliance with Danielle, Courtney, and Aris, like straight out the gate, swearing on his son's life immediately. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I can understand why Sari would feel, you know, left out. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, not a great spot for Sari and uh, Melinda here uh, and uh, Kasaya. We talked about how uh, Sally is going to lose the Hawaiian sling. So, <laughs> Lamina, even when they get a reward here that they end up uh, losing it immediately. Uh, just there is some foreshadowing where uh, Terry is like telling like the instructions of how to use it. Just, just make sure you hold on to this part. Of the Hawaiian sling. <laughs> you don't lose it. Yeah. I feel like the worst place to practice using a Hawaiian sling is in like 40 foot deep water. Like, mm-hmm. like why not so, practice like on shore? Like a hot second, Sally? No? Yeah. She goes like, maybe I should have practiced more. And that just like fires it off. No sooner are those words out of her mouth. It is gone. Mm-hmm. I would not touch the Hawaiian sling on no. Survivor. No, not no after Rupert's reaction to like the head coming off of the other one. <laughs> Right, right. I feel like that, like, once you lose it, you cannot, like, go back to camp. Like, you have to stay in that exact spot. And it's like, okay, like, because once you leave where you are in the ocean, like, you'll never get back to the spot where you lost it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you didn't have Terry Dietz, you know, Captain America Superman to swim down and go get it. So they really. If anything, it's like, okay, Sally, you stay here. I'll go get Terry. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Sally, tread water. Tread water right here. I will go get Terry. Don't drown. I'll be right back. <laughs> yeah. So uh, anyway, we are are seeing uh, Aris is going to uh, uh, have a conversation with uh, the group. There's a lot of, a lot of group think at Kasaya about uh, what, what are we going to do? And so he just wants to come out and say um, it's either going to be Suri or Melinda who end up uh, who are going to go home here. Yeah. So this is after. Uh, Kasaya has lost and they're like that he's managed to convince Shane to stay it's like yeah mm-hmm. it's just gonna be one of you and Danielle and Courtney are like what the hell like you didn't talk about this at all yeah, with us. a lot like, of that in this just season. announces it it's yeah. horrifying it is absolutely horrifying and what's worse is that Aris points to this as a great move in his game in his final yes. tribal council I I felt so great about telling Melinda that she was going to be the one to go this is this is horrible. This is absolutely horrible if you want to build any relationship with Sari, which he ultimately mm-hmm. does. But don't tell her, oh, by the way, it's one of you two, and whichever one of you isn't going now is going next. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I felt like Sari had a very um, relatable reaction. She's like, I-, I don't know what you want me to say. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> Thank what are you? you supposed to say to that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks for telling me, Ara. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Hmm. That's especially after Shane has been like, I don't want to be here. I hate this. Let me go home. And then it's like, oh, actually, Shane changed his mind. And she's like desperate to stay. And that would be so insulting mm-hmm. to just hear like, actually, we've decided it's you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I love Sari um, saying to, I believe it's Bob Dog and Melinda, like, if somebody wants to quit, let him quit. Yeah. Just mm-hmm. the, the register that her voice yeah. gets to. <laughs> that was, yeah, that was really good, like, intonation <laughs> of uh, how she said it. Uh, and Sari is, uh, like, so uh, tr- transcendent uh, when she's on the screen uh, versus Melinda, who's not bringing a lot to the table, Jess. <laughs> No, she's 32. So again, don't know why she's on the older women tribe to begin with, but she's a singer entertainer. I didn't particularly find her entertaining, but then again, she wasn't around for very long. So who knows, right? Like maybe she gets into the dysfunction of Kasaya if she sticks around. My guess is no, but (laughs) yeah, she's there. (laughs) Singer entertainer. I'm trying to, I'm looking at her bio here. Uh, She entertained at Six Flags over Georgia for two years. She toured Europe while performing on a cruise ship, and she spent six years performing at Dollywood, often at times with Dolly Parton. Oh, oh fancy. Okay. Look at her. All right. Look she collects Marilyn Monroe memorabilia, and she watches CBS soap operas. <laughs> that seems a little pandering, Melinda. Yeah, right. Very on the nose, Melinda. <laughs> Only yeah. the CBS ones. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, so, all right. Uh, in the third episode, uh, Bruce gets welcomed to Kasaya, and really, uh, that <laughs> Lindsay, in some ways, uh, Bruce is like the Kasaya Messiah. 
<laughs> it's like, oh yes, they all needed my skills and knowledge, and I'm the most important person out here. It's like yes, very it's high at his own uh, ability. It's so great it? when you just find can like find somebody's buttons and like, oh, this is what they like. Uh, like, okay, yeah. well, and that's for for Bruce. Oh, Bruce, you're just you know everything. You're the best. Uh, oh, yeah. They eats that up. <laughs> There's a moment later where Danielle's like, he's an older man. He deserves our respect. We got to be nice to him. And he's like, yes, I love yeah. this. It's why, he that gave her, it's why he gave her his vote at the end. Yeah. True. yeah. So uh, Bruce comes in and his assessment of the group, Jess, is like uh, the group is not drinking enough water. And he says, <sighs> OK, well, I'm going to show you like I'm going to make a water filter. I'm going to teach you my my trick of how to do this. Here's how we're going to filter the water. Get not one, not two, three t-shirts. Dirty t-shirts. Doesn't matter. Been doing this <laughs> for years. Saying. This is gonna this is gonna get the water about 90% good. And then yeah. and then we can drink it. Then you then then you can drink it. My thing is, is if Courtney is questioning whether or not this is a good idea, <laughs> yeah, probably not a good idea. And she's like, Oh, I've I'm like in nature all the time. I've never heard of this before. <laughs> yeah. So here's what I think. I, I don't think that Bruce's t-shirt method actually does does anything. You don't you know, say. I, like, <laughs> so uh, I just think that, you know, in these seasons, and I have to take a look at the water source, but I believe they're getting water from a well and not from like, like in the Amazon, we had to go get drink water out of the Amazon River, the Rio, the Rio Negro. Uh, and you know, you were, you were drinking water that was like, looked like you had like a glass of iced tea, uh, to drink, to drink that water. And I have to think though, here in survivor Panama, uh, and, and like, as we play in survivor all-stars, I, I got to think that the water source is a well, and I don't think that survivor is going to fill the contestants <laughs> well with, uh, non potable water. It's like chuck a couple parasites in there for good measure. <laughs> Yeah, like I gotta think, like they're they're getting the water from somewhere, and I gotta think it's clean water they're filling up the well with. Right, but well, maybe this doesn't apply. But later, when HB mm. sees their like um their pot of of water, which I assume they were going to boil, um, it was like it was pretty dirty looking. It could just be dirty water, but I, he was like, "Oh, I thought that's what yeah. you used to like wash your feet in, or something." And yeah, and the pot doesn't ever get like uh yeah, it's, complete, it's not like stainless steel or anything like that. So I think there's yeah. like some some uh, discoloration that comes there. <laughs> but I kind of feel like that. You know, uh, in Survivor All Stars, you saw Rudy and Sue Hawk drinking the water from uh, the, from the well there. So, and, and they turned out okay. So, I think it's probably more precautionary than anything. So, I think it's like a risk reward of like uh, it's probably worse to be dehydrated than whatever risk you're taking to drink the water Survivor is giving you to start the game. Yeah, well, in the next challenge, Jeff is like, wow, you guys all look just look better. I can tell that you're more hydrated than before. And it was, mm -hmm. Yes, we yeah. feel amazing. So, so I mean, but that is like the uh, really high point of uh, Bruce stock in the game. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, sell high on Bruce. On, everybody uh, episode, loves Bruce. Episode yes. three. Everybody, everybody loves him there. Mm -hmm. uh, so ultimately, uh, we see at the reward challenge, uh, Lamina is going to win again. Uh, I believe they win tarps uh, this time. And rope, yeah, rope, pillows, tarps. Lanterns. Yes. And let me, and uh, Dan is so proud of uh, like uh, our shelter was designed to have a tarp uh, added to it. This was perfect. <laughs> teach this at NASA. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but then they send Bruce back to exile. Uh, and Shane says, well, these guys are playing for keeps. <laughs> Great moment. <laughs> dirty, dirty move to send Bruce back to exile Island. And Bruce has another rough night at exile. Lindsay. Yeah, they come right out and say, like, the reason we're doing this is because you told us that he's super helpful to you. So we've decided we're sending him back to make you weaker, which is going to rub Kasaya the wrong way. Like, they're going to use this for vengeance in the future. But yeah, Bruce is just going to be there in a huge storm. And they have a moment of silence for him over on, I think, at Lamina. Actually, they're like, poor Bruce. We poor did this Bruce. To him. <laughs> yes. I just, it's an underreported story. What a bad weather season in Panama is. It's brutal. It is absolutely brutal the amount of rain that they. They get and it's it does kind of like bring things down at certain points like you kind of yeah. have to wonder like okay do nick and danielle talk a little bit more strategize a little bit more if they're not just completely miserable on exile in the rain 
Um, yeah, they they get some, and it's it's to the point where I had forgotten that Kasaya looks like a swamp at one yeah. point. Like their sh- whole shelter is like nearly underwater. Uh, absolutely brutal. The amount of rain they get this season. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like, like he's just completely unprotected when he's on exile. Like it looks like he's just in the middle. Poor of Bruce. Hurricane. Yeah, Poor Bruce. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it seems a little bit worse in the pre-merge uh, than mm-hmm. ultimately. Uh, there's a couple of moments in the in the post-merge, but it seems like the first half of the game has most of the bad weather. But again, you know, uh, for whatever reason, Survivor Pearl Islands did not have it uh, too bad, but Survivor All Stars uh, in the same location, uh, another bad weather season, and they just get like these like torrential downpours uh which they usually goes on and on and on and the thunder is uh super intense uh in panama survivor has not been back to panama since uh season uh, 12 of the show so maybe it really is an issue for the production also well that and i think it was like it's the bugs too right like these contestants they look misty especially i noticed in yes. one scene brutal like i think it's also because she's pale that you could just notice the amount of just like red bumps all Mm -hmm. over her arms like it did seem like the bugs were an especially bad problem i don't know if it was only early in the season but i mean you see people just constantly like scratching themselves yeah that's interesting i feel like that in survivor pearl islands uh that's that's an issue too that i I don't recall that being like a major but although i had a long sleeve shirt so uh (laughs) that maybe not maybe not for me but i think also if i remember like i feel like amber also like uh got uh pretty uh eaten up by uh some of the so Maybe it's the the appeal of Panama for Survivor is that it's like uh like three hours from Miami I think uh like it's kind of like it's easy to get there but mm-hmm. ultimately uh Survivor uh, never ends up going back to Panama after this so uh while Bruce is over at Exile Island uh we're going to uh, see Misty and Sally a little bit try to uh, work on Nick and Austin and ultimately try to get some sort of a young person's alliance together. Lindsay doesn't go anywhere. Yeah, it goes nowhere. I find it really funny that during this sequence, Misty says, I didn't come out here to sit on my rump. <laughs> it's like, oh, so wholesome <laughs> for Misty. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that, yeah that's where we get the moment of sally being like yeah i'm just your buddy i'm your pal and yeah. missy's the flirt or whatever but by yeah, the way ahead. okay jess you are the uh misty stan on the panel <laughs> mm-hmm. could you tell us uh without looking what is misty's <laughs> occupation i mean she's not a masseuse um <laughs> even though we know that she's very she good not at a it masseuse. I mean, I feel like is she is she not like a, the mactress type or something? She's a missile what? engineer, right? Missile engineer. Yeah. Oh my goodness! Yeah. So I'm surprised that her, her and Dan and Fuego, Dan didn't Fuego have his... did not hit it off. Just too. Well, best he friends. didn't. He didn't tell her uh, that he was an astronaut. Well, you would think, did she not tell people that she was a missile engineer? Because I feel like that at the point that she says she's a missile engineer, he takes her aside. He's like, Yeah, you like projectiles. I feel like <laughs> I feel like I start with that. If I'm a missile engineer, hi, my name's Misty. I'm a missile engineer. Mm-hmm. Like that's the first thing coming out of my mouth. So you'd mm-hmm. think that's that's disappointing. See, so many layers to Misty. Yeah. You missed out. Yes, uh, <laughs> she has a degree in electrical engineering from Southern Methodist University. This is interesting. I wonder where she is nowadays. I'd love to hear from Misty. Be yeah, very so interesting to. <laughs> what she's uh, up to. To hear what she's up to. So uh, she has also lectured at motivational and engineering seminars. Oh, wow. (laughs) Right in that cross section there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, we'll see. She's like Danielle. She'd love to give speeches to people. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Okay. So uh, we have uh, very physical challenges here. I mean, I feel like that, uh, like from the survivor in the double digit Lindsay, uh, we see like Palau really got the ball rolling with uh, mm-hmm. very physical challenges of wrestling. Uh, th- I think this is uh, one of the more physical challenges in this season. Uh, and this might be a first of basically dig for like the uh, uh, what would you call this? Like a sack of potatoes. Yeah. And then <laughs> An uh, dig for the bag and then wrestle. Yeah, no, this one is absolutely iconic. So many great moments here, but obviously the highlight is right at the end with Bob Dog grabbing Ruth Marie by the back of her shirt and just like pulling her over to his mat. Absolutely incredible. Like you see her sprinting and he's coming behind and you're like, oh, you do not stand so iconic. Like it's, she's like, like her teeth. 
just grabs her. Please know why am I in this matchup? <laughs> I just love it. It's Mismatch. so good. Oh, Ruth Maria. It's so good. No, the physical ones, and this is. I mean, this is very, isn't this not the same challenge that in Heroes Villains they had like a million injuries? Mm-hmm. Like Rupert breaks his toe. Uh, I believe that um, Stephanie like dislocates her shoulder. Yeah. Like these mm-hmm. are brutal challenges. Um, but so funny when you have Bob Dog just dragging. <laughs> and I think it's, um, there's like a matchup that's very similar because the mats are very close together mm-hmm. where like the two guys are like fighting back and forth um, as well in one one of the scenes. So Shane's great too, right? Where he's like, "Harris, right, you bring me the bag. Bring mm-hmm. it yes. away. You brought me the bag." Mm-hmm. <laughs> so good. He's I really, you know what? Shane is great for morale if he's like mm-hmm. on your side. Like he's totally. a very go team kind of guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, especially when things are going well. Also, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> so okay, uh, now uh, Lamina is going to go to tribal, and ultimately, it's going to be uh, uh, Misty who is uh, not going to make it. So. Uh, Miss Misty, uh, what might have been? I'm telling you, she would have been great. I think she would have been fine. I, like, I think she's probably <laughs> like, like certainly like a replacement level, maybe better uh, survivor player. I feel like there's a moment in Tribal Council there where Jeff's like, "So, uh, what are you guys doing with your spear?" Like, just super casually, yeah. Guys bring it up and they're just like, "Oh, we haven't had much luck with it." Like, they just completely. I mean, ironically, and that's why Lamina is so boring. They won't even yeah. throw each other under the bus at Tribal. Like the one yeah. opportunity, just say it. You know, yeah. Misty. You know, seems like she might have had something here. But when we talk about like Sari, like back against the wall in a tribe before, is able to figure something out. Here's Misty in a tribe of what seven isn't he able to like outlast Sally here in this group. So she, she seems fine, but uh, I don't know if she was ready to light the world on fire. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if Sally just seemed better because they did seem like obsessed with being good at challenges. I wonder if Sally was yeah. just a better challenge competitor. Um, so that's why they kept her over yeah. Misty. And yeah, Lindsay, it's also, <laughs> it's, it's also wild that Misty went to uh, the Exile Island, you would think that there would be some thought that, oh, maybe we should put the votes on Sally because Misty might have the idol. Yeah, I don't yeah. know if either of you watched the uh, second look or whatever. The, like, no. Bonus oh, closer look? I did, actually. Yeah, so I've watched a moment it a in couple there. times through. But yeah, so they uh, explain that? Yeah, I mean, they not really. But so when she goes back and she's talking to her tribe, they're like, oh, I absolutely didn't believe her. She's ter- And she's like, oh, I'm terrible at lying. Like, I know nobody believes me. Yeah, so. Sally didn't believe her for a second when they yeah. were still on the women's tribe. Yeah, even like, Courtney didn't believe her. Yeah, even if, if Courtney is questioning you again. Yeah. <laughs> I do want to I do want to stop before we move on. Just the I know we touched on it before, but this is the Shane's thinking seat episode. And I just would like to get a <laughs> ruling from you, Rob. Like, do you think this is real? Because like he sounds so mad and this would be very upsetting to me to have someone screaming like this and they do like sort of intentionally go to people's faces where they're like what the hell is going on with this guy but like I feel like maybe it's a joke I think that he really wanted to have his seat Uh, like he might have been playing it up a little bit like uh, I I believe he earnestly wanted his seat to be his seat and then uh, not have anybody else sit in it so yeah. real is what we're saying. <laughs> real. I just yeah. want mine. This one. Yeah, I think I, I think it was a re- he genuinely wanted the seat and might have been playing it up a little bit more for uh, like uh, effect. Yeah, fair. Okay. All right. All right. I'll allow it. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> so, all right. After that, uh, in episode four, Dan is going to work on bringing Ruth Marie in, Jess. Uh, yes. who, ga- who gave Dan the power to bring <laughs> Ruth Marie into the final This five? is This is what's ridiculous, right? Like, Terry and Dan do talk about, oh, they feel so good about the Alliance of Five, making it to the merge, going all the way. And I feel like... Like, Dan should have run it up the flagpole to Terry. Like, is it okay if I bring Ruth Marie into this alliance? Um, Because later we find out that, like, uh, that Nick and Austin don't seem to want to involve Ruth Marie. They'd rather take Sally because she's stronger. Um, But I feel like, you know what, Dan? Good on you. You have agency. Make it an alliance. I don't know that Lindsay, if Dan was on the space (laughs) shuttle, is he allowed to just willy nilly add somebody to the flight crew? There's no I in space. (laughs) (laughs) 
for Ruth Marie. <laughs> there is an I. It's weird how Dan is like totally convinced that Sally is going to jump at the earliest opportunity. Like Sally ends up completely going down with the ship. She does not. Yes. <laughs> no. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Ruth, Ruth Marie. Do we really know anything about Ruth Marie, Jess? And she's on the show for a while. She wanted to be cuter. Uh, she wanted to be shown to be cuter on the show. That is that is what we know of Ruth Marie. No, she's mm-hmm. like, she's very boring. She's very, she seems very plain, like just like nothing really to say. My guess is the reason that Dan felt more comfortable with Ruth Marie is simply an age factor. I feel mm-hmm. like he would feel like she'd be more likely to stick with him and Terry than Sally, who maybe he feels like connects more with Austin and Nick. Yeah. But maybe I'm also like overcomplicating any of Dan's feelings and thoughts on this. Yeah. Let like, me... Go ahead. In our best case scenario, who is the Ruth Marie comp? Like, what did casting see in her? Like, who is Ruth Marie if she gets all the airtime? Okay. So, Ruth Marie, is she Tina? Maybe. True. Yeah. Okay. I'll take it. Mm-hmm. Probably She's a like property same. developer. Yeah. Let me tell you a couple things about Ruth Marie. Okay. Uh, she was crowned the 1978 South Carolina watermelon queen. And I'm sorry. A watermelon <laughs> queen. What is a watermelon yeah. queen? Like, watermelon like queen. Watermelon? Is... <laughs> yeah. Well, Do I don't know. That's seed spitting. Spitting. Snatch it? Is yeah. seed spitting? That's what it was. Yes. Uh, she also attended the Miss South Carolina pageant doesn't say uh, which year in which she was voted Miss Photogenic by the press. Oh. Yes. Ooh, and then highest honor. And then things take a wild turn where after graduating college, she was hired by Eastern Airlines as a flight attendant. And in 1981, she was appointed first female narcotics agent with the South oh. Carolina law enforcement agency. <laughs> Earth Marie, tough on crime. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's wild. Oh my Ruth god. Marie. What a total yeah. badass. Yeah. <laughs> I will say, like, if someone told me I was Miss Photogenic, it sounds a little bit like the opposite of photogenic. Like, ooh, you're a little Miss Photogenic. <laughs> <laughs> she does want to be cute. It's very important to yeah. her. She's been told that yeah. all her life. Yeah, maybe she's like the Heidi of uh Survivor Panama. <laughs> The older, cuter girls. Yes, the older, <laughs> cuter Heidi. <laughs> All right. So uh, that whatever she was doing, it worked on Dan. He brings her into the uh, the final five. So uh, we got that going on over at Lamina. Uh, we see a little bit of Suri working uh, from the bottom. And uh, what's great about Suri all through this season, uh, Jess, is that Sari loves the dysfunction. She revels in it. Like, I love her her confessional last episode where she's just like, these are the people you guys decided to align with, and now you hate each other. <laughs> she really enjoys it, and I think it's because if there's all this dysfunction going on, she's not a target. She's the calm in the storm. So she enjoys the pandemonium because eyes aren't on her for going home next. Mm-hmm. All right. And so uh, we're going to get to the point where we're going to have uh, some bad rainstorms uh, again coming through. Uh, And we're going to get to play for the uh, Casa de Charmin. (laughs) Lindsay, an iconic reward in the history of Survivor. Truly, truly iconic. I don't think anyone could have predicted the dividends this would pay. (laughs) Well, this is a bathroom now, but like this is Mm -hmm. going to be. It's going to be Bruce's temporary motel or something. I don't know. <laughs> yes, uh, it's going to be a uh, shelter. It's going to be uh, a, a, a facility. Room. Yes, fire. <laughs> yeah, it's going to host many logs. Yes. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> it's so funny like it is one of the more iconic rewards in my opinion like especially when you're talking about the um the sponsored ones casa de charmin who cares about a toilet like to be honest if i got this my first thought would also be let's use it for firewood let's use it for storage let's not the first thing bob dog wants to do is not that well (laughs) <laughs> so you got Procter and Gamble and they want to advertise their toilet paper on Survivor. So like I, I don't know necessarily like uh, really the truth is like people do not need uh like a like a, a a bathroom in the way that you would in real life on Survivor. 
but I think this is just a way to get more uh, Charmin into the show. Yeah. Yeah, and like at the Bob Dog thing where he like just waltzes in there and everyone is like horrified. I'm like, what is happening? <laughs> yeah. And then he, he comes out and he's like, ah, I feel 10 pounds Relief. lighter. Yes. <laughs> and, like, and then that same night, it's like, I think I'm going to go sleep in there. <laughs> like, there's nothing <laughs> weird about this or disgusting <laughs> happening in here. <laughs> Do you think that this helps move toilet paper? <laughs> the the Charmin sale. pretty happy afterward. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> it's true. I, I mean, does toilet paper really need help selling itself? <laughs> like it's Sells toilet itself. paper. Yeah. I don't know. I don't the think, last yeah. year, I think we've seen it's a hot commodity. It's mm -hmm. true. That's true. Although at yeah. that point, you are not. You don't care about the brand. You're just buying what you can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Charmin has wasted uh, millions and millions of dollars in advertising. <laughs> it just needed one <laughs> pandemic. Especially yeah. on Survivor. Yeah. Um, yes. All right. So uh, Terry is going to be sent to Exile Island. Uh, he is going to uh, go on a quest for the idol uh, we get some lamina without uh terry which is a uh, super snooze yeah they're i like, have we're one note go ahead, <laughs> it says lamina is hungry <laughs> that's mm. it that's all that it is lamina's yeah. hungry without and terry there's so much just of lamina that they but they need food uh that's like the only storyline at lamina Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they can't catch fish because Sally lost the Hawaiian sling. They don't, I don't really understand what the food rations are. Like, are they not given rice? I guess that we do see them eating it, but they seem to, there's that other reward where they get like beans and rice and fish. So I don't know. They're suffering out there though. They're, they're starving. I don't mm -hmm. remember seeing them with any food at the beginning. So I don't yeah, know that's what I was wondering about as well. Here. Yeah. Uh, Meanwhile, Lindsay, Terry on Exile Island is able to make short work of the quest to find the hidden immunity idol. Yeah, I was really laughing when I looked at like the list of clues that they give because like each subsequent one, they just add the previous ones or whatever. And it's like, why did you get left behind? And then the next one's like, it's above the tide line. <laughs> Enough of yeah. this. <laughs> yeah. There's also like a part of the map that's like shade. It is not in this not area. Do not yeah, someone took a here. colored pencil and like, yeah, colored it in with Stop red. looking like, over nope. there. <laughs> From like cryptic word puzzle to just like, don't look here. Stop You're wearing it. the camera people out. We don't want to walk all the way over there again. <laughs> Stop it. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Okay, so Terry has uh, his ace in the hole. He All has right. the hidden immunity idol. Yeah, neat. Fat neat. freaking city. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so happy. <laughs> He's like so like, uh, what is Schoolhouse Rock when he like, it's just like neat. Cool. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> okay. Um, we're going to then uh, see... After the, uh, uh, did they have another immunity challenge or they, or was it just uh, immunity and uh, reward? They did have, one? yeah. They also, it was the one where they, um, they like Danielle was sitting on a chair and they had to like race to get water, put it in a drum to like raise her up. And mm -hmm. Kasaya ends up winning. Yeah. Whatever. Uh, Ruth Marie <laughs> is going to go home, even though Dan <laughs> told her she was in the final five. Uh, you know, the thing about Lamina and I, this comes from Terry, like they're all like, so, honest with each other like even like uh like dan talking to ruth marie he says to her Lindsay, uh so how would you like to go to the final five like ooh, what a great <laughs> offer the final five really you go to uh, final five and you can be number five yes <laughs> how would you like to be number five in our five person alliance and did you know i've been to space <laughs> yeah oh God. like well, yeah, nobody yeah, it's, nobody it's, and Lamina can lie to each other. No, and it's Dan who made the pact with Ruth Marie, not anybody else. So, of course, now is the point where they have to cut Ruth Marie. And I love how it's Dan is in knows about it as well. It's like, oh, Dan, don't you worry. Like, you can vote somebody else if you want to, but we're all voting out Ruth Marie. Like, in another world, yeah. Dan isn't even informed and he votes incorrectly. But they're yeah. all so nice. And another world is where Dan would ultimately like to visit. <laughs> That's his end game <laughs> <laughs> to get to another world. <laughs> but oh, I love yeah, him. <laughs> yeah, for Dan, uh, that everybody takes a lot of comfort in the fact, like, well, we didn't tell Sally she's in the final five. Dan did, <laughs> so that we didn't break our word to Sally. Yeah, because that's the most important part of all of this. No one breaks their word. That's how you play Survivor, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, we have 
Great reward challenge uh, coming up in uh, one of the punniest <laughs> titles in Survivor history, uh, for God's sake here, <laughs> where a uh, bad rainstorm, we're throwing fish around, Lindsay, uh, have a fish toss, and then you have to chop the fish's head off, which uh, Bob Dog is able to, uh, is the master of uh, just like lopping fish heads off. Yeah, he is a champion at this. Like Bruce is trying to do it and he kind of sucks. And Terry is doing like a pretty good job. But then they switch out and put Bob Dog in. And he's just like, he was made for this. Like he just does it so fast. And he absolutely destroys Terry at this. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So interesting also, Jess, that the loser of this tribe also gets to get like rice or beans. Uh, yeah, they I've have to pick one before. or the other. Yeah, I feel like they really were just taking pity on them at this point. And they're like, they're starving. Let's give them something. They lost the Hawaiian swing <laughs> or sling. Let's give them at least anything. But the beans end up backfiring in a major way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they do. <laughs> <laughs> and poor Kasaya ends up with this great reward of like rice, beans, and wine, and all this fish. They get to keep all the fish, but it's raining so poor, like badly that they can't even make a fire to cook yeah. it. Yeah, they have so, that swamp that you were talking about, Jess. Right, yes. like, yes. Very, like, sw very swampy. Uh, so they have all this uh, raw fish that they got from the challenge, and then they decided they're just going to start eating it. They say it's uh, oh. sashimi. Uh, for our I don't know. Is that you... how it works? <laughs> yeah. Is any raw fish, sushi grade fish that you can just eat? Uh, I, I don't know this. I mean, so I feel like I eat lots of sushi. I think that's totally fine. But I yeah. also wouldn't just like go to the store, <laughs> buy a fish, and then just start eating it like an apple and be like, can this you is do the that? Same. Like, can like, you just like, like a bear pulling a around. salmon out of the river? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my I favorite like... is how they're using the comically large machete to like <laughs> cut it as well. It's this massive fish, a giant machete. And I love Sari being like, is this okay to eat? She just yeah. looks so I, concerned. I feel like sushi chef is like a legitimate profession where it's like not just any <laughs> idiot can just like do this and have it be sushi. Mm -hmm. oh, they did it. They, I guess they all turned out okay. Yeah, yeah. Better than Lamina. Yeah. <laughs> Courtney's like, you've never had sushi? And then Suri's like, no, sue me. Yeah. <laughs> like, give me a break. Yeah. So it's going to be a very bad night for for Kasaya and Lamina. And so uh, we see where uh, Bob Dog and Bruce end up bonding. And they head off into the shelter or into uh, the uh, Casa del Charmin to stay dry. And also open the tribe's uh, last bottle of wine. <laughs> Yeah, so Bob Dog opens it, passes it to Bruce, and he's like, here, take some of this. Now, Bob Dog insists that it's because there wasn't any room in the shelter for him. No one made any space for poor Bob Dog. What was he supposed to do besides go in the Casa del Charmin and drink all the wine? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is it enough? Yeah. yeah. And so the tribe does not appreciate it at all. Uh, and Courtney is really like uh, <laughs> laying into Bob Dog. And he tells her that he does feel bad about depriving the tribe of wine, but he does not feel bad about depriving Courtney of wine. Incredible, incredible one. <laughs> and honestly, like, so first of all, that was amazing. But also the visual of Suri when she goes and opens up the outhouse in the morning and just immediately cracks up because she sees Bruce like completely folded in half inside this outhouse. <laughs> He's clearly slept in and, and has been drinking copiously. And it's just like, mm -hmm. this is reasonable for me to be in here. Yeah, it's a funny visual of Bob Dog and Bruce also mm -hmm. uh, both in there as well because Bob Dog is such a big guy and Bruce is able to fit into <laughs> the Casa del Charmin and basically uh, be like uh, at a 90 degree angle in there. Yes. Yeah. And the best part, I think, is that like Sari, again, being amazing, she immediately like goes out and I think she's talking to like Courtney and Danielle and she's like, do you know what they did in there? Like she mm. stirs the pot in such a great way where like no one like said, oh Sari told me this it just all comes pouring out and there's a huge argument as a result and we just see Sari just behind the scenes just sitting there happy as a clam like all this dysfunction is happening mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, somehow in this uh, immunity challenge we get to a Lamina win 
Yeah, truly shocking given that Nick and Austin have literally been up all night just like dying and just like but <laughs> somehow strong enough to win this challenge. It's wild. Yeah, maybe it was a raw fish hangover for Kasaya. <laughs> and so uh, there's some talk about uh, who needs to go. And this is a wild uh, a turn of events where Shane says, Bobby needs to go. There's no discussion because there is uh, a bond between uh, the younger guys, apparently, Jess, and that that it, it needs to be Bobby. And ours to say, no, 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 not Bobby, Bruce. Bruce needs to go. Uh, and Shane is adamant that the four young guys are going to get back together after the merge. And so they are on board uh, with with Bobby. But then Shane uh, is talked out of it. Right. It's this whole mess. And I think it's it's basically like Bob swears on Shane's kid. He's not going to flop at the merge, which like I don't know why Shane believes this, because why do I care about swearing on somebody else's child? Like, but he does. He believes it. And then it, basically it's Danielle, Courtney and Sari who decide that they want to vote out Bob Dog because they don't want Aris to be the one who has the control. And it seems like, in my opinion, it's coming from Danielle because Danielle and Bruce seem to have some type of connection um, that isn't yeah. shown a ton, but we hear about it a decent amount. They love amount. each other. They do. She sees him as like a fatherly figure, I suppose. Mm -hmm. um, and now Shane is pissed because Shane made a deal with Bob Dog. And now he's going to have to go back on that because all the women decided that they want to vote out Bob instead of Bruce. Yeah. And it's so great, Lindsay, when they come back and tell Shane about actually the plan is going to be to vote out Bob Dog. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, oh, my God, why didn't you tell me this an hour ago, Courtney? And then she goes, don't yell at me. And he goes, I'm just yelling in general. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Even though he clearly I want to use that as an excuse next time I yell at any, like at, for any reason. I'm just yelling in general. I'm not yelling at you. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. And I think like they do make the right call here in that Bobby says, I'm going to flip at the merge. Whoever's left over there, I'm flipping. Yeah. I mean, when we get to the merge, which is only going to be after one more vote, I mean, mm -hmm. Nick is going to be there. Austin is going to be there. I think if uh, it's Bobby there instead of Bruce, uh, does he at least flip to get it to 5-5 five, five at the first vote? Do we think that that's uh, a likely scenario or does he stick with the Kasaya group that he's been with the whole time? Well, I feel like that's the moment for Terry to use the idol to swing them mm. over and say like, I have this, you need to switch over here. And yeah, but we saw him try that. Power. Like we but, saw Terry attempt to this and it wasn't very successful. I think mainly because he's not very good at being a salesman. No, no, <laughs> yeah. that's not his, <laughs> that's not his, his specialty. vocation. Uh, but I will say that I thought that Terry didn't, was not talking about that at the final 10 mm -hmm. that comes up later in the yeah. game. So I like, I, I don't know, like, is there enough there? Like, I don't know how close Bob Dog got with Nick and Austin in the first couple of days of the game. I can't imagine the scenario where Aris is also going to flip and go with the mm -hmm. younger guys at the merge. So it just comes down to how tight did Bob Dog get with Nick and Austin pre swap? And then is he like locked in enough to potentially go to rocks uh, yeah. with those guys and to think... get, uh, stick it to Kasaya? It's tough, right? Because first of all, we don't really see a ton of Bob Dog, like in general. We don't really understand who he has relationships with on Kasaya. Um, we know he doesn't get along with Courtney very well. We see him have like a moment with Bruce. Yeah. I mean, my guess is, I don't know. I get the feeling that if Bob had stuck around and Bruce leaves, I feel like Sari is able to rein in Bob Dog a little bit. Like you have to give Sari some credit in that she's also holding the Kasaya glue together. She's not going to let Bobby just flip over there willy nilly. She's going to mm -hmm. have some type of control over him. Yeah. I don't know what their relationship was like, um, but I imagine that she would have at least attempted to keep him on board and she'd be aware if he was about to flip. Yeah, I think Aris looks at Bob as somebody who is like he has a relationship with. He's a, somebody who could potentially be like a pawn for him down the road. But I don't see any scenario where Aris and Bob Dog are flipping away from Kasaya to go vote with Nick and Austin. 
Yeah, I feel like that's probably true. I wonder if Terry's sales pitch is more compelling when you have someone who's actually motivated to flip where he's having to like find some sort of way in with these people that he doesn't successfully flip and he's not good at that. But if someone comes to him and is like, I'm open to it, let's have a conversation. Like maybe that's maybe he's better at that. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, it's, it's I mean, possible. It's possible like a move more just to hurt Aris more than it was an yeah. anti Bob dog move. And I say I maybe it was the wrong decision because I feel like that Bruce comes like, I feel pretty close yeah. to flipping. And if anybody is like, uh, you know, vulnerable to sort of like the flattery that might be able to get them to flip. I think it's probably <laughs> Bruce before it's Bob dog. Yeah, that's fair. And then Bruce also ultimately gets taken out um, by a medevac as well. So mm -hmm. it's an interesting, uh, you know, you know, fictional world we're living in alternate universe where Bob dog is there instead of Bruce, who knows what happens. Um, mm -hmm. I wish we had gotten more of Bob dog to be honest on screen. I just feel like we didn't really get to know him as a character and yeah, Kasaya is wild enough, but I feel like he, I mean, in the first scene, he's talking about, we got the golden girls over here. We got the spice girls. I feel like he was like really yeah. good and confessional. So he's I'm a funny guy. Yeah, yeah. Why do we not get more of him? You know, it's disappointing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So uh, after Bob Doug goes home, uh, one more vote, uh, before we get to the merge. Okay. So, um, we are seeing uh there's a lot of stakes it's a uh, immunity and reward all in uh one challenge here today and this time the winners of the challenge are going to send someone to exile and give them immunity uh this is where ultimately uh sally is going to go to the immunity uh or to exile island here in this episode, which uh, Sally was talking about, Lindsay, that she was going to be the next person out. Uh, and she ultimately gets saved here by the twist. Yeah, it's interesting. I wonder if they just saw a pattern, if Kasaya saw the pattern that they were voting out all of the women over on Lamina and just knew that this was a good bet or if they saw something out. I'm not really sure how they necessarily knew that they should send Sally, but this totally throws a wrench in the plans for these guys because they were planning to be the final four. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, yeah, Misty went out and then Ruth Marie, so I think yeah, it was they, kind of... Uh, see the pattern what, there. Yeah, they could see <laughs> yeah. what's, what, what's going on uh, with uh, with that group. Doesn't um, take but, a missile engineer. To see what's yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, Jess, I thought that this was so fun, the reward challenge they go to because they really spend a lot of time here on uh, the reward in uh, the Panamanian village and of course Kasai has uh, so many colorful characters uh, it was very interesting to uh, watch them go enjoy this reward yeah, everybody's having fun. We see Shane smoking a cigarette. He basically offered like all of his clothes and more if the guy was going to give him a cigarette. Um, and then we see almost and it, and it brings everybody back together, which Zari absolutely hates because earlier that day, or I should say the night before, there was a major blow up because Shane is pissed about voting out Bob. Dog. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's he's mad at Danielle. Everybody is trying to sleep in the shelter. Danielle and Aris and I believe Courtney are like cuddled up. And then Bruce is on the opposite end and Shane is kind of by himself. Bruce is just berating Danielle. You know, this was a terrible decision. We should have voted out Bruce. He's falling apart. Bruce can absolutely yeah. hear him. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, I think it's Danielle that's like, uh, Bruce is right there. And Shane's like, yeah, I know he's right there, but I need to just say, yeah, I think it was a mistake not to vote out Bruce. <laughs> yeah. And Danielle's just like, can we argue about this tomorrow? And Shane basically is like, I want out of the Alliance, but I can't unless you say I can, because I promised on my son's name. So he basically wants permission to be out of the Alliance. Yeah. There's also a great moment where in the morning that Courtney was sleeping on the beach and Suri is yes. like giving the recap of all of that to Courtney the next morning. Yeah, I Courtney's love the line. <laughs> yes, Courtney has the line of chop his head guillotine style. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I yeah. think Danielle is like, vote him out. Like everybody is all on board with Shane being out of the alliance and Shane being the next to go, which Suri just loves. She is all about this. She knows she's not going to be next. Um, but then, of course, we have the reward. Shane apologizes to Danielle. It's all kumbaya again. And Sri's like, no, no, like, 
be mean to each other again. Yeah. And I think that Suri is able to clock that, you know, Shane is uh, not somebody who is impressionable. Like she could put like a little bit of poison in this person's ear and sort of like get Danielle worked up about something, get Courtney worked up about something and basically, you know, get Aris feeling uh, some type of way about people. But Shane is not going to be super impressionable. Uh, it's, you know, Shane is like very much like set in his ways and opinions. And there's not a lot that she can ever do to sort of sway how he might be feeling about anything or how he might change his opinion uh, in some sort of like a haphazard way. Yeah, like, so Shane says to Daniel, like, oh, when we leave here and my life is normal, I don't know anybody, anything except for you. And Daniel is like, actually pretty gracious in accepting this. And one of the things that I noted in this episode is that, like, I think it's very wise of Daniel to say to Shane, let's not do this right now. Let's do it in the morning because Shane's moods go up and down so fast that it's like, let's just not do anything rash. Let's just think about this a little bit. And I think she's, yeah, she comes across as like fairly gracious and mature, I think, in yeah. dealing with Shane here. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, meanwhile, back at Lamina. So it was Dan and <laughs> Sally who needed to do the puzzle. How the hell did we not get the puzzle done with a NASA engineer of all people, Jess? <laughs> And this is the the like the worst part is that Dan's like I take full responsibility. Yes. Sally's not here. It was my fault. I should have been able to do it. This wouldn't have happened at NASA if someone failed at NASA. That was it. They're done. So, but I love the the Dan thinks it's going to be a two v two. He'd love for it to be a two v two with him and Terry and Austin and Nick. He all he's all about the two v two. <laughs> yeah, uh, he, he's really ready to fall on his sword uh, about the whole thing. Uh, Lindsay, he talks about how, like, uh, no, if this happened in space, we'd be dead. <laughs> you would die. <laughs> yeah. Like, and there's incredibly heroic music over this. Well, he's like, I, if I did this in space, I would be dead. I cannot tell you how serious this is. <laughs> and they're just playing incredible music of, like, Dan, so brave. So I love him. Brave. How do you not love Dan Fuego? <laughs> <laughs> and this is also the episode where he tells uh, Nick and Austin that he is uh, an astronaut. Yeah. <laughs> they oh love it oh so my. much. Yeah. Wow. Dan Fuego's a stud. He's Dan a Fuego's pimp. such a stud. <laughs> such a pimp. I, I wonder if I ever play Survivor again, I'm going to go back and then reveal to people that I'm a podcaster and talk about how, like, uh, if I fail in a challenge, like, no, if this happened on a podcast, do you know how many people would unsubscribe? <laughs> I did a little Without more than get work a on podcast. Star review, Jeff. <laughs> I, I run a podcast. <laughs> yeah, I told you I was on podcasts. <laughs> do you know how much editing we'd have to do on the back end? <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, fix it in post <laughs> yeah all right uh yep yeah, 2v2 not so much uh because terry feels like well uh, you know uh gotta go with uh nick and austin gotta make a managerial decision here yeah you blew it dan yeah poor dan, poor dan fuego terry mm -hmm. makes a lot of baseball references yeah, it's always the uh, game seven. Always game seven. He's the manager. Yeah, let's talking a, a lot, a lot of baseball. Um, so um, Jeff, I think, uh, like touches a nerve for Dan uh, at tribal councils. Uh, sort of implies that, oh, Dan, so you're quitting? He's like, no, no, no. How dare you? Not, not yeah. the case. I am an American here. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, Jeff. Did you know that I was an astronaut? <laughs> I think it really speaks to how boring Lamina is that like when they're leading into this episode, they're like, and a tribal council like no other. And really, it's just that they stand up and applaud for Dan when he gets stand voted out. Like nothing stand really happens. And applaud for, for Dan Fuego. Show uh, some goddamn respect for <laughs> Dan Fuego. <laughs> yes, we salute you. <laughs> Dan Fuego. Dan Barry. There he is. So uh, th thank you. Uh, thank you, Dan, for being a big part of Survivor Panama. All right. That's the pre-merge of our season. So uh, we still have a lot to go and a lot more fun to talk about here on our Survivor Panama recap of the 15th best season of all time. We are going to uh, take a quick break. And uh, in about three minutes, we're going to come back and talk about everything that happened in the post-merge 
of the game. So stick around because we will be right back. All right. And we're back to talk more about the post merge of Survivor Panama here, talking about the 15th best season of Survivor. All right. So we're ready to talk about the merge. And so we're going to uh, see uh, any thoughts on Bruce's rock garden? <laughs> so many thoughts. This is truly incredible that Bruce loves this garden so much. And the bane of his existence is Courtney messing around in the garden. Says her doing yoga in there is disgusting. Like he takes it very seriously. Yeah, I love Bruce's rock garden. I also love the subtle shade um, that he throws at Kasaya when he's making it because I'm fairly certain that he says something to the degree of uh, beauty is lacking inside the campground and people's <laughs> souls. So that is why he makes the said garden to begin with. Yeah, that's a little rough. A little mm -hmm. rough. Some beautiful <laughs> souls over on uh, Kasaya. And so... We're going to see uh, Lamina. They're going to uh, head on over. Austin says, uh, let, let's get it on. And it's so funny, Lindsay, because uh, we're going to see Kasaya is like eating like a bounty of rice. And it's like, oh, they're coming. Quick, everybody, eat your rice. <laughs> Don't give them any. Yeah, they just inhale it. And even Aris is like, oh, that was probably like not a very kind thing to do, but they don't want to share. And then Lamina shows up and they've got like an entire merge feast with them. And they're like, ah, oh, crap, why'd we fill up on this stupid rice? Yeah, I'm sure they all continued and ate like a huge portion at the merge feast. Oh, yeah. I'm, sure, I'm sure it was fine. No doubt. Yeah. If anything, it probably like was <laughs> something that you should do before you go on a merge fee or like a feast on survivors, like fill up on rice so you don't uh, have the West Nail taco overload happen. <laughs> <laughs> you know, nobody's nobody's ever on Survivor, maybe uh, other than Bruce. So uh, like, oh, my God, I ate too much rice. Yeah. Nick and Austin <laughs> ate too many beans just a few episodes ago. But. Yeah. So somehow we're only at six four in terms of the numbers uh just does this make any sense uh like how kasaya doesn't have a, a larger like kasaya wins so much that i feel like they should be going into the merge like uh i don't know like seven to two <laughs> uh, or seven to three even yeah i suppose i think also like it's going they got and they got Bruce. And they got Bruce, too. Yeah. I guess you'd think there'd be a bigger upset. But Terry says he just needs two people. That's all it's going to take. He needs to swing two people. Um, and, of course, I feel like rightfully a little bit of credit to Terry here with his strategy. He tries to go to Bruce first to pull him in. Makes the most sense. Bruce was on the older man tribe with Terry. Uh, it does make sense to, to go to him first. And he is the most likely to, to flip here. Yeah. And again, we talked about the great job that Shane and Aris do with keeping uh, Bruce on board. But, Lindsay, you know, I feel like that Terry with his sales pitch to Bruce about how, hey, you could be in the final five. Think about it. Final five, Bruce. <laughs> you should clearly jump over. <laughs> like, you're only going to go to final six with these guys. I will give you one spot better. Like, well, I don't even think so that Bruce bad. thinks he's sixth in yeah, Kasaya. Like, I true. think he thinks that he's probably, like, in the top three on Kasaya. Yeah, like, I don't get why he thinks, like, again, same as with Ruth Marie. Like, you can be fifth in our group of five. Like, what are you doing? Tell him you'll take him to the end. Mm hmm. Yeah. So uh, I just think that Bruce does not have like a clear read of where he is. Like he is snowed enough on Kasaya that this is uh, not going to work. But probably the worst part of this is uh, Terry's play to Sari. Uh, just Terry does not do a, a great sales pitch to Sari, who she says that um, he uh, Terry is like a dictionary salesman when she already has an encyclopedia. I don't know that this is a very apt metaphor. I no. mean, if you don't have a, if you have a dictionary, well, an encyclopedia is a completely different thing. So I can see why <laughs> you would need one. Um, but yeah, Terry says, let me take the burden of tribal council off your shoulders for two weeks. What kind of pitch is this? Like, this is horrible. You don't have to this think is, about anything. You don't have to think about the game, Siri. I mean, but what else is there to think about, Terry? Like they have nothing going on. They might as well think about the game. Like it's it's a horrible pitch. I could see why he thinks Sari would be like on the outs of that tribe. She's the you know the older woman. She's the last older woman standing. I I could see why he would target her. 
but the pitch itself is atrocious. It's not good. Yeah, Lindsay, uh, have we had a more dated reference on Survivor than uh, that Terry is like a dictionary salesman and <laughs> I have a set of encyclopedias? Yeah, I have a phone. I can just look up all these things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a great point. Uh, you don't need either of these things anymore. Yeah, probably not. Um, door -door dictionary salesman. <laughs> yeah. And while Suri is reading Terry more in her confessional, um, Shane just flat out like, tells him no. Yeah, yeah, Shane's really good where he's just like, it's not going to be me. It's not going to be her. Just stop. Like, this is not no. going to work for you. Please, please. Yeah. No, I'm not I in. Think, no. I think the better move was Nick and Austin trying to pull Aris. Like, that seems like it might make sense to try to do. Um, I mean, it does seem like eventually they end up targeting almost everybody. Nobody seems to care about Courtney, at least at this moment. Um, they, they mostly are targeting the outliers, which, again, you'd think would be the best strategy, but... These guys are locked tight. They are not moving. Yeah. For for people who don't get along very well, they're very rock solid as an alliance. Yeah, yes, rock hard and solid. Yeah. <laughs> Jess, I thought you were going to say the best move is when Nick tries to get Bruce out of the game by stabbing him in the face. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I, I, did that happen in this episode or the next yes. one? Yes. Yeah. One. Gets him in the it's face with a machete. Like the worst, mm. did no one teach these people, Rob? I know you mentioned that they like, didn't they teach you how to use machetes when you went to the Amazon? Like you each had your own. Yeah, we each had our own in the Amazon. And I wouldn't say they necessarily like, taught us how to use the machete, but they taught us like some wilderness in the sky. But ideally you're not like swinging away from like a machete no. like within. <laughs> you're not like, my dad always used to, so we went camping a lot as a, when I was a kid. And uh, I would like to like, I took like pocket knives and I was just like, I don't know, whittle pieces of wood into smaller pieces of wood. I don't know. Wow. And <laughs> That's so crafty, Jess. <laughs> and, Neat. and he was like, always Neat. told me, Bad you, face, city. <laughs> you face, face the knife away from you when you're cutting. Yeah. Which I suppose Nick was doing. Yeah, yeah no, pro no problem there. <laughs> Aimed it at Bruce's face. Yeah. Um, Alex in my season uh, hit himself in the face oh, with a yeah. machete. So, mm -hmm. but yeah. the fact that he broke Bruce's tooth, uh, uh, and, and, and at the time Bruce is talking about like, oh, I'm not gonna leave the game. I, I get all these crazy injuries. I'm not gonna leave. <laughs> yeah, like, don't tempt yeah. fate here, Bruce. Yeah, Poor Bruce, chipped tooth, cut lip, messed up bowels. He can't catch a break. There was an incredible moment that I remember, Rob, from TEOS where you said it's like Final Destination where Bruce mm. didn't get wanded out of here, so the game is trying to get him out. <laughs> yes, that's again. funny. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, we go to our immunity challenge, hang upside down on the spit. Uh, nothing that's super interesting here other than uh, Austin thought that he was going to be the person voted out. Uh, he tried to make himself look weak. And then <laughs> when they go to tribal council, then he has to like reveal his uh, master plan. He's a monologuing. Uh, Jess, and then ultimately they vote out Nick. He's like, "Oh, I guess I shouldn't have told everybody my plan." Why is he so stupid? Like, why? <laughs> like again, this is what kills me about Lumina. Is like, not only are they boring, but they're way too honest when they don't have to be. Like, it doesn't make any sense here for Austin to be like, "Oh yeah, I was acting like I couldn't do well." It, it again, and then of course we're gonna see next episode. Everyone is like, "Oh, that Austin, he is such a slime ball. I can't believe he do." something yes. like that yeah yes. this to me is that thing where it's like i simply can't have anyone think that i'm bad at challenges like i must reveal it before i go like i cannot stand to have them think that i wasn't good at hanging on a spit right like, doesn't want to go off the show and not yeah. let people know how like uh what a what a operator yeah. austin was <laughs> I was just the john genius. grisham of survivor <laughs> yes uh so ultimately uh nick is gonna get voted out i mean do we is there any takeaways on nick no oh. Yeah, he's I mean, forgettable. yeah, he's got those final words that people seem to enjoy. I think they are not so exciting. <laughs> what, very, what were the like, final words? He's got that whole thing about like any young people, like follow your dreams and oh, go. Oh, come and on, stop. Don't, you know, that's the very last thing I want to hear in, in final <laughs> from, yeah, words from Nick Stanberry. <laughs> yeah, get out of here. Yeah, no one's standing him. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> He was in uh, financial sales, Nick Sandberg. Oh, that tracks. Yeah, yeah, I think these final words, I think Mike was fond of them in uh, when you did it on Outlist. His final mm -hmm. words appeared on there somewhere. <laughs> really? Yeah. They yeah. inspired a young Mike Bloom to uh, <laughs> chase his dreams. <laughs> what? Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, okay. Good. 
All right. Uh, so <laughs> in this episode, it does feel like uh, the numbers here are, you know, uh, are odd. So it feels like that there is like more of a chance that this plan uh, might work, which I feel like is weird that it seems like at 10, it seems more unlikely. But somehow, like uh, after Nick gets voted out, I feel like that there's more of a shot that they are able to pull over uh, to people and get the advantage. So. Uh, in, in this episode, uh, we're seeing a interesting reward challenge. Everybody's going to be in uh, three teams of three. And Lindsay, Jeff calls this a political challenge, where basically you're going to like uh, s- load up somebody's boat with uh, coconuts to slow them down. And there's a team of Austin, Terry, and Shane. And Aris uh, convinces uh, the team of Danielle, Courtney, and Suri to load up Austin, Terry, and Shane. And I feel like that this is really the beginning of uh, the Aris versus Terry rivalry. Yeah, for sure. And Aris is going to say after this that he feels like maybe he showed a little bit of his hand there where he's like super athletic, but also this was clever because it's like you managed to convince the Suri, Courtney, and Daniel team to basically help you win. And they just like in the heat of the moment didn't think about it. And so this, I think, shows a little bit of what Aris is capable of, but then and like it, you know, yeah, it's the beginning of that rivalry where he just wants to be Terry. <laughs> yeah. And so the reward is going to be a uh, breakfast in bed. <laughs> and just I feel like this is the worst reward <laughs> it that is, anybody gets in the history of the show. It is like well one of the absolute worst. Like, I mean, they're not sharing like a single Dorito or a single Snickers yeah. or anything. But yeah, they basically the bed is completely soaked because it's been raining. They get pastries and like kind of like a breakfast, but I wouldn't want to be um, Sally saddled between Bruce and Aris in this like nasty wet wet bed. bed. <laughs> right, it's so disgusting. <laughs> like it looks awful. It's just like on a beach too, like a bed uh, in the middle of the wilderness. Yeah, why couldn't they have done better here? Like it seems <laughs> like uh, it blows my mind uh, that the Survivor production is like, okay, all right, it's gonna rain. Should we put some sort of a canopy over this? Should we put no. a tent over it? Should we move the breakfast in bed to like a uh, Ponderosa? Uh, like, no, we gave, we promised breakfast in bed. The bed is on the beach. <laughs> Give them breakfast in bed. Put them on the unprotected sandbar and let them die. You asked for breakfast in bed. Did you not? <laughs> it comes with a terrible curse. The bed is very wet. <laughs> it's a wet bed. <laughs> It looked awful. And I love oh, how yeah. Bruce is like, this is the best breakfast I've ever had. It's so bad. Oh my god! Yeah, he's like, it was a meal fit for a king, and you're like, what? Mm-hmm. <laughs> a king sitting in the rain eating yeah. his pastry. Well, they were even complaining bed. about it. About like, uh, this is this stinks. Like it's wet. It's miserable. Uh, yeah, but, but then, then they, they raised about the food, the camp, and then they brag about it. Yeah, Sally was trying to get people. I've never seen in any of the other 39 seasons of the show, Lindsay, where she was trying to get people to. Uh, uh, feel her food baby. Yeah, it was very bizarre. Where she keeps like pulling up her shirt, being like, touch it, <laughs> touch this weird swollen stomach. And everyone's like, no, I'm okay. Thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed your wet bed reward. <laughs> Do you want to see my bump? Yeah. Um, they, they, Sari was like, read the room. We yeah, don't want to hear about this. so pissed about it, which I, I loved. I love when Sari honestly says anything in a confessional, um, but her getting annoyed about it just cracked me up. Uh, and then like Danielle and Austin are like having a way worse time than the bed people because they're just sitting in the rain, absolutely miserable on Exile Island. Mm-hmm. Um, meanwhile, Danielle and Austin are going to a uh, bond on Exile Island together. Uh, Lindsay, could this have been a, a showman's had the, uh, Austin stayed in the game for a little while longer? Yeah, I don't know. I feel like there's a little bit of like, they are super bonded now. You're never going to forget this experience. I wonder if like, had the weather been less terrible, maybe? I don't know, because I feel like they're just trying to stay alive. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah, like nothing really comes of that. They're like, we're bonded for life. This is going to be great. And then like, you never really see them together again. Well, they do start a conversation, which ultimately then says, okay, well, Danielle, how about, you know, you come talk to Terry. And so uh terry is uh you know trying to recruit her and is this does uh terry show her the uh, hidden immunity idol here at this point 
I think this is he tells her about it. He doesn't okay. actually show it to her yet. But yeah, because they're so bonded, um, he Terry tells Austin he has the idol first. And then he wants to bring over Danielle and Bruce. Um, yeah. And so they basically like double team Bruce. Um, and he tells Bruce about his conversation with Shane because I guess like Shane had said something to the degree of, oh, I bet the final four is going to be me, Aris, um, Sari and Courtney, which leaves yeah. Danielle and Bruce on the outs. Yeah, yes. I think this is when he shows it to her because later Danielle is going to be like, I don't know, you showed me something fluffy. <laughs> like, I don't know what it was. <laughs> yeah, like a coconut. <laughs> yeah, it's very weird. So, like, yeah. He clearly just like shows it and then like puts it in his bag. But yeah, but, mass but again, you know, there there's that voting block again of Danielle and Bruce. I mean, and Danielle's going to get to the final two and Bruce is going to get uh, medevaced out of the game. So I, I think for Danielle, uh, she makes the right move to to not go along with the Austin, Terry, Sally uh, group of three. Uh -huh. Yeah, ultimately yeah. this plays very well for Danielle. <laughs> it works better for her <laughs> yeah. to, to not do it. Uh, Terry is going to win his second immunity of the season. So uh, congratulations to Terry. Um, Danielle is also given the same opportunity to take 10 days off, Jess. <laughs> What paid so time ridiculous. Off Terry. Yeah. And Aris at this point assumes Terry has the idol and he's afraid he's going to use it on Austin because he has immunity. So he might as well, you know, use the idol on somebody else. Um, so Aris tells Courtney that the plan is to vote out Sally instead of Austin. And now mm -hmm. a massive fight ensues mm -hmm. <laughs> over who to vote out, Austin or Sally. Mm -hmm. Um and Sari is the one who, I mean, again, I don't think anybody's surprised here that Sari is the one that comes in and diffuses the situation a little bit. Now is the time where she doesn't care. She doesn't want them fighting because they need to stick together. She only wants them fighting when her head is on the chopping block. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, ultimately, we're going to see Austin go out here. Lindsay, any other thoughts on Austin? Um, I mean, not on Austin. I mean, who cares about Austin? But I do want to note that like Courtney has a little bit of a thing that I find super annoying where she gets into fights all the time. And like, clearly there's like, she never has any self-awareness to think maybe it's something she's doing to upset people. She has this thing where she's always just like, Aris just completely flipped out at me. And like, I just don't understand. And she has this thing where she just like, can't like why is this person being so unreasonable and like i just find that so annoying or she just completely puts it on the other person and she definitely does it here where she's like iris just came unglued for the first time ever and like he's not so great after all mm -hmm. yeah that aris and courtney do have sort of like the venn diagram that overlaps the two of them is they do <laughs> have sort of like they're sort of like uh very you know uh chill yoga <laughs> sort of like uh spirituality uh, so they have that, but then there's also a lot of things that they don't have in common. Courtney, you should <laughs> totally come to yoga. <laughs> totally come to yoga. Okay. Um, in, uh, episode 10, uh, we're down to, uh, the final eight now at this point. Um, you know, Terry's telling some of his, uh, war stories and, uh, just they are not wearing too great with, uh, some of the members of, uh, the, what what is the name of the merch tribe? Uh, Gitanos. Gitanos. I think yeah. this is a good one. Yeah, and the flag is dope. Like if Bruce does Bruce. it, and it's really awesome. And I think yeah. like G Gitanos is like Spanish for gypsy. That's got Courtney written all over it. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm pretty sure she was the one who came up with that, which doesn't mm -hmm. age as well, but the flag is very cool. Bruce mm -hmm. does a great job on the flag. Another skull. Um, Yes, but but Courtney, Danielle, and uh, Sari are talking about how like it's impossible to beat a Navy pilot, and they definitely it, it feels like these are stories they've heard before. Like I just feel like Terry probably tells a lot of Navy stories, and mm -hmm. I mean I wouldn't care about Navy stories either. They're neat, <laughs> awesome, <laughs> neat, cool. That freaking mm -hmm. city. I think so this is another time where Terry is not very good, though, where he goes like tells his stories, and then he goes like, "No, guys." Where do I fit in in the final six? And they're like, "What? Yeah. No, no, stop!" Yeah, Shane's like, "Uh, yeah, yeah, you don't. Uh, ours too. Like, yeah, uh, he's not all right, subtle well, at all. Got to beat you all the time. Like, yeah. right, if you do, then you know, great, great on you. Good job. Yeah, yeah. We go yeah. to the challenge here. Um, and so the reward is going to be for uh to get people to get videos from home mm -hmm. and. Look, this is something that as somebody who has uh, watched, you know, uh, 25 odd seasons of Survivor, something that uh, like uh, Jeff always refers to P 
peanut butter and jelly sandwiches as being something that is going to remind you of home. Uh, I don't know if I have that same association of uh, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches remind me so much of being home. Something that will remind you of elementary school. <laughs> mm -hmm. I guess so, if you say so. Don't forget about the ice cold milk, which yes, everybody uh, on an island craves. Ice mm -hmm. cold milk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Disgusting. Yes, better than hot milk. Yeah. I suppose, but when you're right, you're right. <laughs> here's the thing. They're on an island. It's very hot. How quickly do you think that ice is going to melt into that milk? And then you have water yeah. milk. Uh, oh, God. <laughs> You're so, welcome. <laughs> this is pretty wild. We have this challenge. And the way that the tribes are divided is that it's uh, basically like our A team and B team of like uh, <laughs> we have we have uh, like the main characters of the season of it's like it's Aris, Sari, uh, Shane and uh, Danielle. Danielle on one team. Mm -hmm. And then the other the other team is going to be. Terry, Sally, Bruce, and Courtney, they're going to narrowly win. They get, win the reward of videos from, and we don't even watch them. We don't we go back. We go back to camp with the four people who lost the challenge. I'm sorry. You didn't want to see Courtney's family's signs with each signs. other. The little bunny signs, the love signs. Yeah. She's <laughs> doing <laughs> like that sign with her mom. And she's like, yeah, that's what we do. That's my family. That's we all have a sign. And Jeff is like, okay, moving on. <laughs> I, we will not pursue this. Yeah. This absolutely, no absolutely killed me because it was like, these are the four people whose videos you would never want to see. And no. it's just like, you know what? Let's just skip it. Let's just. And not. here's the thing when the option, is boring family videos or Shane has a medical emergency with his <laughs> testicles like come on people we want to see the Shane testicle story <laughs> yeah um, also I, I feel like that there is like a, a little bit of a cross up here because uh, Shane clearly says that he is having a problem with one part of his anatomy and then <laughs> Sari <laughs> describes a different part of his anatomy. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> is she I love how Sari can't even keep a straight face when she has Don't to laugh. laugh. <laughs> Don't laugh. Don't laugh. <laughs> And she, and she asks him, uh, could you could you just tell me about the issue? <laughs> I have to look at it. I have to look at it. Yes. <laughs> you have to look at it. Dying. You're a nurse. You have to. <laughs> and she says she describes it as diaper rash on a baby. It's mm -hmm. because that area is moist and he keeps putting his shorts back on and they're moist. <laughs> she goes, Shane's like a cartoon character and now he's like a nude cartoon character. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he wears his shirt as a skirt my chafing skirt <laughs> yeah i feel like that shane should be able to figure out what's happening here on his own i mean yeah. i'm not i don't have those parts like, but i but assume I'd, I'd be able to figure it out like but if you had any part of your body that was like red and like because it was like constantly like a raw from rubbing against yeah. uh some material yeah it's very obvious that he doesn't have thick thighs and get <laughs> what we like to call the chub rub because mm -hmm. he would know he would know all about that, but he he doesn't have the thick thighs, so he doesn't know what is going yeah. on in his that region. Rupert seemed to know instantly what the issue was uh, and how to get out of the situation in the same part of the world uh, some years ago. <laughs> yeah, he's, he had the skirt before it was cool. Jay yeah, the skirt was created by Rupert Bonham. <laughs> you know, yeah, Sh Shane needed the medical attention. Yeah. Um, the uh, reward winners come back with also luxury items. I don't really understand. Uh, I thought they were just getting videos. I didn't know that was part of it. Yeah, yeah. Shane's like, "Do we get ours?" She's like, "No, sorry." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. So Courtney has her fire sticks. Uh. We have our immunity challenge. Uh, it's going to be the eat or compete. Lindsay, is this the first time we get eat or compete? I can't think of any time before this. Nothing comes to mind. I feel like someone's going to yell at us. Did they get it in us. Palau? I don't think it happens in Palau. Uh -huh. And I don't recall it in Guatemala or Actually, Vanuatu. Does, does, no, Stephanie jumps off for food, I guess. I was thinking she jumps she... off for food. So yeah. I think that this is the first because I that the way that Jeff is explaining it like it's never happened on the show before, where uh mm -hmm. he's like getting like, all right, I'm gonna hand you a a 
Um, a nut and a shell. A nut and a shell. Yeah. I'll explain they, how this is going to work. different enough? Like, yeah, I feel fine. like you could have chosen, like, two very different looking things besides a nut and a shell. Yeah. Do you think that this was introduced to uh, help Terry's odds, Lindsay? Um, maybe, I guess. I don't think they ever could have predicted that literally everyone from Kasaya except RS would choose to eat. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, maybe. I think, like, there was no way Terry was going to eat. So maybe this is to give him a little bit of a buy, this one. Yeah. So it's Aris, it's Sally, and it's Terry. Um, it is wild to see Kasaya eating the hamburgers. <laughs> I uh, love it. Shane is uh, really in rare form, Jess. Uh, He's just, inhaling uh, them. And I love when Jeff is like, all right, that's it. Don't do anything else. And Shane takes the biggest bite ever. And food is just falling out of his mouth. Like all these fries sticking out of yeah. his mouth. And like, even uh, Jeff is laughing because it's absolutely a sight to see. It's so funny. Uh -huh. I, like Courtney is so brutal here. We're like, if I were Aris, I would be so pissed because he's like the only one in there. And Courtney's like, you got this, Aris. It's all you. Like, Get out of here. Like, just, <laughs> I will eat your food and leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, once again, uh, Terry is immune and, uh, you know, they're trying to push the Aris stuff. Yeah. Sally is going to talk to the women, try to get them on board. She says, why don't you want to make it top four with us? Um, we're going to play the other again, top four, top four sounds great. Um, we're going to play the idol. Uh, and Courtney apparently wants to align with Terry. She wants to go up against him in the final two. Yeah. So she seems disillusioned. Uh, I feel like that there is, is a lot of like anti Lamina talk happening at Kasaya. And I think that maybe that's sort of like brainwashing some people of like, oh, there, there's no way anybody from Lamina can win. Did they even do anything? Are they even part of Kasaya? <laughs> like that Terry would be so easy to beat. He's not even part of our group. It's wild. Like, I don't understand how any of them could feel this way. Like, even at the end, we're going to see Danielle being like, perhaps I could beat Terry. Like, no one is going to vote for Terry in that situation. Mm -hmm. Like, he's going to have won every challenge he overcame, insurmountable odds. And you yourself said, like, he's a Navy pilot. Like, come on. Yeah. yeah. I don't understand why she thinks that it's harder to beat Aris in the final two than Terry. Yeah. Like, I don't know what we're not seeing or if this is completely just Courtney's line of thinking. Well, uh, I, I do think we got a little glimpse into where Terry's telling his stories. And, and you know, we see this a lot on Big Brother in terms of like on the live feeds. It's like the person that they want to get out. It's like everything they do is annoying. And yeah. so I think that there's sort of like a perception like Terry's a bad guy. He's cocky. He's arrogant. His stories suck. He's mean. Uh, mm -hmm. He's not letting uh, he's not just going away. He's always trying to ruin our plans. So I think there's probably a lot of like negative Terry talk that might be like uh, convincing some of these people that, uh, oh, actually, Terry is the most unlikable person here by far. Yeah, I guess I could see that. Um, and Sari is like, of course, the the one who, you know, speaks the truth 90 percent of the time. She's like, he's not going to give his idol to Sally. He's going to hang on to it. He can use it up through the final four. Like there's no world in which he gives this to Sally, Bruce. Mm hmm. Okay. And no idol for Sally. Uh, so Sally goes home. Any thoughts on Sally who we barely talked about, Lindsay? Yeah, one of the things I have written down with Sally. So like, I know there's that whole Dalton Ross knee socks thing, like that's yep. kind of become a legend, but she's in those green sweatpants all the time. And I noted there were several occasions in the season where she basically gets like chucked out of the boat from Exile Island or something where she's like up to her knees in water. And I have to imagine these sweatpants get very heavy and are hard to dry. Like this seems like a questionable <laughs> hmm. choice from Sally. <laughs> Yeah. Um, is that why she had to go with the knee socks or is the knee socks Maybe. go over the sweatpants? This is a good call. Maybe they're underneath the whole time. We just didn't know. But like, <laughs> yeah, I just kept getting hung up on this of like, oh, God, her pants so wet from the knee down. Yeah. Uh, just she gets a question at the reunion show where, yeah. you know, that Jeff like asks her about like, uh, like, what was the reaction to you on the show this season? Like, what yeah, was the reaction to Sally? She's like the like Walmart version of Kellen, I think, before <laughs> Kellen was on the show, because like she went through a divorce very recently. I guess her family didn't agree with it. So they're not really on great terms. And like that is what the story she comes into Survivor with. 
But wow. and she's again, she's like a pal. I guess I can see this. They are the, I'm, uh, now I'm believing Sally it more Pally. than I'm seeing it. <laughs> Sally Pally is the worst version of Kellen, who's an amazing character. Sally just does not pop off the screen for me. She doesn't really make a ton of moves. Again, I'd much rather see Misty in this position because I feel like she has a better shot than Sally does. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, is the game better if Terry gives Sally his necklace and uses the idol or gives her the idol? No, no. So I don't really, yeah, I don't really need to see any more of Sally. Yeah, there's a She's moment in the recap episode where they, Sally and Austin, have this moment where they're talking about Sally's divorce, and she's like, "My parents don't even talk to me. They won't even use my name." And then, like the next episode, we have the videos from home, and they're like, "We love you, Sally." Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, way to exaggerate, Sally. <laughs> like maybe they buried the hatchet while they while she was gone. Like we've decided we're over this. We miss her so much. I don't know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Strange, very. Yeah. Yeah. strange you know with those videos also that it just a little like inside uh baseball uh for terry deets um the, the, I, they filmed those videos i think very early on after you leave i, I forget whose video it was it's like oh my god you've been gone so long we miss <laughs> you so much and, and i i think that like they get those videos from the loved ones like within days of you going to go play on the season. <laughs> That's so funny. Terry's daughter was like, I miss you so much. I probably right. miss you at this <laughs> point. <laughs> yeah. Like, but I mean, for them to get the videos to Panama for whatever it was, like whatever day it is of the season, uh, like it's not even what day 30 yet. Uh, like, uh, you know, they have to, these videos have to be mailed. To, you know, it's not like that either you're, you're using the internet to get the videos to them. Uh, <laughs> in 2006 mm -hmm. like there this is like a long lead time uh, stuff this is only day 24 that sally gets voted out so uh, i think these videos are probably recorded like <laughs> within the within the first five to ten days of them being gone uh unacceptable <laughs> that being said so uh let's get to now it's just terry versus kasaya here at the final seven mm -hmm. and um, and this is where things heat up. Like we were talking about how there's like not a great, I feel like the last few episodes are probably the worst of the yeah. season because we're just waiting for the Lamina members to go home. Now we're up to the coconut chop. And this is, this is like <laughs> one of the best episodes of the entire season. Yeah. Uh, there's a little bit before that where we talk about uh, Bruce is in a lot of pain and um this wild moment uh where bruce is talking about like oh it's he's very constipated uh it's very painful and courtney mentions that uh one time she was so constipated she thought she was having um a, she pauses for a second <laughs> and uh danielle jumps in with oh a baby <laughs> Like, no, no, appendicitis. Who would be so constipated if they thought they were having a baby? <laughs> it's a common mistake. <laughs> 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 I wonder if this has happened on that show. Um, what is it like? Oh, I f oops, I forgot I was pregnant, or oops, I just uh, found out I was pregnant. I didn't know I was pregnant. That totally one, is. yeah. <laughs> what I love about this is that there's also a moment here where Bruce, like, very quietly comes up to Shane and he's like, I'm feeling constipated. Shane goes, Oh, you can't poop. <laughs> mm -hmm. Everyone's yep. Like, Ooh. yep. Thank you, Dr. Shane. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so we get to our um, our touchy subjects, uh, mm -hmm. and this is a good one. Oh, uh, so just very, so very touchy. I love it so much. I wrote down everything everybody did in this. Ch I was captivated, Tell especially. Us. Well, here's the thing: most of them make such horrible decisions. I can't get over. It. And yes, we're only in season twelve of the show. Like we're not to the point where everybody is like you know breaking this challenge, but like. Everybody makes poor decisions. And Sari, MVP of this challenge, because she obviously she wins it, but she's giggling the entire time <laughs> through Courtney's pain. She's giggling. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> Courtney uh, racks up a few accolades. Uh, who never shuts up? <laughs> Courtney. Who is the biggest poser? What's a poser? <laughs> Yeah, you are like, Courtney. Is you. <laughs> and the funny thing is, is like, who's the biggest poser? Sari, Danielle, and Shane all write down Shane 
Courtney writes down Bruce and Aris writes down Courtney and Aris is the only one who's correct. Yeah. Like the guessing in this is also wild. It, mm -hmm. It's truly out of this world. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and who's the most annoying person out here? Yeah. Easy one for me. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so uh, ultimately we're going to see uh, Suri is going to win the reward challenge. And then uh, things get a little, a, a little hairy also because uh, she's going to send Terry to exile. That's easy. And then she picks Aris and then she picks Danielle and Shane did not like uh, that pick of Danielle. Aris, he didn't mind, but you know, he thought that the Aris and Suri and him had uh, something going on. And so uh, he tells her, I think you made the wrong call. Yeah. He says like, your life is going to change from now on. And like, yeah. he's very, very upset about this. He really gets mad even when she's the one who eliminates him from the game in the first place. Mm -hmm. And then when she doesn't pick him, he's just like, okay, now yeah. I'm pissed. Her life is going to change. This isn't good. Yeah. Everybody's already like in a really bad mood because Shane gets upset that Courtney keeps hitting his, rope um mm -hmm. to knock him out of the competition courtney's upset because people call her annoying and a poser and moody and easily succumbs to intimidation mm -hmm. like she gets like all of the negative ones which again hello you guys are kasaya strong why is terry not the answer for all of these crappy things like put terry as the answer people mm -hmm. um and so he's like extra upset because in his mind it's supposed to be him aris and Sari, final three that's it but I don't know. What do we think of Sari's excuse here? And she says, oh, I promised. I, well, first she says, oh, I promised Aris a long time ago on day one. Not possible. They weren't on the same <laughs> tribe. I promised Aris day one. And then, oh, I also promised Danielle before I promised you, Shane. Like, yeah. how many promises is Sari making for rewards? Yeah. I think it's funny, too, how, like, the final question is, like, who couldn't survive one day on their own? And RS just gets so cute. Or he's like, Terry, you couldn't survive one day out here. It's the mm -hmm. same as the Austin thing. Like, I have to make sure everybody knows. That yeah. I the right well, answer. I can relate to that because, the, I, I, you know, I was, <laughs> did the same the same thing where, you know, I was trying to uh, not answer the questions right. And then I had to, like, try to answer a funny answer with the bushmaster yes. and then uh, and then i was i was revealed i was unmasked take a step back yes everybody then everybody just got me uh so yeah i a throw from from aris uh so that leaves shane with some alone time with courtney of all so, people yeah and so poor bruce he, uh he can't protect his peace at all when he's back at camp <laughs> with shane and courtney and uh, they, they're they really uh, just uh, talking it through. And so um, Shane would like to go to the end with Courtney. He sort of comes around on Courtney, Jess. He says that, you know, that really Courtney would be the, a dream to go to the end with. Yeah, he knows that he can beat her. And I think we're getting to the point where Shane also realizes, like, I have blown up a lot. I don't know how many people. I think Shane is definitely smart enough to realize he's not a bad strategic thinker it's just more of like enacting his plans that kind of doesn't always work out for him um and his social game i think in the end he ends up being like oh he's our kook he's our weirdo and they do love him yeah but i think it's the process of getting there for him and so i think he sees that like oh courtney is the one i can beat no one likes courtney everybody just called her annoying you know everyone calls her e easily to uh, easy to intimidate so he wants to work with her they're trying to get on the same page here. This is supposed to be like a moment where they're going to like be aligned, but they can't even make that work because Shane says he'll kill Courtney in her shitty apartment. <laughs> so uh, that I was listening in for this and he says her little, a uh, 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 little apartment. Does, did they bleep out uh, the, uh, the, the word shitty from, uh, when like did they just drop out the audio for that or does she like he says little apartment and does she jump to the conclusion that's the, the latter is definitely what happened because i was looking <laughs> for it too and he says little and she goes hey my apartment's not shitty <laughs> yeah <laughs> and the problem is i love how her problem isn't that he's going to kill her it's oh, yeah. that he calls her apartment shitty <laughs> Well, he called her apartment you, little. I know, but she little. thinks, and she's like so mad. And now he's like, stop taking everything so personally. Why are you so sensitive? Well, yeah. the other thing with that fight too, is that at the beginning of it, he's like, 
I really think you're taking this too personally. Like, I don't think anybody meant it in a personal way when they said you were an annoying poser that talks too much. Mm-hmm. There might have been so much of like, Rob B is in Thailand where he's like, she and I hate you and you're the worst, but nothing personal. <laughs> like, it's the same thing. Nothing mm-hmm. personal. And then poor Bruce this entire time is just like in pain in the yeah, shelter. Courtney asks him if she wants him to sing. He says no. And she <laughs> sings it. Like, stop it. Stop it. <laughs> it's so perfect it's so courtney it is so courtney to just be like okay it's okay bruce let me just sing for you he's able to come out of his agony long enough to go don't (laughs) (laughs) poor bruce uh Meanwhile, I'm in the, uh, in the, the reward, you know, uh, this is an important reward because Suri and Aris and Danielle are going to really lock down their things while Danielle gets a very rough massage, Lindsay. <laughs> yeah, I think it's really funny how they juxtapose between Bruce moaning in agony from his like bowel problems and Danielle like coming like, oh, shnikey is from. <laughs> Holy shnikes, yeah. Yeah, do Holy we think shnikes. that this masseuse could have maybe fixed Bruce? <laughs> <laughs> smacked him around he really him hurt <laughs> I don't know maybe could I, uh, like uh, knock <laughs> something <laughs> loose just give him some beans yeah <laughs> and Sari loves this too where she's like oh Danielle said she wanted stronger hands I'm like that's what she got he is like I, I thought he was gonna break her ankle but yeah. the way he was moving it around it mm-hmm. looked painful yeah yeah <sighs> alright uh, so uh, it's uh i think we're gonna get to the point where uh you know i think we're gonna get survivor medical to come out and see mm-hmm. bruce at night i feel like it takes them forever to get here like it it's kind of hard to watch at a certain point seeing bruce just lying there like moaning and every time he rolls over or moves at all he looks like he's in agony like to me it feels like on another season they'd be there before this well so I have recently watched in the last two weeks, uh, survivor co wrong where Ooh. Joe Del Campo, uh, where I think that Joe doesn't really ever get to the point uh, that where yeah. Bruce is in the season where Joe isn't like on the ground. He just is, uh, telling us that he's in a lot of pain. Uh, it does seem like it does take, a, uh, it takes a while for them, the medical to just even come and check them out. Yeah. Cause mm-hmm. it's dark by the time they get there. And this is what's also weird about this, because I don't feel like this happens in modern seasons, is the medical person needs help carrying the stretcher. And he tells Shane he's going to have to help him. And I love Shane being like, oh, right now? Because I'm naked. I can't right sleep in wet pants. <laughs> I, can't, I can't sleep in wet pants. Yeah. I wonder if they were not coming in with the expectation to do a medevac. I think that mm. maybe they were coming in with the expectation of like, oh, let's do a check in. And then it was like, OK, this is actually so bad because they didn't bring the whole team out. I think that this is also the during the Dr. Ado era. And that was not Ado that came. So I feel like that this was maybe like a medical assistant as opposed to like mm-hmm. the top dog of Survivor Medical this point yeah they don't seem like fully prepared it seems like they just came out for like oh let's see how bruce is doing and then it's like oh man this is actually much worse than we thought yeah yeah, and again that when they take him they're not pulling him from the game it's sort of like uh i think they're taking him in for evaluation and then they're going to come back the next day and say uh that he's out of the game so um we're gonna come back and uh have Everybody, this is weird. Like everybody's like separated uh, for this. It's like you had uh, Sari and Aris and Danielle are on overnight reward. Courtney and Shane are back at camp. Terry's on exile and Bruce is like evacuated from the game. It's rare that you have the survivors like on all these different locations. Like that's not normally something that happens, but uh, everybody comes back the next day and there's a lot to catch up on. First off, the, the Bruce thing is not even like the headline at camp. It's more like <laughs> Shane is pissed about who went on the reward. Courtney is still pissed about the reward challenge. Like, oh, by the way, yeah, Bruce has been removed by medical. Yeah, I'm sure you had a great time, though. Yeah, mm-hmm. like, super <laughs> passive aggressive. I think there's like a thing that I kept clocking was that I think there are two or three times where the camera flashes on the Bruce nameplate on his torch or something. It's like, uh, just a reminder, we're now going to talk about Bruce. He's not yeah. dead. He is still technically in the game. Mm hmm. Yeah. Um, Terry and Jeff are going to come to the camp to give the update. 
and Bruce's digestive system is blocked. He's okay, but he will not continue as a player. So there's no immunity challenge here today. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's it. And uh, and we do have this is where I was like slightly impressed with Aris. I, uh, when he when they get back um, to camp, he's like the first one that's talking to Shane because Shane is very upset with Sari. Uh, Shane basically is like, I'm not with her. I'm disappointed in her in a, bi- in a big way. I can't believe she took Danielle. And Aris just lets him say his piece. He's like, things will calm down. I'm just going to let him like let it let him get it out. And then Sari further smooths things over with Shane. Yeah. Um, I really like the the kind of one two punch of Aris and Sari here. I feel like they did a really great job calming Shane down. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so had there been an immunity challenge, Lindsay, and Terry wins immunity again, like uh, I mean, go back to Final Destination. Like Bruce was going out anyway at this <laughs> point, right? So. Yeah, I really think so. I think this just saves Terry a challenge. Like I'm pretty sure Bruce was six anyway. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. Yeah, there's no other scenario, right, Jess? I don't think so, because even if Shane is upset with Sari, who is he getting on board to to, to flip with, right, a- against our Sari and Danielle? It just it doesn't make sense, and I feel like that group smooths things over with him as quickly as possible anyway. So mm-hmm. I don't think so. Uh, I think that it, it, it was definitely going to happen regardless Bruce was going. Okay, so uh, Bruce ends up getting medically evacuated. Uh, he can say he got never got voted out. Yeah, one last moment of Courtney messing around <laughs> in the rock garden on the way. Love out. Bruce. Like, he would love this. Like, no, he would, he would hate this. Famously, he would hate this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, in the next episode, uh, we get the debut of uh, Shane with his BlackBerry. Uh, <laughs> Jess, uh, the BlackBerry uh, not talked about a lot so much anymore. No, it definitely was a big thing uh, back when he was pretending to have one. I feel like it was like also like the razor of phones, right? Like I feel like it's that phone, the razor, super common, super popular. Uh, he's communicating with people, not on this island. Yeah. <laughs> to be fair, it did kind of look like a BlackBerry. It was a hunk of wood, but you know, if you have an imagination. Yeah. I mean, uh, do you think that uh, Shane still has the BlackBerry, Lindsay? Did Did we know this? Maybe he's one of the people who like bought BlackBerry stock last year. Yeah, <laughs> that was. When did that happen? God no. I, I I think it was this year, Lindsay. <laughs> it might have been this year. Yeah. <laughs> it was recently. It feels like a it was thousand like years four ago. Four months ago. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. Anyway, whenever okay. that happened, it's a yeah. topical yeah. reference. Let, let me ask Shane if he still has uh, BlackBerry <laughs> stock, <laughs> Add it to or the <laughs> yeah, or the actual BlackBerry. Hmm. He should have yeah. stolen some of those paints from the uh, flag painting situation. He could have, like, you know, drawn letters on it. Made yeah. it look like an actual Blackberry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. All right. So let's see. Uh, we're going to get a uh, reward challenge. And uh, it's a reward challenge that's going to have uh, a big surprise because uh, we're going to have teams of three. Terry, Danielle, and Courtney versus ours, Shane, and Terry. And Terry, Danielle, and Courtney win the reward challenge, and then they get to play for a car. And I always feel like, Jess, this is weird. Like when they like sort of like uh, do a, oh by the way, it's also the reward is you're playing for a truck. Yeah, and I feel like uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like by the time they tell them it's going to be playing for a car, Sari, Aris, and Shane aren't even there anymore. Mm-hmm. Like, why don't you want everybody to be like, oh my god, no, oh my god, Terry won a car. Like, I feel like you you should want that. Yeah. yeah. So Terry wins a car with loaded with everything for a barbecue. Uh, and then he's going to go on the barbecue with Danielle. Terry's yeah. working Danielle this whole post merge, uh, Lindsay. And it takes more. I mean, I guess they get something going by the end. Yeah. He's working really, really hard to get Danielle. She is very back and forth about it. Um, Terry does say that his wife said, like, the only thing she wants is for him to bring back a car. So he's into this, but. Yeah, it's very strange. Neat, this, cool. This, yeah. Dang. <laughs> so, Jess, uh, where does he Sari catch a fish here? Oh, Great yeah. moment for Sari. I love this. I mean, literally, Sari could do anything on my screen, and I would just be happy to watch it. I just think, like, her, first of all, the comedy in her catching a fish and the shock and the surprise, and then she, like, is afraid to take it off of the hook, so she just drags it in the sand on the line all yeah. the way back to camp. 
and because Captain of the captain coming around for three weeks <laughs> uh and because she caught this fish Lindsay, uh she ends up winning the trophy for uh the the, the big uh fisher of the season <laughs> yeah the reunion yeah such a like cheesy little thing but also i don't know do you think she still has this this little trophy probably somewhere yeah, in the garage Seems like the kind of thing you get rid of when you move. The next it's like, time a, it's move, like a dad it's award. Movie. It's like mm-hmm. a typical Terry award. Like mm-hmm. here's your, even though let's be real, Aris catches a bigger fish later in the season. <laughs> <laughs> I hate to burst the Reese bubble because I love her. Harder for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, we're seeing uh, Terry working on uh, Danielle, um, but you know, Suri is uh not feeling uh so good about uh what's going on with courtney and she feels like that uh courtney is somebody uh who needs to go out of the game uh sort of calls her shot here of what's to come in this episode Uh, we have a challenge hold up your body weight uh terry's gonna win um we see that uh terry is gonna feel like this is the time to strike at aris Lindsay. Yeah, so he's got this whole thing going with Danielle where he's like, Danielle doesn't want to come in third to Courtney. And so they make this agreement that whoever comes first and second in the challenge will go to the final two or something. And then Courtney's like, how dare you? I'm not being carried. And it's this whole I don't need to be carried, bro. (laughs) Yeah, she's super offended. that, Like, just when she hears that they're talking about people being carried, she's like, of course you mean me. I feel like there's a little bit of like, the lady doth protest too much in there, <laughs> like mm-hmm. guilty conscience. But anyway, yes. So they decide they're finally going to go for Iris, and this is Suri's master moment. Yes, she would like the person who gets taken to the final two to be decided by merit. <laughs> oh, I see what you did there. <laughs> Very clever. Yeah. So, all right, we're going to get the. Uh, origins of a very famous vote uh the three two one vote okay so we see terry he wants to uh set his sights on aris uh for this round uh sari uh she is gonna try to bring in uh danielle to tell her and aris that they need to get rid of courtney because uh shane and terry both want to take her to the final two, which uh, this is like a really great read on Cerise's part to realize just that Courtney has started to become somebody who's very important and blocking a spot at the end of the game, Jess. Exactly. And it's easy to get these people on board because Terry ultimately wants the Courtney Danielle of it all. Um, but all Cerise has to do is tell Aris that he's about to be voted out. He's in her pocket. Um, Danielle really isn't with Terry and she also realizes that Terry wants to bring Courtney to the final two. She's she, it's obvious to her that Terry wants all the physical threats out of the game like Aris. Um, so, and we know later that Danielle and Sari are actually really tight. I don't think it's super apparent at this point in the game, but we learn that later. Um, and we know Shane is voting for Danielle. So as long as Sari can get Danielle and Aris to vote with her, she can have the majority in a six, thus the three, two, one. And it's brilliant. It's brilliant. And Sari is so, so good at this. She can whip those votes like nobody else. Yeah, this is uh, really incredible. L- Lindsay, is this the first time that we see anything like this in Survivor? Oh, geez. Um, I mean, we see a three, two, one, one earlier in the season, but it's not this magnificent like this is just Mm -hmm. beautifully beautifully done where she has to keep track of so many moving parts like even just talking through it you're like i kind of need a pen for this like yeah i wrote it all out yeah (laughs) and she does yeah just such a good job of recognizing like if courtney comes along she is taking a spot that could be mine like it's not a question of you know is terry gonna make it is iris gonna make it it's like it's that second spot of who's getting brought and she's recognizing that for the huge threat that it is and even looking forward like if terry and danielle do go forward with that first and second place in that challenge thing like you have a danielle courtney final two potentially like that would be brutal so i think a very good job on on sari for sussing this out and Suri yeah. also needs Aris as well, right? Because without Aris, first of all, he's a really good ally for her. Second of all, he's the main competition against Terry in these challenges. Mm-hmm. Yes. So I feel like she needs him to have any chance at taking Terry out. And we know Suri knows that Terry is a huge threat at the end to win. 
Yeah. And also here, like she has to have the presence to know what Shane is doing and that Shane's vote is going for Danielle, because if Shane was in a uh, decided uh, or talked to Terry and was like, OK, I'll vote for ours. Now, all of a sudden, this is, you know, there's only six people. This is now right. a three, three vote. So it's very important that Shane is still voting out Danielle. So his vote is going in the wrong direction, which gives their three votes uh, enough power to get Courtney out of the game here uh, at the final six. And uh shane is not gonna be thrilled no <laughs> didn't like that <laughs> but here's yeah. the thing it's Lindsay. like again smoothing like i feel like aris and sari mm -hmm. become so good at smoothing things over with shane after the fact like it's like ask for forgiveness not for permission with shane when anytime shane is involved well, yeah, and to your point, like, I think it's so remarkable that they're able to do this in the sense that they can be totally confident that Shane is going to vote for Danielle in spite of the fact that, like, five minutes earlier, he's, like, so furious about the outcome of this reward. And then they're going to be able to do it again in the very next episode that they right. can have this tandem thing going where they can get their story perfectly straight, be perfectly aligned, and mm -hmm. they can get him from both sides so that he's not going to come after them. It's really amazing. And that's sort of like the beauty of playing with a player like Shane, because mm -hmm. he's not going to lie to you. So it, there's no sort of like subterfuge of what he's going to do. If he says he's voting for Danielle, I mean, you could take it to the bank. Yeah. All right. He's voting for Danielle. He may tell Danielle to her face uh, that, you know, I'm voting for you tonight. So you sort of are able to, okay, well, we know where his vote is. Okay. So now that allows us sort of like the clarity to be able to go in a different direction because we know uh, exactly where his vote is going. And it also, again, makes it easy to get Danielle on board with the plan, too. Right. And I think that, like, here's the thing. Sari is one of the best to ever play this game. And so, of course, she's going to run circles around these people like Shane and Terry, who have good strategic thoughts, right? They both know that taking Courtney to the end is the right move. But the way they go about enacting those plans isn't necessarily the best moves strategically for either one of them. So Sari is just like in a league of her own playing against, I mean, let's be honest, most of the players on this season aren't that great strategically yeah. or socially. Um, Sari is in a whole other league of her own uh, on this, on this season. And it, it's, it's, like wonderfully depicted in the three, two, one vote. And then the subsequent fallout with Shane. Let me ask you both, uh, who is the second best player in the season? Huh. I think I would probably say Danielle. Interesting. Yeah. I think it, I think there's an argument to be made between Aris and Danielle. Like I actually think it's those tough. two are very close. I think with Sari, like Aris really shines. Like she's able to tamp down some of his worst instincts and he's getting pretty good at showing like when he's dealing with Shane, he's doing a good job of like keeping all of his instinctive reactions to himself, just listening, letting Shane say everything that he needs to say and being like, you know what, we're still good. And I think that's where we see him shine, where I think Danielle doesn't have that buddy in the same way. And maybe we don't see as much good stuff from her as a result. Mm -hmm. yeah. I guess I would, I just said Danielle because I feel like we get more strategic insight from her. We mm -hmm. get more like confessionals with her actively thinking strategically. And yeah. I don't feel like we get a ton from Aris. And I think it's because Sari is doing a lot of the, the work in that duo. So it's hard for me to say who's better between Aris and Danielle. I mean, obviously, I take points away from Danielle with how hard it is for her to make a decision between taking <laughs> Terry and Ar or Aris to the end. Um, but even still, I feel like it's like it's Sari is way up here and like Aris and Danielle are way down here. Whichever one is the second best. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like that Aris has like a strategic gear that he can think at that uh, Danielle doesn't have. And I've had, uh, you know, many a podcast conversation uh, with Aris about the game over the years. So I definitely think that he is uh, much more of a thinker about the game. But I do think he puts his foot in his mouth a lot of times and can come off as like a, a little bit uh not not always coming off the right way with everybody uh mm -hmm. in the way that he sort of like uh you know wants to police like people's tones and like the tenor of a conversation uh with different players they both don't have a great return to survivor uh so it's hard to take a lot of information away from uh, yeah. both of their second games danielle for me was 
the person in heroes versus villains that I remembered the most in that I was like, who is this person? I've never seen her before. And I was like, wait, she was a finalist in a season I've seen. Like, what yeah. is this? Maybe she'll yeah. get the wait. Who's that award for heroes versus villains. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, so after the three, two, one, uh, they really do an amazing job. As you mentioned, Jess, of just uh, cleaning up this whole thing with Courtney and, and Shane gets over it pretty quick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they basically say, oh, well, you were off wherever when we found out about this whole Terry, Danielle, Courtney plan to get out ours. We didn't have time to tell you. And he almost instantly is like, oh, all right, well, that's fine. He's pissed that he can't take Courtney to the final two anymore, but he's not and he's not annoyed that they didn't tell him anymore. Like, all right. Well, now it's just throw out Danielle. OK, as easy as that goes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, it's um, very good from Suri and, and RS too that they clearly have talked ahead of time. Like when Shane is pissed, we are going to say he was over there. Because right? mm -hmm. as, as unpredictable as Shane is, like emotionally, he's very predictable and like, oh, we know he's going to get upset about this. It's predictable mm -hmm. in his unpredictability. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. All right. So this reward challenge is going to come up and we're playing for love. Uh, and this is an interesting <laughs> challenge in that we play the challenge out and kind of like the truck reward. We're going to see the loved ones come out after the challenge is over and we're going to dole out who gets uh, what from the loved ones. And Lindsay, this is similar to where we saw like Rupert assign uh, what people are going to eat. Also, uh, we saw the same thing in Survivor Guatemala in uh, uh, season the previous season where Judd got to decide uh, what people ate. So Terry's going to win and he gets to decide what loved ones visits people are going to have. Yeah. So I think obviously he makes absolutely the right call in giving Shane his visit with Boston. God help you if you don't. Yeah. But I just like I have to imagine I was thinking. So the person who he picks last or whatever to send to exile that person doesn't even get a hug or anything and i have to imagine if shane was that person he's gonna do the like jonathan penner move of like i don't care what jeff is saying like i'm gonna go take that hug that right i didn't get permission to have like i can't imagine jeff or shane just letting boss try to stop him there. yeah 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 especially it's a kid yeah also yeah um, i don't understand people. why they didn't have the loved ones come out first because then you have the loved ones like cheering on the survivor contestants as they're you know what i mean like i feel like mm -hmm. it has more emotional emotional depth if they do it that. gives you that push yeah. right to really yeah. get it wrong because it, it them gives you the push there. Um, I, I do wonder if it was like more part of the like, oh, you don't even get to see your person where it's like right. you get to kind of like uh, be able to have a little bit more of a moment with them. But uh, so Terry uh, is going to pick his wife to go on the overnight visit, uh, picks uh, Shane's son, Boston, who's so young here, uh, and they're going to go off on a reward. Uh, we're going to see HB. He's going to go back to camp with Sari. Uh, <laughs> we're going to see uh, that who uh, Aris gets Aris the gets hug the and then yeah. Danielle goes to Exile nothing. Island. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Because she did not work with Terry at the at the last vote. So Terry is going to punish her. Um, yeah, she did him. <laughs> yes. Okay. So uh, a lot of stuff going on. We spend uh, a lot of time with HB uh, at the camp. Put HB to work. Honey bunny. <laughs> I love HB. HB is one of my favorite family visits of all time. I love his bucket hat. I love him in general. I love how like appreciative he is of Sari and just how impressed he is with her. And I love just how disgusted he is with the camp. <laughs> And Sari just putting him to work. Oh, honey bunny, can you go get this? Honey bunny, can you go get that? It's my favorite. I love how they only call him HB. They don't even call him by his actual name. It's my favorite. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, and we do see in Sari's videos uh, from earlier in the season, uh, her two sons, including Jared, who we'll see on the loved ones visit when she plays yep. in Survivor Game Changers. Yeah, I think we had uh, the HB visit very high when we did the at list thing, Rob, of the iconic mm -hmm. love. Yeah, it's movie. a good one. It, yeah, is, it, it, it good. is a good one. Uh, good. Meanwhile, uh, we have Terry's wife and Shane uh, with his son, Boston. And so that when, when I watch this, it's like, uh, oh, yeah, th that uh, I, this was a house in Panama that I stayed at for a week <laughs> leading up to Survivor All Stars. Michael Bolton's house. Michael, it's Michael, <laughs> yeah, Michael Bolton's dad's house, I believe. Right. He's friends with Mark Burnett. 
and that's his house this is so yeah that's that that's cool i was like oh it's, be it's a beautiful house it's like oh I, I i was there and i'm pretty sure i i slept in the bed that uh terry and his wife i was in it first i was gonna terry say good thing you were there first because <laughs> she says he needs to shave his beard and get back to his hot studly self is this the most <laughs> explicit confirmation we ever get on survivor that sexy times were had well <laughs> yeah me. when <laughs> when Terry gets back to the island, uh, like they say something about like, uh, oh, did you how did you sleep? He's like, well, I wouldn't say we slept a lot. Ooh, didn't get much sleeping done on my part. <laughs> yeah, Terry, come on, man. Yeah, and he's like, we had some private time. Like, ah. But, yeah. <laughs> Conjugal Terry, visit please. on Survivor. <laughs> yeah, well, look, uh, not for anything. Uh, Terry's going to go on to lose some challenges here. Uh, I wonder if... Uh, Terry's like strength was set. <laughs> I wonder Any if yeah. before the big fight. Yeah, I, I wonder if Mrs. Dietz, I mean, the, uh, coming down the stretch here, Terry's gonna he's gonna win that reward. Uh, but mm -hmm. you know, he's going on a little bit of a losing streak here. He's got like wow. uh, he's gonna win this one, but <laughs> took his eye off the ball. That was the source of his power. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like, uh, eye on the prize. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, just a thought. All right. Uh, yeah, make a, make a note for future loved ones visits. <laughs> no conjugal visits for you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, and this is when Aris is, like, super annoyed with Terry. Because yes. Terry says a mom isn't as important as, like, a, a partner, a, a husband, or a wife. Um, and Aris gets very upset about this. Mm -hmm. Uh, my mom is my person. Yeah. <laughs> I think in future podcasts, Rob, correct me if I'm wrong. I feel like Aris has since said like, oh yeah, Terry was right. Like, no, <laughs> I, I, I mean, Ter look, uh, like I don't want to offend anybody who's 24 years old and their mom is their, is their person. Like, mm -hmm. I, I don't want to take that away from you, but I feel <laughs> like that when you are married and you have a spouse, I think your spouse, if, if you have a healthy relationship is your person more than your parents. Yeah. Well, also, Aris, you you got a hug. Like, yeah. you didn't get anything. <laughs> yeah, it was it was a silly argument on Aris's part to yeah. get into, to yeah. even engage with on Terry. Like, you yeah. know, like I can understand if you say, like, oh man, that that, that you know, uh, I feel like that Terry belittled uh, my relationship with my mom. But you don't need to go back and uh, argue with Terry about it. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, it's just that like the they're getting a little chippy with each other, Terry mm -hmm. and Aris, mm -hmm. over everything. Okay, um, so. We'll get to our immunity challenge. Uh, Terry wins his fifth straight immunity. Amazing. Unreal. It yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. This is I the mean, record, this, right? Yeah. Does Cherry, uh, the, uh, Cherry, uh, does Terry <laughs> choke here in this season? I mean, he wins the first five. I don't think so. I think that the challenge that he loses is simply easier for someone who is much lighter weight. And he that's my the carabiner thing. one too, right? Because that there's that, oh yeah, yeah that's, that's the reward challenge, right? Is that mm -hmm. it, or is that the one at final four? That's the reward, and then uh, the immunity challenge in that episode is going to be oh, it's like uh, coordinates oh, with coordinates puzzle pieces. Puzzle yeah, right. yeah, yeah. I don't think there's something to it. Yeah, but, yeah. Come on, Terry. Jokes at the end. <laughs> yeah. Um, so this, is, this immunity challenge, though, I really like because this is the one where Shane is getting like super meta. <laughs> he's like, like Shane is doing it wrong. He's like, that's never good. And then at the end, he's like, <laughs> we'll be voted out tonight. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great and I love Shane. how everybody is like super excited to jump off of the top of that thing into the water, except Sari, who climbs back so down. <laughs> she didn't want to do it. No. Yeah. So. Yeah, Shane is gonna like uh, double check with Suri and ask like, "Hey, there's nothing uh, shady going on, right?" You know, nope, just, <laughs> nope, nope. Uh, but uh, on Terry's part to take Shane on this uh, reward challenge, like you know, for Shane, who's such a person of his word, Jess, like you know that like that is like the ideal person to take on a reward because it's gonna like Shane is not gonna be the type of person where if you do a reward, like give him a reward, like he's not gonna turn around and vote you out in the same episode. Absolutely, and I think what's more important is that like it involved his son, and like we all know how important Boston is to Shane, and so I feel like he's automatically going to feel indebted to terry and 
uh, not only that, but Terry wants to take Shane to the final two. I feel like it makes sense, right? Like he wanted to take Courtney. Okay. Courtney is no longer an option. Okay. Shane has had some outbursts. He might not be very well liked on the jury. I might as well take him. Um, so it kind of does services both things in that way. We don't see Terry working very hard on Shane on this reward, like before or after, really, in terms of like, now you owe me. Like, do you think mm-hmm. he should have done something there? Because maybe Shane. Yeah, well, it sounded like Terry's wife did all yeah. that. Lindy. She was a hardworking <laughs> lady <laughs> during her time on Survivor. Oh, he yeah. didn't tell me if he had an idol. I have no idea. Okay, Trish. All I right. love Shane. I love yeah. Shane's confessional there where he's like, what a lovely woman, but incredibly competitive. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I know Shane ate so much on the reward and then he gets voted out and he's like, I'm going to have a chocolate ice cream in one minute. One minute. <laughs> one minute. <laughs> Like, I, I bet they did not have a chocolate ice cream in one minute. No. And then he like runs out of there. Oh, what an exit. Yeah. Incredible. Truly robbed that we did not see Shane ever again. Yeah. I'm not just saying that in case he listens to this. I really no, he no. was, uh, he was He's easily uh, the one that should have been back. Like 100%. easily the one that shouldn't should have returned and hasn't from this mm-hmm. season. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We've truly been robbed. Yeah, he really he brought so much to the season, you know. Uh like again, he is rough around uh, the edges and uh, you know uh he did threaten violent I mean, any jokes around about that uh, at the end with uh in the reunion show with uh boston asking him dad did you just threaten to kill somebody on national television uh, <laughs> yes, and, I did. <laughs> but uh, i i will say like uh yeah I, that he just was so engaging uh every time he was on the screen yeah. yeah, and I would have loved to see him play again simply because he he knows the game he's playing and he's extremely loyal this season. And not only that, but he's very upfront about everything he's doing, knowing how he feels about, you know, not having returned and all of that. I feel like he would have definitely put his strategic cap on a little bit more in any return season he was in. And I think it would have been really compelling to see not only like him try to balance his personal feelings with like strategic moves he would have made in the game. I feel like that would have been really, really fun to watch. Yeah. Because he has such a strong and firm moral compass in terms of like, I gave my word to these people. That's where my vote is going. And the game is so not that right now. So it would be like so interesting, I think, to see somebody play who is the antithesis of like what the modern game is. Fluid, moving, switch votes, like no loyalty to have a person that is like just so like draws a line in the sand and does not cross it under any circumstances. Yeah, it would have been really fascinating to see him in Cambodia, I think, just to see him with that group. Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. God. I'd yeah. love to see it. All right. So we go to the final four. And uh, we talked about this earlier in the podcast. But uh, afterwards, uh, you know, Terry is not excited. Uh, he's blindsided again. And so, uh, like, he, like, drops his torch uh, where... Or, 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 or no, I'm sorry. Yeah, Sari Sari. Drops her, Sari drops her torch, and Terry accuses her of trying to take him out uh, with the torch. Just do we think is that possible? Is it no. so that Sari could have? Uh, you know, she's a very smart cookie. <laughs> Yes, Could but she have wanted is... Terry to break his ankle. No, this is complete BS. First of all, like I love Sari being like, we have miles of beach here. <laughs> I put my torch down. It's dark out. She can't see where Terry is walking. And I feel like Terry, or, well, Terry admits that she's right in the reunion that like, he's just upset he's and frustrated. Yeah. yeah. And, and he's cracking and she knows it. And she's just like, like, enough. Stop it. I didn't know you were behind me. I'm sorry, King Terry. I love how she says his name too. Terry kills me. <laughs> so amazing. She goes, I'm not one of your kids. And he goes, that's why I expected more. I'm like, get out of here, Terry. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This is the stuff that does bother me about Terry. Is like he gets very like self-righteous and like mm-hmm. a little bit uppity at times. And it can get great on my nerves a bit. Because he like, anybody who's younger than him is called like a kid. And that's just like very annoying to me that he, because he's like 40 something, he thinks that like everybody else is a kid now and like I'm in charge of them or whatever. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I think it is very hard for Terry, especially to, you know, be t- having like a 24 year old like Aris, like uh, calling the shots and Danielle. I'm not sure how yeah. old uh, she is. She's 24 as well. Yeah. Yeah. Courtney also uh, to have like these like younger people have like a, a lot of control in the game. So 
uh, Terry set off in a lot of different ways. Uh, we're going to have our reward challenge overnight trip to the Panama Canal. And so we're going to see uh, some uh, defense played against Terry here. And Lindsay, he's not going to like that either. Yeah, it really, really doesn't like this. Uh, we get that whole like two battering rams thing. Yeah, they, <laughs> they, they love that. Physical. Yeah. yeah, they love that. And then like Terry has this moment where he's like, Ara should have been back by now. He's taking multiple looks. <laughs> and then we have the incredibly mature response from Aris. Like Terry's crying on the course, which he is so proud of with that wambulance remark. Still called the ambulance. ambulance. I <laughs> love it. <laughs> he will then repeat it to Sari on the yacht of like, hey, you hear what I said? That's pretty good, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, can you explain, Lindsay, what what was the uh, the issue that you were allowed to you weren't allowed to take looks at first and then you yeah. could take multiple looks? Yeah. So the first time you had to go out, count your thing, come back and like lock in your number and then go out to the next one, come back. But then after you had done your first pass and messed it up, you could go and look at multiple stations to confirm. But Terry mm -hmm. was like, oh, you didn't tell us that. And, and then at the end, he's like, OK, so just to confirm, we were allowed to take multiple looks and yeah anyway just being a little bit what it's almost like the, the terry not as smart as he was a couple days ago <laughs> oh man <laughs> okay lost him yeah. of his power yeah yeah okay so uh he's cranky uh <laughs> but all right so uh we're gonna see aris and Sari. they're gonna go off on the yacht uh, and then uh, Terry and Danielle are going to be left alone, Jess. And, uh, you know, Terry's going to go back to work in Danielle. They've put their differences aside. Yes. Danielle thinks now is the right time to align with Terry because Aris took Sari on the reward. So it's very obvious that those two are a pair. And so she needs a pair of her own. Uh, now is the time. She's going to go to the final two with Terry. Yeah. She's ready to swear on it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. We get to our immunity challenge. Actually, um, there there was also a point where Aris accused Terry of, hey, Terry, why don't you make another disparaging remark about women? Uh, and then Terry is like, asking, like, what what did I say about women? Uh, and Aris actually comes back and apologizes about that. So it's, we do have like um, after the reward challenge, I feel like that, that is like sort of like the apex of the Terry Aris rivalry they do seem like that they are on better terms after that yeah and that challenge the note that i have and jess i felt like you would appreciate this but i said like they're just being a couple of weenies where they're just being like <laughs> he pushed me first it's just like yeah. so whiny about everything and then they do have this moment where and it seems like it is the highest worst point where rs says like i i wanted to say this thing about you being disparaging to women because I knew that would get to you. And I like, I have never seen any evidence of that. And like, the, he does have a very genuine apology where he says like, I'm sorry, I take full responsibility mm -hmm. yeah. for that. I knew this would get to you. I'm sorry. And it's like a, a nice gracious moment from RS where he doesn't try to like go with yeah. that. He does walk mm -hmm. it back very quickly. All right. Aris is going to win immunity though, uh, at the mm -hmm. final four. And so Terry is going to be vulnerable, but he does have the hidden immunity aisle, Jess. Yes. So no matter what, they know it's going to be one of the women going home. So we have kind of, it's kind of funny. We have Aris kind of coaching Sari on how to make a fire. 2v2. Yes. 2v2. And we have Terry coaching Danielle on how to make a fire. We did just see Sari make a fire earlier this episode while yep. Aris slept. She does it. She's very proud of herself. Aris is very proud of her. Um, and Danielle says she's going to keep working Terry to try to get the idol from him. Does not make sense to me why he doesn't just give her the idol, considering they're supposed to be in a final two. I don't know why he didn't. It doesn't. I don't know. Lindsay, can yeah. you give a reason why he wouldn't give Danielle the idol beyond wanting to keep it as a trophy? I don't know why. Yeah, it as a trophy. I mean, just that thing I said at the beginning of like, is there a chance that he's worried that he gives it to Danielle? Danielle then regroups with the other two. And it's like, he doesn't have it anymore. We're good. Could she pull it out at, final, at travel council? Like, like I have I Terry's have idol tonight. Terry's vulnerable. Yeah, yeah, I guess she could. I guess you'd have to really, really trust that she's not going to do that, which ultimately I suppose he shouldn't trust her considering she's backstabbed him very <laughs> recently. Yeah. yeah. So. If Terry would have won this immunity here at the final four, he would have been immune. He could have given Danielle the uh, like, and maybe she owes him a little bit more and does take him to the final two after yeah. that. So uh, this is a costly uh, loss here in the final four immunity. It's a great point. Cause he, I feel like there's no reason not to at that point. Of course he would yeah. have done it. Yeah. You mm -hmm. vote out Aris there. And then most yeah. likely Danielle yeah. still wins the final two. Does she take Sari though? That's the big question. Is if it's if it's Danielle 
uh, Terry and Sari. And Terry had won the final four immunity and given Danielle the idol. Does she feel indebted to Terry and take Terry or does she take Sari who she says? Well, I think she Sari's was able to with. like run circles around Terry. And I she's, think so she too. knows like what, what strings to play there. Um, but interestingly, also in the very next season, when Yule has uh, this idol at final four, that there's a similar situation with going into mm -hmm. the fateful Becky and Sundra fire making where <laughs> oh, no. that, that, that I think it's Yule himself who's saying like, Oh, well, what if I give uh, Becky the idol? And she said she didn't want to look weak in front of the jury. So it's uh, interesting. This is sort of like the opposite where Danielle wants the aisle. Terry doesn't want to give it to her. Right. Yeah. I think in the final tribal council, Becky says like, you all offered it to me. And I said, no. And then, and then that's when private is like, I was floored that you didn't take it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If only uh, we would have seen Danielle Lorenzo play with Yule. Uh, maybe yeah. if that would have come mm -hmm. up in the uh, how would Danielle Lorenzo have done on Winners at War? <laughs> <laughs> Coming up no. in our questions in a little bit. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, so fire making uh, just this one went pretty back and forth. Yeah, it was actually really tight. Um, a lot. They were able to kind of get the fire started very quickly, but it was it was more of the the building process and keeping it going. That was tough for Suri. Uh, we see Danielle when really sad to see Suri go out. I don't know. It's so hard for me to watch anytime Suri doesn't win a season. It's it's tragic. She's by far the best player on the season. And for her to go out at fire is is tough especially knowing we it was you kind of think it's like foreshadowing like oh she just made a fire like at camp like she's so good at it you think you you, you know i know how it ends but oh well <laughs> yeah. bye sorry yeah Lindsay, uh is she treated uh when she goes out at the final four as uh the legend that she goes on to be does the show like really like uh, do a victory lap for her I think they do a good job of showcasing like what a good job she did. She gets that whole thing right before where they say like, how would you feel if you went out now? And she says like, look how much I've changed. I've been underestimating myself for 35 years. I'm never going to do that again. And in her final words, she even says like, I'm so proud of myself. Like I wish I'd gone further, but I'm so proud of myself. And to me that comes across like it's easier to watch than in Micronesia when she is like openly weeping and is like, I'm so sorry, my family's going to be so disappointed. Like that one hurts more. Whereas here, mm -hmm. I think she's given the chance to be proud of herself and just showcase like, wow, what yeah. an incredible transformation. Yeah, this one, uh, even though it was a loss, it feels like a victory where the yeah. other ones feel like that uh, she was like more robbed. Yeah, yeah. I feel like we can equate this to like you on Amazon versus you on All Stars of like Sari here versus Sari going out in in uh, Heroes, Villains or honestly any of the other ones she goes <laughs> out in. It's just here it feels like she's changed so much and she's made a name for herself and we see at the reunion people are like she's one of the best like it's mm -hmm. wild how good she is at this game so i, I don't know it, it still sucks but at least she has that at least she has the she gets the car at the end you know people yeah. are celebrating her yeah. Lindsay, uh what do we think about how they break this up where that the the tribal council happens in the final regular episode of the season the a fire making takes place in the opening minutes of the live finale. Yeah, this was wild to me. I had completely forgotten that they do it to be continued on that fire making challenge. And I was like, are you serious? We have an entire 90 minute episode for the final three. Like, what is this? But it's a two hour episode. True. Yeah, I guess I was thinking just like 90 something minutes in the, no, yeah, without the commercials. Without the yeah. commercials but, mm -hmm. but yeah, like I, I think it's very strange that they do it this way. It kind of drags in this one with that reward challenge. For yeah. Harry and yeah, let's speed this up a little, I think. Okay, so uh, we are going to have a challenge for a reward of uh, some healthy foods for and a cot. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's not a very flashy reward. <laughs> not a very flashy reward. Uh, even Terry like, back. It wasn't. It wasn't, a, it wasn't that much food. <laughs> yeah. It's just like fifteen things. Yeah, you you don't want to get uh, overstuffed. Okay, so. Then uh, Terry is going to get his cot. Everybody is going to come uh, through for the uh, rites of passage. Uh, get to say goodbye to everybody. Uh, anybody stand out in the rites of passage? Yeah, I watched this on 2X and I was Nothing like, I'll stop exciting. it if anyone is interesting. And there was really nothing. No, <laughs> Suri is the best one, but who's surprised by that? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I just heard from her. So. Um, <laughs> Final immunity challenge uh, on the lily pads. And they had a lily pad challenge earlier in the season. They were very into the lily pads here in Survivor Panama. Uh, ultimately, Terry's the first one out of the challenge. Right. 
I don't I don't particularly like this episode or this this um this challenge. I think it falls along the same lines as like competitions where I, I enjoy the ones where it's like, oh, well, we've done this like it's 10 percent of your body weight where it's evenly distributed for everybody. To me, if you're if you're heavier, if you weigh more and you're standing on a floating platform, it's going to sink further into the water, therefore making it more difficult to stand. So I feel like Danielle does have a leg up. Maybe she wins anyway, right? Like maybe Aris's yoga doesn't come into play and Danielle still wins this uh, this final immunity challenge. But I still feel like and a lot of survivor challenges are like this. The the foothold one is another one, right? If you have big feet, yeah, I don't love these. You. Yeah. It's yeah, just, like, it's, it's not great. I don't know. <laughs> it's not as egregious an advantage as in the previous season when Danny can just like lean against the yeah. structure yes. challenge, but same kind of idea where it's like one person is just clearly like miles mm -hmm. ahead of the other two. Yeah. yeah not great. Yeah. Um, all right. So congratulations, Danielle. She's going to the final two. She has to decide what to do. She's made a deal with Terry, but she also has been allies with ours and she's not really making either of them feel very comfortable, Lindsay. Yeah, she says that when it was down to her and RS on the lily pad, she gave like a nod to RS and I forgot to look for it and I didn't. It go is back. the smallest possible nod I've ever seen yeah. in my entire life. It is he's falling and like as <laughs> he's falling, she's like mm -hmm. like it's like nothing. Mm -hmm. It's almost nothing. Yeah, right. So yeah, so she says like he jumped off because of that and he's going to come back to this and say like I thought we were golden, you gave me your word and like it's not totally clear whether that was previous or it was with the nod, but like she's definitely having trouble with this. Yeah. Um she uh, is very indecisive. Turns out that she is a Gemini, Jess. <laughs> that is not necessarily a quality of a Gemini that is definitely more a Libra thing, but like all right, you know. Gemini's are more like considered two-faced than they are considered Ooh. indecisive. But yes. uh but yeah, uh Terry does a terrible job here and yeah. Aris does a good job. So unsurprising that she takes Aris. Terry uh basically says, Oh, I won't throw daggers at you from the jury if you don't take him. Uh, if you don't take me, but you should, uh, because um Kasaya loyalty. They'll definitely yeah. vote you over me because of Kasaya loyalty. Um, meanwhile, Aris takes the, the better approach in my opinion and basically says, uh, you know, I'm going to be very upset if you don't take me and so he's not going to vote for you either. Yeah. yeah. He would be a bitter juror for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Much harder sell from Aris. I'm not sure that I would have guessed necessarily that that would work on Danielle. Like she seems like someone would be like, don't threaten me. But, mm -hmm. yeah, but it's work. better than saying, oh, I won't, my feelings won't be heard if you vote me out. Like yeah, that's too terrible. Well <laughs> yeah. Yeah, does not push hard enough. All right. Uh, Danielle's going to about Terry and we get an Aris and Danielle final two, which is going to be especially notable because Aris uh, almost needs to be medically evacuated from <laughs> the game, Lindsay. Uh, he falls on some rocks. Uh, not sure how much champagne he had had. Uh, and then needs a survivor medical to come in and give him uh, stitches. Yeah, this is wild where he just completely wipes out and he makes this comment before where he goes like, we're going to leave a game that didn't feel so civil in a very civil manner because they're going out with their champagne. And then he just eats it on the ground. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> falls. And then just like quickly jumps up and then collapses on yes. the ground. Like, oh my God, brutal. This is truly wild that this happens. And I feel like I forget every time I watch this yeah. season. <laughs> just what would have happened if Aris was like, ha had to be medically evacuated? I think they still go through with final tribal, right? I mean, without kinda, ours there, how are they phone him in? I don't know. What are they? Uh, do they bring I mean, Terry it's 2006. back? <laughs> they oh don't have God. Zoom. Danielle uh, wins by default. I guess so. Um, yeah, it's and here's the thing: it's definitely because they were already drinking champagne, and he's walking on these like slippery rocks. He falls, yes. and then he's lightheaded. Bro, you are emaciated and are drinking champagne. Of course, yeah. you're lightheaded. Yeah, There's blood everywhere. Like that's not helping. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sari isn't still there to take care of the situation. It's I mean, true. She was Terry's... a real big help with the testicle situation. Yes. So <laughs> Terry's already out of the game. I mean, does Danielle just win by default? Maybe. I don't know. Luckily, we yeah. didn't have that. I didn't have that happen. He just got like what, like six stitches or something like that in his back and <laughs> his hand. Mm -hmm. Sari win or if Danielle wins by default here, what do we have her ranked below or above Chris Underwood? <laughs> <laughs> so th that would be very interesting. So Danielle wins here. Like maybe let's just say Aris is like concussed and mm -hmm. like is uh like unable to you know be able to be at the final tribal council again. I don't know. Would they would they wait a day? 
They might. I mean, how, what's the worst that's going to happen? I guess he hits his head is probably the worst thing that could happen. I mean, if he broke a leg or something, I guess they could just like <laughs> wrap it back up and he'd just be with a cast or something. Yeah. Like, yeah, Missy, if he hurts his uh, head. Say one though, sir. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Um, but Danielle is a winner as just like default where ours has to be medically removed from the game. Um, probably bottom 10, I would think. I would think so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah definitely. Next to her name. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So um, we get to final tribal council um, and uh, we're going to see uh, not too much uh, vitriol from uh, the jury, but some. Uh, Jess, who stands out to you here? I mean, it has to be uh, has to be Shane. Uh, he basically goes off and says, I wish it was Terry that was there. Uh, he's the most deserving. He says to Danielle that she was useless at camp. She contradicts herself constantly. Um, Aris, we had an agreement on my son and your yoga. Who <laughs> who swears on yoga? <laughs> and that Shane allowed it. <laughs> oh gosh, it's wild. Um, Aris, you should totally swear on yoga. <laughs> <laughs> definitely swear on the yoga yeah and he says you lied you cheated and you wrecked me personally aris you're broke and homeless and freeload off your dad uh and he makes them guess a number between one and a million yeah. again danielle picks 10 after aris picks four danielle pick five mm -hmm. it's not that hard people. i mean in fairness uh that if we're gonna complain about either of them I i'll complain aris. more about aris picking four first true <laughs> that's yeah. fair but then danielle doubles down and picks 10 after he picks four pick five yeah, but, you but i mean she still has from 10 to a million like uh, <laughs> yeah, like sorry. her like if you want to say like uh, i give her like uh you know she only gets a you know 90 percent uh yeah, you know we're gonna uh, ours our, zero ours go with five hundred thousand, please <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's probably the worst of it i mean there really isn't like courtney is oh my courtney. god please talk about courtney please <laughs> yeah Lindsay, you take courtney did you write down what she said <laughs> i didn't write it all down but just like she's incredible she gets up there and she's like oh i forgot my guns they've been dropped in a sea of forgiveness yeah <laughs> it's like holster the them end. yeah and she's uh. like <laughs> like whatever like a uh, baggage weighs you down or something she's like and i'm a bird so i gotta fly yeah. <laughs> like, uh, holding RS no is, chip on my shoulder that's right yeah and yeah. rs says this thing about like what you know his egos would smash and she's like and that is going to strengthen your spiritual way and we're all going to walk on a higher road i was just like can you imagine living with this for like <laughs> over a month <laughs> like please stop please oh my god i also had a note here about terry and like I think that this happens a lot that I always notice it where people like Ozzy and Terry, they always do this thing at Final Tribal where they're like, you know what? I never lied at any point. It's like, yeah, you also didn't win. Like, why are you oh, saying? I like, hate that. Like, Danielle, I know you didn't have to deceive anyone. Yeah. I didn't. I hope your ears aren't ringing with you should have taken the Navy guy. Yeah, like I didn't at all. Like, yeah, and you also didn't win, Terry. You're not at the end. Oh. Mm -hmm. like, no, uh, that drives me crazy, too. Yeah, brutal. Okay, we'll get to the uh, reunion. Uh, we go there live. Uh, Aris uh, wearing like a sweatshirt. Yeah, uh, yeah, <laughs> like a tan like. sweatshirt. Not really dressed dress up. up too much. Okay. Yeah. Uh, question mark. <laughs> yeah. Uh, by vote of five to two, Aris will win Survivor Panama. Congratulations, to Aris. Mm -hmm. Jeff Probst immediately getting in a shot at Richard Hatch. <laughs> like, yes. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. How about that? Yeah. How about that? That was wild. Um, okay, so uh, I thought this was a pretty by the book uh, reunion overall, Lindsay. What'd you think? Yeah, no major standouts here for me. I have very few things written down. I have like Shane is wearing a Slytherin outfit. Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. There's a brief reference to the movie Click for some reason. Yeah. I, well, <laughs> how about that? For the foreshadowing of Jack and Jill in the future. Yeah, that that for some reason, great. Jeff Rubs is like, in the new Adam Sandler movie Click, a man has a remote control that he can go back and forth uh, in his life. A man who we are very glad uh, does not have a remote control is Shane. Uh, very like, was like, this this was a weird segue. <laughs> yeah. And then the other thing I have here is that, like, I know, Rob, you've often said, like, Nick and Austin are completely interchangeable. And then in, in the reunion, Jeff goes like, Nick, Austin, one of you said this. I'm not sure which <laughs> Even he can't tell them apart. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think we've identified Austin is the one that like talks. Austin talks. Yeah. Nick does not. 
Yeah. Austin yeah. says Nick Sugar is Ray Leonard and, and all of that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, Shane really talks up uh, Sari. Mm -hmm. uh, she's the every woman. Mm -hmm. She's the every woman. The, let me ask you both uh, about this, where I, I feel like that sometimes the show takes away from Suri. Uh, I, I feel like that they often describe Suri as she's ev she's every woman. She's just an average person. And look what she does. And I feel like that we talk about like the most exceptional person to uh, or, like one of the top players, uh, you know, easily a top five player of the game. Like we don't talk about any of the other like uh, great players of the game and such like uh, they're just average look at them uh but i thought they're always like so quick to be like dismissive of Suri. that's a great point and i don't think i really thought about it like we always just hear about what an accomplishment it was what a transformation like look how far she's come but yeah i don't think that they necessarily give her her dues as like one of the greatest players of all time bar none with no little caveats needed like she's just an exceptional player regardless of the fact that she used to sit on the couch a lot Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it's mainly because, right, like she was afraid of leaves. To go from someone who's afraid of leaves to being the best player on the season uh, and the best player on most seasons, uh, I think is why they kind of point to that. And I think it's really like a marketing thing, right? Like if she can do it, you can too. Um, she got off the couch. If they talk about couches with Sari one more time, she's an emergency room nurse. Like she's not a lazy person, which is what I think bothers me most about the couch analogy. To me, she's not a couch potato. She's a mother, a wife, an ER nurse. Like she's certainly motivated. Um, I think it's mostly the survival aspect that they're pointing to when they say these things is yeah. like, oh, she's never camped before. Uh, you can do this too. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it does, does kind of take a little bit away from Suri. I think it yeah. does diminish her target going forward a little bit. Like when she comes yeah. back in Micronesia, yes. it's like, this is, she's just, she got off the couch. And so nobody's really looking at her as this big strategic threat. And that lets her get to all the way to three. Yeah. So. Right. Well, this is the second of her seasons. And I, I mentioned this also with game changers because she gets like, sort of like the, um, you know, big, like standing ovation at game changers. And, and again, it's sort of, she's like framed as like, she like, uh, is just an average person. Uh, like, uh, I, I don't know why they always have to just, like, uh, like diminish her of like she's just a like a she's just a normal person yeah uh, and then she look at look at what she, she's able to do because she came on survivor all right let's take some questions from the listeners all right kevin barlev wants to ask how would aris have done if he was on winners at war that's so tough we i mean i'm trying to remember his game his second game yeah. um, because I, I don't like, he didn't really have to deal with idols and stuff that much this time. So I don't, I don't remember how well he dealt with them. He yeah. was out very early. Right. So um, he went out at the merge okay. in uh survivor blood versus water that I, I just think that Aris is not a follower. And, and I think that he would have been trying to drive too much in winners at war. And I feel like that that was not the style of play that was rewarded uh, in like, I think he really wants to be like uh, very much involved in like the decision making and calling the shots. Mm hmm. Yeah, and I think he would still be someone who's like worried about how people are conducting themselves at camp. I can't remember really if he did that in Blood versus Water, but I feel like there would still be some element of like being worried about the survival stuff more than you should be at this point in the game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Jeremy from Asheville says, do you still consider Lamina to be one of the most boring tribes in Survivor history? <laughs> Certainly do. Uh, is there any tribe that's more boring? If there were, would we remember them? <laughs> yeah, well, I'm trying to, of the seasons, let me just uh, open up my list of the countdowns because I think mm -hmm. it's going to be uh, probably seasons that might be rather low. Uh, Zapatera is another one yeah. that really stands Zapatera. out to me, especially Zapatera minus Russell. Uh, yeah. Like the, the back half of the pre-merge from that season is... Uh, a particularly boring season uh, or a boring tracer. Mm -hmm. mm, yeah, sorry about <laughs> sorry about that. Listen, they didn't have Dan Fuego to light things on, oh uh, on fire for them. Oh <laughs> yes, no, <laughs> no astronauts. Uh, we had Ralph Kaiser, but no, no astronauts yeah. there. 
and then I'm trying to think of some other ones uh, that were, uh, uh, you know, ki kind of the boring tribes from along the way. Um, but I don't know if either tribe oh, is uh, super boring and from Thailand. It's just like it might be overall in the season. Yeah, that's what I was trying to think too. Thailand was the one that came to mind, but I think there are enough like kooky characters on both tribes. Yeah, so. uh, the fans tribe from Karamoan, uh, uh, I think, is also up there. Yeah, not Good great. One. Also, yeah, not not a great one. And then, yeah, I think that those are um, the ones that uh, really uh, really stand out in terms of looking at my my notes real quick of uh, what we've already watched. Yeah. Okay, um, then let's go to a question from, uh, how about from uh, Ryan Patterson? Does a tribal council have to occur for an episode to be great? Arguably, the best episode is the Bruce Medivac because of everything uh, they have beforehand. So uh, can a great episode of Survivor not include a tribal council? Yeah, I think so. Like there's this, I think... You could argue that the most among the most iconic episodes ever is Mike Scoop and the yeah. Fire. Like, I wouldn't say it's great in the way that we like we enjoyed watching this episode, but like that's iconic and everyone knows that episode. And there was a mm -hmm. tribal council there, so I don't think there has to be one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I think that he answered his own question. Like this, that episode is definitely one of the best. Yeah. So yeah, I don't think you necessarily need it. I mean, it's great for like closure purposes, right? But you don't need it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it hurts it like in the beginning, like Courtney Moon, like, I mean, I guess they go to tribal, but it's like, there's no right. Vote. And then like, uh, Joe Dowdle, like, that's kind of brutal. But I don't know. Mm -hmm. I think this is fine. Okay. Then how about uh, this question from Jesse Anderson? I rewatched the season. I'm not really sure what Danielle did uh, to make her a villain. What exactly makes her a villain? Jess, any thoughts on why Danielle goes to the villains tribe? There really isn't much unless you're looking at like the early season stuff of people who flip back and forth being labeled as villains, I suppose. I mean, she gets into arguments, but like so does everybody else on Kasaya. Um, no, I don't really see how she's a villain beyond she's not a hero. Yeah. So let's stick around the villains. Should yeah. she have been back for heroes versus villains? Yeah, I think she's a surprising pick. Like, I'm not really sure why they necessarily felt like they needed to bring her back. I wonder if there's some element of just like, if you were on Kasaya and you weren't Sari, you were like sort of villainous because you were working against Terry. Yeah, you know, I wonder maybe, did she get into the casting mix? Because I know that Shane Powers was in the mix for Survivor uh, Heroes vs. Villains. And then, and then I think that they end up bumping him for Russell. And I think that maybe that makes a little bit more sense where they were hoping for maybe like some sort of like Francesca Phillip type fireworks yeah. with right. Danielle and Shane, even though he just vote for her in the final yeah. two. I also yeah. think it's because they like they need their certain number of young, good looking women on every season. And she fits that Sh bill as well. Sure. So, OK. Yeah. Um, and Sugar, Shane and Danielle. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. OK. Uh, a couple questions from people who want to know how would Shane have done on second chances? How would Shane have done on Cambodia? Uh, Lindsay, how do you think that Shane would have fit in? So I think struggle a little bit with thinking like I think he would have had a hard time honestly because I think that there's a lot of stuff going on in Cambodia like obviously we haven't gotten to it yet but there's just so much in terms of like back and forth people switching alliances there's like the whole voting blocks and all that kind of stuff and I just think Shane is someone who is so like I said I gave you my word and that's not going to change can we not make this complicated and like I don't think that that's I think that that's something that would be hard for him to adapt to is like being that devious and lying to people to their faces. Like, I think he would struggle with that. I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I think, I think he would struggle like a lot of old school players do with the fast paced yeah. nature of the modern game yeah. of survivor. I mean, I think it would be definitely interesting to watch. Um, I'd love to see him try to lie to people, try to deceive them, mm -hmm. try to get one over on somebody. I think that would be a sign of shame, side of shame we didn't really see this season. And I would be fascinated to watch it. 
happen. So, interesting to see him try to go with like an Andrew Savage, who's kind of exactly the same. Like. Yeah. Well, I, that's why I think I'm a little bit more bullish on Shane coming back in Second Chances because I think that w- if he was on either tribe, I think he has some really good connections there. I think he would get mm-hmm. along really well with Andrew Savage. And I think he'd be yeah. like part of the core there. I think it probably would have been bad for Steven because I think that Shane was talking about how he did not trust him. I feel like that for like the Shireens, the Stevens, the Spencers, like the real mm-hmm. like strategy Heady type. heads. Heads. Yeah, uh, like I think that he would have like been out to target them, and even if he was on the other tribe, I mean, I think it would have been, um, you know, probably wouldn't they probably would not have put him with Terry yeah. uh, to start off the the game, and also that Aris's brother was on that tribe, yeah. so I think he probably I don't know whose spot he takes though. Uh, so that's the other part of this, but you know, uh, like I think he loves Jeremy Collins also. Uh, that he talked about how he was working with uh, Kelly Wigglesworth also, so. I think he might have been like, okay, I, again, he might have mm-hmm. got out there and be like, what am I doing? This is a mistake. I should mm-hmm. not have come back. Uh, but I think he actually. Did he just, would he have quit smoking and uh, drinking coffee the day before <laughs> he went out to that too? Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. This is a question from uh, Kiwi Weavy who says, uh, does Terry Dietz win in a final three? Okay, now this is hard because uh, we have to put Nick on the jury to get to at least a seven-person jury. I think easily, yes, right? Easily, yeah. Because yeah. if Nick's there, he's got Nick, Austin, Sally right off the bat. We and know that Sari like, and Bruce and both yeah. said that they would have voted for Danielle if it was Terry versus Danielle. So we can at least give Danielle, I guess, those votes maybe. Mm-hmm. Or maybe Sari votes for Aris, but Bruce still votes yeah, for but Danielle. I, I think the three Laminas and Shane, I think, yeah. ultimately yeah. give it That's to... It. Get, he at least gets to four. Yeah. Okay. Um, Annalise says, uh, is Panama the only example of a good Paganging? Uh, it helps <laughs> that Lamina is pretty boring and Terry's always throwing a wrench into their plans. Uh, but I can't think of another Paganging that works like this one does. Lindsay, is this a good Paganging? Um, I mean, it's good in the sense that it's like you are left with the people that you're interested in watching. But I do think that those three Paganging episodes all in a row are kind of a drag. Like, I wouldn't say that it's like, I think one thing that, like, from the Africa podcast, even, like, when we talked about that, kind of it is a pagogging in that you end up with all Baran people, but there's a little bit of movement, whereas here, there's just, like, no question. It's like, yeah, it's going to be these three Laminas, and that does seem a little bit slow as you're going through those episodes. So mm-hmm. I think the result is good. Like, you have Jessica Saez and Terry, which is the most interesting, like, uh, combination of people, but those episodes can be a little hard to get through. Okay. And Rudy Moser wants to know, is there any other tribe of misfits that ultimately was as successful as Kasaya? Does any uh, anybody else jump out to you? I mean, do the villains count, right? Mm-hmm. They were very successful. For a little bit, yeah. Pretty big band of mit- misfits. They had a good run. Yeah. I'd say this is probably the most like dysfunctional, functional tribe we- we've seen, though. Okay. Yeah. All right. So... You ready to get into our uh, survey questions for this week? Let's do it. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I do want to, again, remind people, uh, we have only begun to talk about your questions from Survivor Panama that we will get into it once again uh, later on uh, this week, coming up on Tuesday of this week. I'll be talking more about your Survivor Panama questions. If you uh, have the link, you can still send in your questions. And of course, you can uh, talk about things that we talked about here on the panel or come up with new questions that we haven't talked about. I'll be with uh, Derek Stasinski and Jillian Powers on Tuesday in our patron podcast feed, uh, which you can get at robiswebsite.com slash patron. Okay, so uh, survey questions for this week. All right, so Let's talk about our first question. Who is this season's MVP? Sorry. Sorry. Come on. Okay. What's the percentage? <laughs> oh, 90, 95. 95. Lindsay? Yeah, I say 81. Uh, Lindsay is closer. Uh, is 77. Oh, Terry what's Dietz wrong with gets people? 12. Shane gets seven. Yeah. What one time player would you most like to see come back and play again in a future season? Shane Powers. Shane Powers. <laughs> uh, just looking at the cast list, are there any other all stars uh, that they missed? So from this season, Ars plays again, Danielle plays again, Terry plays again, Sari plays again, 
Of course, uh, Shane got left at the altar many other times. So it's a great, I mean, mm-hmm. that, I mean, in, in terms of like uh, why this season is in the top 15, I mean, that's, that top five is uh, like, is pretty iconic, iconic in terms yeah. of like returning players. Um, but otherwise, uh, the rest of the cast, though, could be a top heavy cast. Uh, we get Courtney, Bruce, Sally, Austin, Nick, Dan, Bob Dog, Ruth Marie, Misty, uh melinda and tina uh i think my two picks for people that should uh get another shot to play tina Shear for sure she was at the island of the idols finale uh for yeah. some reason oh interesting um, i was there with uh mike bloom and kurt clark and we were sitting in the audience and then jeff props was like warming up the crowd and then timbertina was like hey put me back on the show wow. and then uh <laughs> yeah so she is. Uh, she should give her another shot yeah uh, she's Why gonna be, she's still gonna she's still got it so yeah uh put, put her back out there also that uh what an amazing story about um that she talked about how she got a letter from uh that her son was uh killed in a car accident and then uh, the person that was driving the car then uh, reached out and she's like has a relationship with the one i mean just the um the the kindness uh in her heart to be able to to uh to do that uh mm-hmm. is just like uh oh my god what a story yeah it's, it's really incredible it's just yeah give her another shot she deserves it i think it'd yeah. be really interesting to see her mm-hmm. and then the other person i think bob dog is uh yeah. we talked about like what a big personality he is yeah uh, so he's 32 at the time of survivor uh so um that he, he is on the younger guys tribe uh so he's 47 now but you know i i, I see him uh he's in great shape uh mm-hmm. well, there you know, he was yeah he, he he should come back and play and i do wonder like uh when you know survivor is going to you know cast uh you know uh 50 seasons uh you know of people uh, you know black indigenous people of color then i think with these all-stars i think they're going to look with some people that maybe they didn't give consideration to the first time around so i think the pop dog is somebody who i don't think it's necessarily that he did anything on the show that's worthy of an all-star appearance but i'm saying that i think that he's like a really big character uh who's like somebody that uh maybe they should give another look to all right i wonder if maybe he's community at all like would he be open to that yeah oh yeah i think he'd be open to it he goes he's at like these all these parties <laughs> and everything so uh he's a, f- a really fun guy all right uh shane powers uh gets 80 percent courtney mm-hmm. Marin got six percent sally schumann somehow sneaks in there with three percent what name on this <laughs> list made you pause and think to yourself wait who's that jess who is it oh nick nick stanberry who the hell is that guy Whoa, weird. He made it very far. Here's the thing. Here's the reason. Tina, <laughs> iconic. We already know it. Melinda, to me, is not the right answer because her short hair disqualifies her. There are not many women on Survivor that have the short blonde hair. So I remembered her. Misty, I already talked about my love for her. I feel like the other ones make sense. Nick was the one who I was like, who the hell is this guy and why did he make it this far? Okay. I'm going, Melinda. <laughs> It's Melinda. Oh, well, no, the, the right answer is Melinda. My Nick, answer is Nick. Nick is twenty percent. Ruth there Marie uh, sneaks in there with sixteen percent. Huh. Who's the most underrated player of the season? Danielle, maybe. <sighs> she might be properly rated. Um, yeah. I mean, they're all nearly properly rated. I guess the probably the answer is probably Danielle. The answer is Danielle. Twenty seven yeah. percent. Aris actually twenty four percent comes in second. Yeah. Sari hmm. underrated in this season. Thirteen oh, percent. Come on now. She's appropriately rated. Her. Okay. I've been standing her for like almost four hours. Sari's appropriately rated. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, the Kelly Wentworth Award for best pre merge boot. Uh, who is it? Misty. Uh, Bob Dog. It is Bob Dog. 48% <sighs> for Bob Dog. 19.4 for Dan Fuego. Yeah. 13.8 for Misty. Uh, just to go back go to Suri in terms of her being properly rated. Uh, is there a move uh, Suri could have made? Did she uh, go and make the wrong decision anywhere along the way? She kind of gets her way every single uh, yeah. time other than Terry winning immunities. Is there anything she could have done differently? Maybe convince Terry to vote with her and Aris because Danielle's more of a physical threat. Uh, but like, will that work? I don't think so because Aris and Sari are going to take each other. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, I, I do feel like that um, 
like Suri like is able to lock in on like somebody who's the enemy this person has to go like what what if she takes Terry with her on the Panama Canal reward and, and makes a final two deal with Terry hmm I don't know I don't know. Gene, I mean, so I think Aris leave... is pissed. Yeah. Yeah. Aris is pissed, and that leaves Aris and Danielle back. I'm at sorry. Camp Aris together. won the reward. It took three. I, so, I <laughs> uh, so, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know what she could have done, but I, I feel like that. I think she could have uh, done anything. Yeah, I don't know if there's a, if there's a move she could she could have made. I don't see it. If anybody thinks of it, tell us for the patron feedback show. All right. From a scale of one to forty, where do we rank the winner of the season, Aris? Uh, give me like twenty-seven. Oh, I was gonna go like. 33. Okay. I think 33 is a little low. Uh, okay. The audience uh, came in and said that he is uh, 25. Oh, uh, that like puts him at high. the 17th best of the 26 seasons that we have watched on the countdown to date. So he's actually uh, one behind Vesepia and one above Tommy Sheehan. Hmm. Okay. Feels like Tommy is yeah. better. Okay. All right. So, where does the season fall in Rob's uh, rewatchability rankings? Okay. So, let me see. Let me look at my board here. Okay. So, I still say Palau and Korong were better, and probably San Juan del Sur. Oh, uh, boy. Um, for me, probably going to say that this is uh, just below Guatemala and just above Gabon. Okay. I have it as the fifth best season I've watched in Survivor in uh, 2021. There it's funny you, you said below Guatemala. I was like, oh my God, this is so low, but fifth. Okay, that's fine. No, yeah, it's not that bad. <laughs> not that bad. Hey, look, that we, we talked about the good and the bad here of uh, mm -hmm. this season. Uh, there are uh, like a few more slow episodes uh, or that, you know, times when there's not that much going on so great characters but you know not always you know uh super yeah. excitement happening all the way through in survivor panama and you got to put up with a lot of uh what's going on at the lamina tribe all right what's coming up next week Ugh. what is going to be the number 14 season on the countdown that i'm going to talk about this wednesday night i think hmm. it's time for the og give me borneo Borneo. It is overdue for it to be Borneo. Yeah, I had Borneo lower than than Panama. I I, I kind of have to agree. If I want to be different, I don't even know. You already talked Palau. I yep. guess we, if I want to be different, I would say you talk someone does sir. So maybe blood water. But okay. I, I I also agree Borneo. The audience said that next week we are going to talk about Borneo. Okay, that is what the audience said in our poll. But what did the audience say in our sir uh, in our vote before the this is getting confusing? <laughs> uh, what did the audience <laughs> vote for back in 2020? The answer is, I believe, <laughs> Survivor Blood versus Water. What? And Sam Moore will freak me, will freak out if I uh, said the wrong season, but he is not. <laughs> okay, be he Borneo. says that's right. Yes. I'm shocked by this. Borneo Survivor, that, that fast pass, man. Survivor wow. Blood versus Water. Okay, will be the 14th best season on our countdown. And on Wednesday night, I will talk about it with uh, Mary Kwiatkowski and AJ Norris coming up oh. uh, on Wednesday night. So. Uh, be up. so disappointed. <laughs> Look, I mean, Tyson's on four seasons in the top 14. Yeah. So <laughs> can't, be know, that top 10 can't be that disappointed <laughs> yeah. for Tyson. Sure. Uh, but that is the number four. So it's interesting that uh, the two blood versus water seasons come in uh, 14 and 16, mm -hmm. respectively, on the countdown, uh, separated by two spots, uh, just as they were in the original order uh, that they appeared in. OK, uh, let me tell you a little bit about what's going on here over at Rob's podcast. All right, uh, here we go. Starting off with Shane Powers is coming <laughs> to talking with T-Bird. I'm in a wild text chain with Shane Powers and T-Bird. Uh, you will get to be a part of it coming up on the next Talking with T-Bird. Uh, and by the way, I'm not sure. Yeah, here we go. Wes Nail and Keith Nail. Uh, talk to them uh, this week. Um, find out 
Keith Nail's nickname that everybody in his life calls him, including his son, uh, and mu much more. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on this week's Talking with T-Bird from San Juan del Sur. I had a great time uh, earlier this week talking about San Juan del Sur with Sasha Joseph and Josh Williams. Uh, also this week, talk about dance moms. Uh, Jess or Lindsay, have either of you experienced dance moms? Yeah, I've seen like... <laughs> maybe two episodes ever in my life my sister was a big uh yeah i didn't know anything about it we watched it on the rjp <laughs> rewind with Chappelle. it's about a horrible woman named abby lee miller <laughs> yeah. who is abusive to young girls uh and then you get to watch that happen on damn Lovely. it aired for Can't nine seasons on lifetime it's far too long oh my goodness Dance Moms. Uh, check that out on the latest RJP Rewind. Uh, this weekend, uh, like uh, th there will be uh, nuptials happening. Very excited because you guys have grown. Robin Akiva, <laughs> need a podcast. It's going to be the Renap wedding of Kelly White. So uh, be sure to, to uh, tune in. We're going to be, I think we're going to be streaming that live. Uh, <laughs> Kelly White is getting married uh, that her wedding was postponed so long for COVID. She said, screw it. I'm going to get married on Robin and a podcast to so join us for a special edition of Robin and a podcast this weekend. Wow. <laughs> Absolutely wild. How about that? Okay. Uh, <laughs> Jess, that could have been you and Will. It could have been. Darn. Missed out on that opportunity. Miss, missed out. <laughs> missed out on that. Okay. All right. Of course. And then on Sunday also, I'm going to be having our monthly orientation meet and greet with our patrons. I do it every month. Uh, we go through how to access all of your patron benefits and then like to do a little bit of a meet and greet. Say hello to a lot of the new faces that are there. It's not only for the newest of patrons. Also, uh, if you missed it uh, when in the month that you signed up and you want to join us, uh, all that information is available. Available on how to join at Rob is a website.com slash patron. That's going to be on Sunday at 5 p.m. Eastern, uh, 2 p.m. Pacific. And of course, we'll post the video after the fact so you can uh, check it out if you miss it. All right. Of course, uh, so much going on uh, right now. And of course, uh, July is going to be a huge month uh, for us over on Patreon because we have so much coming up with the brand new season of Big Brother around the corner, including uh, some exclusive patron shows about Big Brother that I can't wait to tell you about coming up in July. So find out everything that's going on. Of course, uh, pro tip, check out uh, the Patreon. Uh, the best time to join is at the start of the month. So uh, hang out for July 1st if you want to make sure you uh, don't get charged uh, twice uh, for June and for July. Or check out an annual membership at robswebsitecom slash patron of course uh, you can find out uh, about all of the great offers from our sponsors at rob is a website.com slash offers and if you're watching us here on youtube don't forget to hit the subscribe button or the bell to get notified when we go live and check out everything that we're doing over on social media it's at rob has a podcast on twitter or uh, at RJP Grams uh, on Instagram, where so many of our hosts have been uh, doing Instagram takeovers for the last couple of months. We're having so much fun uh, with the hosts taking over. So uh, lots, of, lots of great stuff. Thank you so much, Scott St. Pierre. All right, Lindsay, what's coming up for you? Yeah, you can find me on a couple of places. I am doing the Simpsons then and now, where we talk about an old episode and a new episode of The Simpsons. So you can check that out. And I am also doing BoJack HorsePod, a BoJack Horseman rewatch with Kirsten McInnes. So you can check us out over there. We are partway through season three in terms of our recording schedule. We have uh, just recently decided to take July off in terms of recording, but we accelerated oh. our recording so that no one will miss an episode. Oh, wow. Okay. So what a, <laughs> what a peek behind the curtain. So yes. <laughs> yes, you're getting getting ahead yes. and then... Okay. Uh, are you worried that there will be any sort of like big Bojack uh, horseman um, news <laughs> that will break? <laughs> well, so we actually had a, a tweet recently from the creator of the show, Bojack Horseman, where he in said something that sort of indicated he might listen to the podcast. So we had to add in like a breaking news segment. Oh, okay, good. That's right. fun. So you're prepared. Yes. We're ready. We're yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, Lindsay, thank you again for uh, being with us. Uh, you have done uh, so well in your two outings on the on the countdown thus far. A truly a joy. Happy to join you anytime. This was so, so much fun. And yes, uh, yes very lovely. Well, you're such a knowledgeable survivor expert. Uh, always look forward <laughs> to any time that you're uh, here with us on the podcast. Oh, thank you. That means so much. Okay. Just what's coming up for you? 
A lot. I have a lot. <laughs> I have a lot going on, Rob. <laughs> uh, you can find me a few different places over on Community Building uh, at Post Show Recaps, where I am uh, talking about the show Community with Josh Wiggler. I've seen it a bunch of times. He has not seen it, so does his first watch through. Uh, we are finishing out season one soon, so yes. hop on. Can I ask a question? That. Just could you compare yes. the Kasaya Six to the Study Group? Oh, fun! <laughs> yes. Okay. Um. So okay, let me think. Shane. Shane has to be like the the Abed, right? Because he's a little bit off beat, a little bit beats to the. I mean, they kind of all do. Um, yeah. <laughs> Courtney is certainly a Britta. Um, she yeah, she thinks she's like saving the environment with everything she does. Um, let's see, Danielle. Danielle, I guess would be the Annie. I don't necessarily think it's like a one to one though. No. <laughs> Sari and Shirley map onto each other simply because they're both like mothers. I think that Shirley is also an underrated character in Community. Um, mm -hmm. so yeah, that would like seemingly would like work. a like a normal person around <laughs> yes. uh, a bunch of crazy people. Yeah. Yes. Um, Aris is easily the uh the uh Jeff Winger, especially yes. with the hair. Yes. Yeah. He has the hair going on. Yeah. So I think that works um who am i missing is that all of them terry. oh oh terry well he said kasaya six okay so yeah. terry is, ter is, is terry uh <laughs> pierce? <laughs> pierce that's so rude i don't know because like, he's, he's like the antagonist terry. yeah i suppose but like that's not very nice to terry because pierce <laughs> is awful uh mm -hmm. yeah i guess so i suppose yeah. if you want to do that yeah yeah it's, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, awesome. uh, it's it not kind bad. of works it kind yeah, of works okay. um so yeah go check us out at posture recaps uh we do that weekly um i'm also co-host on the podcast rob mentioned shit 90 shows taught me uh we cover dawson's creek weekly we cover boy meets world weekly and then we usually do about two bonus podcasts <laughs> a month Lindsay was actually just on with us oh, talking like four time yeah, it was a land, land before, time. before time. Wow. Yes, yes. Uh, we we had turned dinosaur a, talk. Turned it into a gritty film about absentee fathers. <laughs> we, oh. we found a way. Um, yeah. So yeah, check us out uh, at shit nineties pod uh, on Twitter and Instagram. I'm at the Jess Sterling. I have um, I podcast a lot lately. It seems yes. So. <laughs> Well, you did such a phenomenal job here in your debut on The Countdown, Jess. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure to be here. So happy to talk about Panama. It's such a great season. So yeah, I'm, this I'm was a really here. fun one. Uh, that uh, lo yeah, Lots of laughs here talking about uh, Survivor Panama. Yes. 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 Hopefully, fun. Shane, and if he listens, he thinks we talked about him positively. If he did, uh, <laughs> that I can't imagine uh, he made it four hours in. Yeah. <laughs> if you did, Shane, I loved you on this season. You were wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I think we we gave him his flowers all the way all the way through. Uh, we'll I did check say I was him. glad, especially glad not to be on Twitter this week. But yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> if you wish to shower me with praise, you can uh, tweet at Kirsten said what. Like, yes. Okay. <laughs> tweet your praise well there. done. Well done. All right. Uh, thank you so much for uh, listening and watching us. Uh, I will be back with patron feedback, and then we will be talking about uh, the 14th best season of all time, Survivor Blood versus Water, coming up on a Wednesday night. Take care, everybody. Have a good one. Bye.